bona fide sports mad Australians. Snakes alive. Is that the time? Yes, green and gold freaks, it certainly is. It's time for the sporting probe. With two diamond pythons twirled around the tree of knowledge across the nation. Boys and girls. Well, the young man ain't got nothing in the world these days. The Sporting Pro leading the charge up the eucalypt. With extra chilli on the stick is the in and out maestro rampaging Roy Slaven. And coming from behind is the heavy lifter with both feet on the ground, H.G. Nelson. Unleash the grunt and poke H.G. Oh, yes, uh, thanks very much. Uh, gentlemen, Jim Daniels in the TSP soundproof booth, and we had that painted this week. Uh, it looks an absolute treat. It was white, now it's gone to black. Uh, the booth, of course, located in glorious downtown Lakemba. Yes, probesters, HG Nelson getting the sporting probe underway for another week. Week, uh, I think, five now in 2017, and I'm still licking the lips in anticipation. Tremendous to have your company down the deep end this morning as we prod about in the rubbish of this week's Red Hot Sporting Action. My very good friends, it's been a week of massive collects and massive disappointments right across the Golden Globe. That is the world of sport. Uh, Today we probe, uh, well on the probe, uh, well we've turned it up to 11 uh, because it's hot in some parts of Australia. We've turned it right up to 11 and we're going full bore Uh, giving a vigorous in-out workout to boxing, AFLW, rugby league, plus a complete, that's right, a complete Winks extreme vetting update. That's right, we're going in hard. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, Of course, Winks was going to be running at Randwick this afternoon, sadly now postponed till Monday. I think Wendell Saylor, who's a well-known horse player, uh, described it as a common sense, a common sense decision. Uh, but to get us underway, let's lock horns with a man who rocks a dressing gown. Uh, often I pop around and all he's got is the dressing gown on and he's watching the television. Uh, he rocks a dressing gown and when the navy blue chenille touches the naked shoulder, he really does come into his own. That man is rampaging Roy Slavin. Roy, can we get the TSP bunny in motion simply by asking what were the highlights that caught your restless eye this week? Uh, Barrow. Yes, thank you very, very much, H.C. Uh, Nelson. <clears throat> and it's been a wonderful week, a wonderful week in Australia. And hello to all honest, hard-working Aussies, the forgotten people. Mm. Thank you. Now, speaking of forgotten people, our Globman, that is our Globman Wade, mm-hmm. uh, he's left for Dubai, so all is good for India. I know his he, back was a little bit iffy there, but it seems to have come good, and he's survived the flight. People were worried. He's Okay. Now, uh, just moving on to tennis, uh, which means it's all great for India, is the bottom line here, of course. Um, Now, uh, tennis news, actually. Bernie, that's our Bernie, Bernard, and uh, Little Leighton, they've had a public falling out. I don't like this. What's it about, Roy? It's about commitment. Commitment? Commitment. And if any, I mean, if anyone in Australia knows about commitment, it's Little Leighton. If there's anyone who needs to know about commitment in Australia, it's Bernie. And I think that appears to be the nub of the problem with our uh, troubled superstar of the racket. Uh, now, uh, speaking of tennis, where should, and this is a thorny one, where should the Davis Cup tie against the US coming up? Now, where should it be played? I know uh, the Pat Rafter Arena in Brisbane have put their hand up. Uh, Rod Laver Arena has put its hand up in Melbourne, so they, they'd be two terrific venues. No mention, though, of the New South Wales Tennis Centre. I don't think it's put its hand up. But I'm calling for its name to be changed to either the uh, John Alexander Arena or the Mark Edo Edmondson Arena. Mm -hmm. That's got a ring to it, the last one. The Pig's Ass Arena. It sure has. It sure has. That'll be mine. Now, still on tennis, actually, just a small one, but it got right up my nose. Uh, Jordan Thompson, our uh, hero that came out of nowhere and got through the first two rounds of the Australian Open, that Jordan Thompson, he's being called by Little Leighton and amongst others, he's being called Tomo. How must Tomo feel? You mean Jeff Thompson? It's the only Tomo. <laughs> I mean, you've got, to, you've got to earn being a Tomo. I mean, I haven't seen the new Tomo inject any fear into anyone on the other side of the net. I mean, I mean once they're... Troubled by what's coming at him, then I can accept he's Tomo, yeah. but at the moment he's not. 
Remember the great skill that Tomo had was He the didn't batsman. know where it was going to go. Exactly. The batsman never knew and no, he never knew. He never either. knew. No, well, that's what we want from this new Tomo. Someone who serves, you don't know where it's going to go. At the moment, he's just Jordan Thompson. I like him. Don't get me wrong. I like him. But he ain't Tomo. Could he be called Captain T until he earns the... Well, maybe. Or just JT. JT? We got well, how JT. would JT feel? I know. It's a nightmare. I know. Now... Big Geordie? Big Geordie. Now, moving on just to golf for a moment, HG. Robert Allenby. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Boy. Robert Allenby says his best golf could well be ahead of him. Could well be? Yeah. God, he's confident. Isn't he? Man. This was... <laughs> when's someone going to pull him aside? When's, he... when's his caddy going to pull him aside and say, listen, don't talk stupid? Anyway, maybe Tiger should be talking to him instead of Roger Federer, whom I noticed he's courting at the moment to try and get his back back in shape. Go figure. Uh, make of all of that what you will. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Yes, probesters, you're probing with the Sporting Probe. The Sporting Probe presented by Roy and HG. Now, Roy... Mm-hmm. You know, last a couple of stories hanging over from last week, and one's a terrific story. You and I were lucky enough to be at the Adelaide Oval, not last night, but last Friday night. Mm. Danny, mm. Jock. Mm. The fallout from this fight is completely unimagined. I had no idea. You know, you're there, 27,000 people. We loved the undercard. Quade Cooper, that terrific bout where he helped the kid up so he could punch him again. Mm. All that stuff was just fantastic. Mm. And now the court case that is developing around the main main bout. Let me set out a few ideas that Chuck feels as though he's been dudded. He's going to take it to court. And the court, I assume, of some sort of sports ar- arbitration. T. Mundine has questioned 50 aspects of the fight. Yes. And they produced a six-page document, which is obviously available on websites. Mm. Uh, here's a couple of problems. Claims of bias amongst the judges. Yep. The leaking of the official fight card on social media straight after the bout, even before it was signed by any of the judges. Yep. A judge's failure to deduct a point from Green in round seven. Yep. And other alleged errors on the scorecard, including mm. that Chock felt as though the ring wasn't standard size. No, it looked small to me. I said to I you know. at the time. I know. I said, God almighty. You know, I spent about a third of the fight. I couldn't enjoy it because mm. I was so... We had very good seats. Yeah, we did. And honestly, I spent a third of the fight wondering if I should get the tape out and yeah. measure it up. And well, I said to you, you did flag. you bring your tape? And yeah. you hadn't. It was so, in the boot. Yeah. Now. I know. So, can I... Well, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> now... We come to the court case. Mm. Is it a matter of legal experts saying, well, the court, the ring's too small. What are you going to do about it? Mm. Can I set some of these problems as in the scorecard? And we'll get to judging in a minute. Mm. Are we looking at a no flight, a no fight declared mm. with a reconstituting of this magnificent event? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say at, um, I don't know, Scotsman's number two in Lithgow, just to pick a venue. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it could handle it, yep. uh, where Green v. Mundine 3 is on the card. Mm-hmm. And, of course, this wouldn't decide anything necessarily because it might be one all. Well, if Green v. Mundine 2 is null and void, null and void yes. it means we'd be having the second second Green v. Mundine, Correct. wouldn't we? So it would be v- Green v. Mundine 2 with an asterisk and a little Two. note down the bottom. Null and void, first match. Okay. Now we come to the problem of what I consider judging, which seems to be the nub of it. Mm. Uh, for instance, uh, Australia's greatest boxer, Jeff Fennekin, I haven't thought about Jeff Fennekin in about 20 years, yep. uh, says Mundine was robbed. Robbed. Uh, the, uh, Jeff didn't want the fight to happen because he was concerned for Mundine's uh, safety. It was one of the most heroic performances in Australian boxing. Without doubt, Chuck won the fight. Now we come to this, firstly, the judging. Mm. As I understand it, the suggestion is that we get three professional judges, unlike the amateurs who were involved the other night. Mm-hmm. We sit them in a room and show them the tape, yep. and they score it, and then put the cards in. I'm That's... not sure what that'd prove, mm. by the way, because as you and I know, mm. 27,000 people around you cheering, mm. barracking for either side, mm-hmm. uh, worried about the size of the ring, wondering if they can get pie and chips you know, in the round break and all that sort of stuff, yeah, get yeah, yeah, back yeah. to their seat, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Creates an atmosphere. Ambience. Yeah. Ambience. Yeah. That's the word yeah. I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah. 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 Do we yeah. have to create that ambience? Well, the, for the, the ambience would have to be reproduced for the for the judges, the the new judges, without doubt. Now, I, I don't know if there was 3D imagery taken of the fight because you'd have to 
you'd have to sit the judges in three different corners, if you know what I mean, yes. three three different angles. Yeah, perspectives. Perspectives, yeah. yes, yes. Now, that can only be done through 3D imaging. Now, otherwise, it, it's, it, it just can't work. It can't work. No. So you think that the new scoring system is suspect and you think yeah. a, a legal mind would throw it out yeah. of court and say, do better than that if we're just looking at televisions, so even if they're smart televisions. They won't tell you much. No, they won't. No. They won't. The other thing to do would be to replay the fight and allow people to decide who they think won. People, what a great idea. You know, let's, let's throw it open to democracy. I always trust democracy in these things. Um, I mean, if we trust it in other aspects of life, why can't we trust it here? Boxing. In boxing, and yeah. yeah, I yeah, would yeah. Say and and th- there's the other issue, HG, of, of, uh, of Danny Green taking a, what I'd call a cheap shot mm-hmm. in the first round. He should have been given five minutes recovery time because he was concussed. So concussed that one of the doctors walked out. Well, this was the other part I was coming to. Mm. Uh, as we remember, there was a clinch yeah. and Chuck got a beauty on Danny. Yes. Danny was completely rocked by it. He fell down he at did. that point, given a standing count. Yes. The docs rush in and say, hey, okay, Danny, I'm not sure what concussion test they gave him. But know. as I understand it. Yeah. Concussion demonstrates this bleeding in the brain. Yes. Is this right? I think so. And they, the doctors, one mm. of whom had four decades experience, Roy, with concussion, mm. he had asked the Anzac recipe, the Anzac biscuit recipe, yeah. to players and boxers over four decades. He walked away, threw his hands in the air, said he's not going to be responsible. No. The other quack. He thought the fight should have stopped exactly. then and there. The other quack. The other quack. Has the other quack actually got a degree? I, I don't mean, think so. No. Maybe an Idaho degree on the internet, $10.50. Oh, former uh, rugby league player. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. Now, can I point out mm. that this disturbed me completely? Because me too. I, I said to you, Danny's gone here. I said, you look at him. He doesn't know who he is. Mm. And Danny said later, I couldn't remember a thing after that. Do you know what he's quoted in the paper? He was quoted as he couldn't w- work out whether he was Arthur or Martha. Yeah. Now, I know... Mm. Notwithstanding LGBTQI, well, neither, issues. neither, neither is the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, yeah. is you it? Know, a... Well, that was the question to ask him. Are you Danny Green? Who? Right. Now, the recipe for Anzac biscuits. Go on, off you go. Yeah. Cup of rolled oats, cup of coconut, all that yeah. sort of stuff. And what do yeah. you do with them, Danny? <laughs> Who's Danny? <laughs> you. <laughs> what are you doing here? Now, yeah. what happens if? Mm. Go back to that moment. He takes the cheap shot. Mm. There's a standing count. The doctor rushes in and says, this fight shouldn't go on. Mm. Is the referee responsible for stopping the fight or can he overrule the doctor's decisions? How does this play I don't out? know. No. The chain of command. I don't know, chain what, the of cha- command. I don't know what the chain of command is. I, I, I don't think anybody knows. Um, I mean, this is uncharted waters. Uncharted waters. You is know, it, would in it a be... thousand years of boxing, I don't think this circumstance has ever arisen before, is... that someone has been knocked virtually unconscious by a cheap shot, illegal, in the first 25 seconds of the round, and I carries on. Carries on. Now, can I ask, is the But full marks to Danny for carrying on. I know. He said to me quietly, I don't think I would have won this had I been in my right mind. This is the Sporting Probe. Punching through the sludge. Ah, oh, yes, this is the Probe uh, with Roy and HG. Now, Roy, coming back to the bout mm. and the court case, yeah. if uh, the judges, sorry, if the hierarchy had decided to call the fight off yep. after the cheap shot. Mm. Is it a win to Green or is it a win? It can't be a win to Mundine because he clocked no. him with... Uh, no, he'd be disqualified. Disqualified. And, and, and the bout would have been given to Green. But uh, it would have been very difficult to have done that, I think, in that circumstance, unless you called Quaid back on to give people a bit of entertainment <laughs> with the young kitty again because he'd have recovered. Yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you, you saw him a few minutes ago. They were great. Well, they're back, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Quaid yeah. Cooper! <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, Buffer, whatever yeah. his name is, that bloke who they got out from America to do the ring announcements. Oh, the legend. The legend. Yeah. He could have easily done that. Of course yeah. he could have He done. could have made that work. Yeah. Now, that means that the It would have been given to Green, the fight. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the cheap shot. Yeah. Now, that meant that the... Uh, do you think there was any residual, I I hate to suggest this, that judges were swayed in their scoring Mm. by the fact that they thought Green had been already robbed of the fight. 
Do you understand what I, I mean? Do, I do. He takes a cheap shot. Yeah. Who am I? Arthur yeah. or Martha? Neither. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on you go. Well, you'd have to look at the psychology of judges, psychology actually. Psychology of judging, yeah. that's right. You know, and, and where the bias comes into it, you know. And, 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 and I, I'd suggest often it does. You know, whenever I've been judging fights, uh, I've, I've often thought to myself, well, the bloke in the red pants, he ain't going to win. <laughs> No. Can, 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 you know, it's, it's just a thing you get, you know. No. <laughs> and most judges are like that if they're honest. Yeah. You know? But have you ever seen, no judge has ever put out an autobiography. No, that's it, true. They're not going to talk. It's true. You know? That's true. Now, look, can I ask, mm. you know, obviously there are enormous sums of money involved in this thing. Yeah. Uh, the millions, millions. millions people could bet on it at the various yeah. punting agencies yeah. and TABs around the world. Yeah. There's a big, uh, obviously green supporting group in Shanghai who got yeah. together at uh, some yeah. of the big venues up there. Yep. Uh, they paid out. Yep. All of a sudden, it goes to court. Mm. How does this even up oh, in the? Oh, I don't know. I mean, how do you unpick that? Mm. You'd have to ask everyone who won to give it to back. give their money back. <laughs> Wouldn't you? You would, you know. Are we? Are and, and then again, I, I don't know. It depends the way they judge this. I mean, I had money. I put a lot of money on Danny Green winning in the first round. Uh, well, you can wow. see how disappointed I was. I know. But if we look back through it, and they decide, oh well, Green won it in the first round. Da 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 da. And this is our decision. Hello. Spotlight on you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> now, the, the other thing is, inexorably, are we headed to? I take your point about green too with the asterisk and <laughs> stuff like that. Is that where we're headed? I think that's where we're headed. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Yes, and I should point out if you want to get in touch with the Sporting Probe and who doesn't these days, uh, Roy and HG at thesportingprobe.com.au. That's the Sporting Probe. If you want to get in touch, Roy and HG at thesportingprobe.com.au. This is the Probe. And we're talking about boxing, Roy, and the good news just got better this week because that. Uh, you know, it's one of those bouts I've never thought I'd see happen. I'm mm-hmm. um, talking about the um, the Jeff Horn Manny Pacquiao fight. Wow. Uh, this is uh, hopefully going to happen in Brisbane. I think the Lord Mayor Graham Quirk, who I think some sort of relative of Jeff Horn, which is a nice touch, good. maybe a second cousin or a cousin. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's the Lord Mayor, and they're hoping to have this bout at Lang Park, Good. sponsored by the Brisbane City Council, the Good. state government, and Suncorp Stadium. They've agreed to finance, uh, you know, to back the event yeah. April the 23rd. That's good. Now, That's good. Is that when the football's on? Is well, it, the, the, have to obviously be at half time during, you know, Titans v Broncos match or something like that? What a terrific idea. Mm. Uh, maybe we, mm. could you do, say, three rounds beforehand, three rounds at half time, and three rounds afterwards? Maybe. If you had to do a yeah, nine if, round. Yeah. I'm not sure what the nature of the battle no, is. No, nor, nor am I. But the only Isn't thing that worried that... me was April the 23rd. You mean Anzac Day. That's where I'm going. <whistles> Imagine that. Horn v. Pacquiao yeah. reliving the Battle of the Philippines. Now, I'm not sure what the Battle of the Philippines was, but let's say General MacArthur waded ashore. He did. Well, you know, yeah, and set maybe. off back. Mm-hmm. That's right. He did. You know, But <clears throat> is that an Anzac story, though, strictly speaking? It's not really, is it? I mean... Well, I suppose you could argue there would have been Anzacs involved. Were there any Anzacs Pretty sure there would on have the been. ship that MacArthur sailed? Probably. You know, yes, or advisors, who, or people who were married to Australians, or oh, yes. you know, something like that. We'd yeah. be able to find something. Yep. It's um, uh, uh, look, they think it's about going to deliver about two hundred million to the state's economy. Good. That's twice what was delivered in uh, the global tens, or they expect to be delivered in yep. the global tens. I think, which was last weekend. Yep. Uh, obviously, Horner hometown product. Uh, yeah. Pacquiao is yet to sign off, and I, this is some uh, a story taken from earlier in the week. So these deals might have been all done. Yeah, uh, yet to sign off, mm-hmm. and at his times, unfortunately, uh, in the Her- Herald as in the Fairfax papers, has appeared lukewarm on the idea of facing Horn. I'll be thrown in lukewarm. I don't like that I don't at like all. That at all, no. Now, does the winner of this go on to Klitschko or someone like that? Is she? What, what's the story? Uh... Is it? <laughs> You're gonna have to bulk up a fair bit to go on a Klitschko, but that's a lovely, that's a lovely carrot to dangle in Wouldn't front of them. Is there any talk of Klitschko coming out to fight, say at Suncorp, well, maybe that, next year? Well, that'd be terrific. That that's a tantalising prospect. Mm. Klitschko against unnamed. Yeah, maybe Horn. <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, Horn will be thrown in in the deep end against the uh, multi-world champion. He's had mm. 17 professional fights. Horn has? Yeah, Horn. 
Quirks, oh. Horn's second cousin, uh, cousin Hill, caught mm. and suggested this could be the biggest thing, the boxing, could be the biggest event, the box, sorry, the biggest boxing event this nation's ever seen. That can't be right, can well, it? Well, hang on. What about last Friday exactly. week? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, man, how quickly people forget. Where was this bloke last Friday week who's saying this? Well, I don't know. Maybe he's... Uh, seen... Maybe he knows more than we do. Maybe Mundine Green 3. He's inked in, inked in on the as undercard. part of this undercard, Horn Pequeo. <laughs> well, that'd be fantastic. Look, it does worry me. How do they arrive at these figures of 200 million? I don't know. Is that through sales of, I don't know, food mm. and airline tickets and mm. kids going into gyms to buy gym memberships and buying boxing gloves and T-shirts with Horn written on mm. it and Brisbane promotion mm. and people would love to see where Horn v. Pacao fought yeah. and tours of Lang Park. Yes. Is that how it I works? I suppose so. 200 million. The, yeah, and the memorabilia and the, 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 the you know the stuff you can buy, your little Manny Pacao bubblehead dolls. Yeah. You know, <laughs> your, and punting. Your, yeah, your Horn whatever shorts. 200 million it seems an awful lot. It does, though, doesn't, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. I mean, well, uh, I'm not going to doubt those figures. Corrupt players, you're on notice on the Sporting Probe. Yes, Probesters, uh, it's another red-hot morning of probing here. Now, uh, the fight promoter had a fairly cautious tone about this horn Pacao fight. In Brisbane saying, well, they released a statement saying Brisbane was the preferred destination, but other offers, including Dubai, oh, good. were being yeah. entertained. Horn said he was training as if the fight had happened on the 23rd of April. Yep. Uh, obviously hoped to recover for the Anzac March. Yeah. Uh, the interest has grown so much uh, for this fight, the hype is starting already, according to Horn's camp. Mm. He said he was bemused by Pacquiao's lack of uh, interest in him as an opponent. It's always a little bit worrying, but I've no control over that. I just hope everyone gets on board. Mm, so it'd be mm. terrible if it fell over. Now, yeah. what I wanted to get to, though, was the 200 million. Mm. And I wanted to set that against the story I think we broke. Mm. And I'm surprised not other media outlets picked it up about the $10 million, $10 million race oh, yes. that's coming to Ramwick. Yeah. On October the 14th, if I've got the dates correct. Yeah, you have. That's going to be an enormous boost to the economy in New South Wales, you'd have to think. Now, it, mm. uh, according to the racing minister, Paul Till, that's the Berejiklian yeah. blueprint racing minister, yeah. it will no doubt attract visitors from all over the world, providing a major economic benefit to the state, yep. but particularly the businesses around Ramwick and surrounding suburbs. Oh, yeah. I understand a lot of, uh, you know, backyards have been converted to stables and, yes. uh, you know, housing horses and Airbnb. Airbnb would go through the roof, you'd have the to roof. think, yeah. It'll be great to see the pubs, clubs, restaurants and cafes full of people who have come to the Everest. Yep. And that means boost for jobs in the area. Can I point out the race is only on for one day? Yeah. One day? And it takes about, what, one and a half minutes? <laughs> and then mm. off they go again. Yeah. Now, according to Racing Victoria... Uh, 318,000 or 300, close to 320,000 local interstate visitors mm. turned up for the carnival in Melbourne in 2016. Now, that's over a whole week, mm. or in fact, it's over quite a long period of yeah. time relative. This yeah. is one day. Yeah, but they'll build a carnival around it, won't they? I mean, oh, I suppose so. You mean that they might have the Parramatta Speedway one night and they might have a mm. sort of surf boat race from Maroubra, say, round yeah, to Malabar, yeah. that sort of thing? Well, maybe. I, I don't know. Or a, a half marathon. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> now, what I wanted to get to is before I come to yeah. that, and I think you've hit a very important nail on the head, mm. a total of $28.38 million yep. uh, was spent. This is in Melbourne on a commercial accommodation, more than $20 million on food and beverages, plus $13.5 million. Mm plus uh, retail spending of $7.6 million on grooming, et cetera. Yeah. Now, that doesn't add up to anything like $200 million. No. No, but that's, that's Victoria's figures, though. You've got to look at the New South Wales figures that are far more... Well, look, sure, they're optimistic, but I ran my eyes over the other day. Look fine to me. Now... You know, I think they had $18 million on fish fingers that, to be sold. Well, I thought, oh, fair enough, maybe... You know, <laughs> we don't know. The fish don't fingers, know. Finger the fish mark. finger industry is a bit of a mystery to me. You know, that's but Slurpees. Anyway. They had, I think, twelve point mm. seven million for Slurpees. Well, that I'd accept. Yeah, because it could be warm. Yeah, and cool down. Yes. And once you get a Powerade Slurpee, which mm. I think is saving rugby league in yeah. New South Wales yeah. at the moment. Yes. What I wanted to come to though is the mm. point that you raised beforehand. Now, mm. backtrack a bit to the Australian Open. I, I settled down to watch tennis as mm. you did. Mm. 
and out came Nigel Kennedy. And I thought, you know, the mm, violinist. The violinist, thought, yes. Hello, this is fantastic. Something fresh, something new. Mm. I'd never connected Nigel Kennedy in tennis. I don't no. know if he's a tennis buff or Must follows be. it. Yeah. No Sir Andy Murray or anything like no, that, no, no. you know. So I sat there and looked at it, bemused. Mm. And I thought, wow, isn't this fresh and innovative? Yes. I just thought you could expand the card slightly. Maybe have, uh, I noticed the Beach Boys and the Temptations are touring at the moment. I'd love to see them say at the tennis as well as Nigel Kennedy. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, you've got a whole night's entertainment, <laughs> yep. the tennis being part of it. Now, yep. is this what the Everest has to do? Yep. They have to have somebody like Shannon Knoll uh, mm -hmm. sing a set beforehand, maybe on the night before, mm -hmm. free concert at Ramwick, and then the day after, they might have to have, I don't know, somebody, you know, the, mm -hmm. the quality of, you know... Uh, I don't know. Uh, look, Australia's got talent. Yeah, look, I, I, I agree with you. Look, I, I think they've set this. I, I don't want to talk down, you know, Noel and all of those ter terrific talents. But I think they've got to raise the gaze a little bit here, HG. With this $10 million race, my understanding is that a lot of international stars are going to be coming to look at this. You mean like Lionel Richie? Or, well, Lionel Richie, I've heard. Or the I've, origin, heard origin. I've heard George Clooney's coming. Clooney's Tom coming. Tom Hanks is coming. Uh -huh. Kim Kardashian. Kanye West. I mean, these are big names. Right. Really big. David Beckham and Posh. Wow, they're coming. They're coming. Is there any suggestions that the Spice Girls The Spice be... Girls are going to reform to do a couple of numbers. And sing uh, the Australian you, uh, National Anthem? Yes. And you know what I want, what I really, really want? Everyone's favourite. They're going to be doing that just before the race. Wow. Now, now, this is going to, I mean, this is going to revolutionise Racing in Australia. Uh, I mean, two hundred million. That's. I mean, that's just a drop in the bucket. Uh huh. This is going to revolutionise racing. Is George going to call the race? George I, Clooney. George Clooney. I don't know. I hadn't thought of that. Has anyone no. approached him? <laughs> the Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Yes, you're listening to the Probe. Uh, look, I. I you know, sure, I said earlier on that this was show five. It's actually show four. Mm. But we're having so much fun with the probe that it feels as though we've done five shows. I know. Roy. Mm. Uh, something that uh, Roy and I have always wanted to do is get uh, out and really do a bit, as I said in my opening comments, a bit of extreme vetting updates. Mm. And once you put the chili on the stick and go probing, uh, then I think the sporting probe will, you know, obviously emerge with a certain amount of, you know, credibility. Mm -hmm. And once we can punch some of these, you know, let's face it, we've discovered so much corruption already. But once we can punch that through to the upper levels of government I know. and get things happening. I call it a concrete ceiling that we've got to blast our way through with the probe. Now, just picking up exactly on that point you left, you know, George Clooney coming for mm. the Everest. That's what the race is called. Well, Randwick won't know what's hit it when George Clooney and all those, they blow in. Tom Hanks, Con Tom Hanks, Spice yeah. Girls, <clears throat> yep. David Beckham, or he yep. might be Sir David Beckham. Yes, right. I think so. Yeah, there was a kerfuffle story this week suggesting that he wants uh, something for all his charity work and he yeah. wants to be knighted. He I does. didn't believe that for one minute. No. I just thought that's a tabloid beat up, elite media beat up. I just mm -hmm. thought to myself about that. Yep. Now, look, this is fact. Well, that's the part of the politics of envy, isn't it? it exactly. The it's politics all it's about of envy. envy. I mean, leave David Beckham alone. Nobody's done more for charity than David Beckham. Or for racing. Yeah, David yeah. Now look, He's, uh, will they give these people these stars? The the mayor could give them the keys to Randwick when they arrive. Isn't that a tremendous idea? They get off the plane, get into those black limos they all travel around yeah, in. They come up yeah. to Randwick, the main gate. The mayor's yep. there to greet them. Yeah, I think I might have had the mayor's name. I can check that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, you know, welcome mm. George. Mm -hmm. uh, how the twins? Yes. Uh, you know, here's the keys to here's the city. The keys of to the city of Randwick. Yeah. Um, and, and, and welcome to Royal Randwick. It is Royal Randwick. Well, especially if Sir David Beckham's there and yes. Sir Andy Murray. Mm. Is you're... Andy Murray coming? Yes. Sir Andy, if you don't Whoa. mind. Okay. Now, get this. Mm. This week, the Great Horse Race Day was launched mm -hmm. uh, in Melbourne. The Great Horse Race Day, I think, mm -hmm. refers to black caviar. Oh. And let's not forget, if Winks wins in the Apollo on Monday, it'll tie with Farlap, Farlap yeah. for 14 wins on the trot. Yeah. Of course, way short of black caviar's 23 wins, I think, on the trot. It was a 23 or 25. Oh. I think it was 25. Five. Okay, 25. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Uh, Amanda Elliott from the VR chairman or chairwoman of the VRC greeted the media and guests at Lee Ho, Lee Ho Fook this week mm. to celebrate the big day on the 18th of February. Mm. Uh, Ms. Elliott said, we're engaging with the new audiences and we're determined to do that. We want to embrace the day and let people know that Flemington represents opportunities to have great food and wine. Wow. Well, that's true. So many yeah. people just go to Flemington just to eat, don't they? 
It's like Royal Randwick. <laughs> That's right. The food is just, Foods, the wine list is unbelievable. I know, I know. those fish they fingers. They make, those fish fingers just with some mashed potato. Great. Are they doing that <laughs> yeah, at, I believe at so. Flemington? Yeah. Yeah, at They're Flemington. doing fish fingers. No, not at Flemington, at Royal Randwick. Oh, is that why the... the uh, Beckhams the, are coming, yeah. The spike yeah. in fish finger sales. <laughs> That's it. Now, get this. Luke Hodge, the former Hawthorne skipper. Mm. I might still be the former <laughs> Hawthorne skipper. Well, let's say he is, yeah. <laughs> let's say he is for the time being. He's embracing the festival of racing. This is an entirely different festival of racing. Mm. Um, Hodge, the Caulfield Family Day ambassador, will be trackside today for yeah. the Oars Stakes, which kicks off a six-week showcase of premium racing across uh, Victoria, including, obviously, the Black Caviar, the Great Horse Race Day, which was right. mentioned. Yeah. Food and wine. Yep. You know, is now, Black Caviar going to be there, HG, for the day? I hope so. And yeah. Black Caviar will be signing autographs. Uh, which oh, is something. If you okay. had a T-shirt and wanted yeah, to get yeah, signed, yeah, yeah. a bit of memorabilia, mm-hmm. you wanted to either, you know, put caviar on, or Put do. on eBay because there's not much uh, caviar, merch- caviar ma- merchandise out Moving there. on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> now, according to Hodge, it's, mm. uh, we just live near Caulfield, so it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, they have a uh, couple of sons who, who would go to the odd day, but now it's a great day for the kids. Yeah. Headline race days, uh, the, when we look at it, Blue Diamond Stakes, Super Sad Day. The festival was launched at a pon- at Pontoon in St Kilda with Apache Cat uh, and so on. And yeah. it just goes to show what Melbourne has done this week for racing because mm. they know the Everest is coming, and that's robbing all the oxygen in the room mm. from racing. Mm. Now, Roy, are we leaving out something here? Mm. We're leaving out punting. Mm-hmm. We go to the races to have bets mm-hmm. so as we can turn, you know, so as the state can then provide roads or money can go offshore schools. to some of this great, it's for schools, for schools that's right. Yeah. Or the money can go offshore to fuel, yeah. fund people's lifestyle. Or schools overseas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, right. Yeah. that's right. Do you yeah. think that's lost in the Well, in that the message mix? is lost. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it should be a duty. I, I mean, I, I've, people have said to me in the past, should wages be garnished? Yes. Old fashioned term. Yes. Like, or Set aside. A, yeah, ten percent, fifteen percent go into racing every week. Have your way, have your pay pack. Oh, that's an excellent idea. Can I give mm-hmm. you another idea right mm-hmm. off the bat? And it reminded me that uh, Luke's got a couple of kids. <laughs> Surely school mm-hmm. trips should be arranged. Mm-hmm. Now, some of these events, these racing days, will be midweek. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be great to see, say, one hundred and fifty thousand school kids on track? Well, that's going to happen, HG, at Royal. Is that Royal for the Randwick? Day? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think it's mandated. Uh, I, well, I mean, the the, the uh, details are a little unclear at the moment, but I believe all kids in schools in Australia, in New, certainly in Sydney, are going to be bussed into Randwick for the day. So there'd be the best part of maybe seven or eight hundred thousand kids there. And if you're in school uniform, you get a ten dollar bet free. You do. The Sporting Probe is a weekly Royal Commission into sport. Yes, the probing continues, and Roy, North Korean rugby. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, I'm not across. North Korean rugby? <laughs> no. I know. That nearly <laughs> slipped through. I know. Well, it wasn't going to slip through, let me tell you. <laughs> North, let me get my head around this. North Korean rugby? Mm. Mm. God look, almighty, I had no idea. Look, can I just set this in context? This week it was announced there's a mm. push to have rugby union, a state of origin concept, come to rugby union meaning that the Queensland-born players will play the New South Wales-born players. Mm. There is some suggestion that it might be at a time of year when the Wallabies would be in action, which means that the mm. Wallabies, the Queensland players from in the Wallabies couldn't play, so it may rob, and similarly oh. with New South Wales, so it may rob the fixture of some stars. Yeah. But I think in time it could become a really big event, never rivaling, obviously, rugby league and state of origin because mm. rugby union players just don't hate. No. There's no hate no. between uh, Queensland no. union players and New South Wales. They're too polite. Yeah. No one's going to get on, punched in the head. On, hang on, don't we have this event? Isn't it called the Queensland Tars Reds we... against the Tars? Haven't we had this? We and have, people, people but... are a bit sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> but remember... Because neither team's... Very good. <laughs> but remember, of course, is that some players from, say, across the Tasman, from Victoria, from, mm. say, South Africa, play with the Tars. All they right. would have to be dropped out for the occasion. No, I can see it building up nicely. <laughs> Maybe in 15 or 20 years, <laughs> yeah, right. some people will be interested. If you can attach a horse race to it in a boxing carnival, yeah, you might something. be getting somewhere. Now, throw not, in, you know, the fish fingers and the 
<laughs> mashed yeah, potatoes that, and right. and Hodge with his kids coming yes. in and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, family day, kids bust in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now Still you're talking two hundred million turnover. <laughs> now back to North Korean rugby. Look, this is a fantastic story. Former NRL star Ben Teo, who's now playing, if I've got this right, he's playing rugby union in England mm. for the top side under the baton, under the Eddie Jones polish, is planning to go backpacking in North Korea mm. with an Engli- English uh, rugby teammate, Johnny May. Mm. Now, the last time sports diplomacy was, say, attempted with North Korea, I think it was Dennis Rodman yes, who basketball. turned up basketball yep. because mm-hmm. it turned out Kim Jong-un mm. loved his hoops. Mm. But this is a... Um, and he, he he presented well, too. He was nicely tattered. And, and wore he that. wore the singlets, even though it was freezing cold, yeah. and gave a signed one to right. the boss and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff. I think they had a march past of 27,000 people and mm-hmm. a couple of rockets on it, mm-hmm. all for Dennis. Yeah, they might have fired off a couple of rockets just for him, I think, and maybe did a bit of underground nuclear testing. <laughs> Well, that's North Korea. I mean, they know how to put on a show. They do. I well, mean, turnover about two hundred million. You know, <laughs> Rodman's in town. Look, we've got to say is we've got to say is that we we have to catch up with the North Korean way of doing things. Mm. Uh, you know, if, if, if they're marshalling these forces in yeah. this way, it's yeah. anyway. The uh, Ben Teo mm. is setting off with wait for it, Madcap Winger. Johnny May, the pair have decided to uh, visit the country. Good. Um, Quote, me and Johnny, that's Ben and Johnny, have been watching a lot of documentaries on North Korea. That's got why he's quite interested. We chat about it a lot. Mm. Um, Now, this is ahead of the Six Nations clash against Wales this weekend. I sent him a few links on some of the documentaries that I thought he might be interested in. Mm. Uh, And they've had quite a few chats and coffees about how we can fix the situation there. He says there's a lot that needs to be done. In the Hermit Kingdom. In the Hermit Kingdom. A lot that needs to be done. What's he mean? What, oh, what, what, where's sure. he going to start? What, I don't know. What, feeding food? people? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> food? Importing food? Mm. Um, I'm not sure how he'd go about that. Maybe they need more rice. Uh, Johnny wants to do a bit of backpacking. And we need to uh, go before things get really bad. I'm not sure what well, he... Was there any suggestion it's going to get worse there? I, I thought... I thought he turned oh, it all around. So did I, Kim Jong-un. I thought, terrific. He's, he's got the... Isn't he sending a few rockets out towards, um, I want to say, Japan? I think he was this week. This week. Um, what became of that? Did they go off or not? Sometimes they don't think, work very well. No, I think they, they got a airborne. Yeah. I, I said, is I don't Tao know. and his funny mate Johnny May, are they suggesting they can help with their stabilising so. their ICBMs? I think so. <laughs> now, he said, I don't know if it's worth it. It's quite dangerous. I'm pretty keen on it. Maybe we'll be reporting to you live from North Korea in the summer. Now, get this. Mm. He, he. well, I should point out, Ben Teo is quite a, what you describe as a journeyman. He played NRL clubs. He played for the West Tigers, the Brisbane Broncos, the Rabbits, the South Sydney Rabbits. Then he had a, a rugby league spell for Samoa and then seven mm. appearances in the Queensland State of Origin side. Mm. Well, over the golden years, weren't they? Yeah. And then uh, spells at Leinster. I think that's in Ireland and yeah. Worcester in Rugby Union. Wow. So well, he knows the world. He does. And North but, he's Korea. Now, but he hasn't been in North Korea yet. No, that's no. on his bucket list. And what's happening with rugby in Pyongyang? I've heard nothing. Well, I think we're going to find out about it. Um, that's a hidden secret, isn't it? it? They've is. kept that to themselves. It is. They're hoping to go in summer, which is their rugby playing months. Mm. Uh, he says, Johnny's interesting. I like being around him. I like talking to him about what, get, what he gets up to and what he's thinking. May has emerged, this is the, I haven't got a name on this report, but anyway, I'd love to credit it. May has emerged as one of England's squad's comedy characters. Right. Described as the Tom, as by Tom Youngs as the space cadet with an X factor, while Coach Eddie Jones, we know him, has said he would like to spend a day inside the Gloucester Wings' head. Just a day? <laughs> now, yeah. Now, let me now, now the well, God Almighty, the logistics. How do you backpack through North Korea? Well, hang on, well I wait, tell wait. you now, you can't. <laughs> now, how about this? Just before we come to that, what we've got is Mayer's emerged as one of England's squad's comedy characters. How many others are there? Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm not au fait with the current English yeah. rugby union lineup, yeah. much as I follow it pretty well mm. all the time. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I just don't know who the other comedy characters are. Mm. Well, maybe Eddie Jones has a new policy of just employing in his squad, Honeyman. 
The Sporting Probe. Roy and HG. And probesters wanting to get involved. Well, who wouldn't? Uh, get in touch with the uh, probe panel and help us with the in-out work. Simply email us at royandhg at thesportingprobe.com.au. Yes, you can be with the chilli on the stick. Just get in touch with us. Roy and HG at thesportingprobe.com.au. Roy, come back to that question. How do you backpack through North Korea? I think that's the question. It is, sure. isn't it? I mean... Can you hitchhike? Obviously, the Army's moving around a fair bit. Would the Army recognise, uh, say, Ben Teo and say, come on, Ben, up you come. Sit mm, up the front. Do you maybe, want to press the button? Maybe, maybe. Look, I think the only way to get into North Korea is through China. That's probably true. Yeah, I think it is. So you'd have to uh, go Walking. probably to Beijing to begin with and, and catch the let, let them the know what you're there. I'm here to go to North Korea. Sorry. I'm here to have a holiday in North Korea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so then you've got to make your way across to the border. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you probably have to hide yourself in a truck. Mm-hmm. Uh, disguise yourself maybe as a can of beans or, I don't know, a sack of flour or rice. And then once you're secreted in, poke your head out and then scarper. See how you get on. Now. See how long before you're shot. <laughs> <laughs> or, now, more importantly, see how long you go before you're eaten. <laughs> That's right. Now, do you think that taking uh, <clears throat> this guy May, Johnny May, with him is a bit of a liability? Because Well, it depends how good they... his Korean is. I mean, if you can make him laugh... You know, because we, there'd be a lot of North Koreans who'd like to spend a day inside his head. <laughs> Corrupt players, you're on notice on the Sporting Probe. Uh, Roy, just a couple of golf stories. You you broke a story earlier mm-hmm. concerning Jordan Spieth. Jordan yeah. Spieth, the world number six, HG, mm-hmm. as he is at the moment, he's refusing to sign autographs. For people he's describing as for-profit memorabilia collectors. Now, this has been going on with golf for a hell of a long time. Mm -hmm. That people come up, you know, after you've finished at the 18th, on your way to the 19th, and they come up and say, would you sign my cap, sign this, sign that. Now, Jordan says he's more than happy to sign caps and things for kids. Mm -hmm. But he's not going to sign anything anymore for people who are going to just put this up on eBay, you know, and he's saying that these people should get a job. So he's not signing. And he said a lot of a lot of the players are feeling this way themselves. I know you've they, got they've a They've just had enough. They're drawing a line in the sand. They're just sick of signing stuff. Uh, I know you've got a lot of Robert Allenby stuff signed. And you've got a lot of uh, Spieth stuff, which you were hoping to get Robert Allenby to sign as well. Because yeah. you're a great believer in value adding, aren't you? Mm, exotics. That, yeah. Exotic. Yeah, yeah. One signature isn't enough. Yeah. But if you can get that club head signed by, say, six or seven uh-huh. of the top ten. That's right. Or all of the top ten. Yeah. Imagine what that's worth on eBay. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, well, you know, I've got that. Oh, look, it's, it's, it's a work in progress, of course. I, I, I've, got, I've got my um, my bat signed by Sir Donald Bradman mm-hmm. with Tiger Woods's signature on it, and you know, it, it's, it's you've got it's, a bucket list going on I that do. bat, haven't you? you yeah. Yep. I, I know. You want to get Tom Hanks, and he's coming for the big event. Well, I'm going to go out to Randwick when Tom's here mm. and get ask Tom if he'll sign it, and I'm sure he will. Liberace signed it. You know, it's quite a it's quite a bit of memorabilia. It's gotta be worth an absolute well, it's my superannuation, yeah. isn't it? How how have you gone with these things on eBay? Do you feel mm. as though you've been an idiot to yourself and sold them off too cheaply? I remember yeah. you had a batting glove there, I think signed by all the wars. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, the three know. war brothers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it, no, it went all right. I was I was quite happy with that. And how did your chapel uh, bat go? You know, you had yeah. uh, you know, obviously Trevor, Trevor up to yeah. begin the Black Texter, yep. and then Ian and Greg, mm-hmm. and a couple of ring-ins who pretended they were chapels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got 50 bucks for that. Did you? Were yep. you happy with that? Yeah, I, well, at the time, I wasn't expecting was... anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> and do you, you know. consider this a job, though? I mean, I know you work on the radio and so oh, on. I work pretty hard on it. I mean, Jordan Spieth, I mean, I, I don't know how hard he works, but uh, you think it's easy going around, you know, trying to get Liberace's bloody autograph back in the day. <laughs> you know, it's not easy. Especially when you've got to explain, it's a cricket bat. Oh, oh, ah. It's a cricket bat. That's Don Bradman. Who? <laughs> you know? But once the message gets through... You shout at him. Don Bradman! <laughs> now, if that's good news in a way, mm. good and bad news, yeah. very bad news here. Uh, so many people love putt-putt golf. 
Don't uh, you know, if for those unfamiliar with it, it's a, it's a modest version of golf played in tiny areas <laughs> yeah. where people largely hit over masonite or yeah, plywood yeah. Yeah. and they do things like they have obstacles in the way, like a windmill and you've got to hit it into the windmill and go up in the windmill and out of the sails. Mm. So it's great fun it and great often fun. connected with holiday areas. Yes. Uh, you know, I know in the Batemans Bay area, mm. I think in... Um, New South Wales, there's a putt putt nearby. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I think there's some on the Gold Coast. Yeah, as well. I associate it with family entertainment. Family entertainment. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. sadly, <clears throat> the final brightly coloured golf ball will roll into the hole 18 at Ermington. Mm-hmm. Putt putt. Never to be seen again for the last time this April 2017. Ermington's putt putt. Ermington putt putt is, is gone. shutting down. No way. Wait for it. The course, which sits on a site the Parramatta Council sold to developers in 2014. Has had a lengthy stay of execution, obviously. Very busy during summer holidays. The site originally sold to Aqualand in August 2014 for $130 million, sparking disappointment in the Parramatta and Ride community yeah. because they obviously are shutting down the uh, the putt-putt. Mm. The Fun Run Waterways and Jungle Trail mini golf courses have been sat on the site since, wait for it, 1969. Wow. 1969. Let's see, that should, I don't know, have a National Trust order on it, shouldn't it? Well, there can't be many putt-putt courses dating from them. They'd be heritage listed, surely. They would have to be. But there is a general contraction of putt-putt, HG. I noticed, you know, oh, well, let's think. Queensland, I've played the Caboolture Bowl. They've got a beautiful putt-putt course there. Par 12? Yeah, par 6, I think. Uh, the Holy Moly Indoor Putt-Putt Club up there in Brisbane. That's beautiful as well. It's, 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 it's terrific. Now, New South Wales, the one at Thorn Lee is still open, though, I think, HG. And Penrith has still got the putt-putt course. And they've got the water golf, of course. At the the aqua golf, that's aqua golf wonderful. I've played that But it's not putt-putt. It, no, no. If, if you devoted a putt-putt, you'd have to, you can't play there. You'd have to find the one at Penrith. Lithgow's got five courses, five putt-putts. It's the home of putt-putt. It is though. the home. The world home <laughs> For Australian putt-putt. There's the golf, the, sorry, the glow golf at Docklands in Melbourne. Putt, you get a good game of putt putt there. Glow golf. Glow golf, yeah. You play it at night in the dark That's with the glow it. ball. Yeah. Is it's that something it. that you should do on Valentine's Day? I know it's coming up. Well, why not? I know. What a great thing. Yeah. You take your other take, half mm-hmm. down there or yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 cat yeah. or whatever. No, I think Perth's got three. Adelaide's still got a couple. Hobart's got two. Darwin's got two. Well, look at this. A mm. uh, long-time putt-putt golfer, Leslie Slender, said it'll be a very sad day for the community when the bulldozers come through and destroy the local icon of entertainment. Wow. This is at Ermington. Ermington. Mm. Now, what's going to happen to that? That's going to be turned into houses. Uh, well, apartments. Apartments. I think. Now, could couldn't you... they have a putt putt on the top floor or well, something? Of course they could, or on the first floor. First mm. floor putt putt. Mm. Now, or could there be some sort of relocation of the putt putt course of em- Ermington, mm. piece by piece, to Randwick <laughs> and open it on the day of the Everest race? Wow, as part of and the Royal Randwick experience, you can have a little putt-putt between races. Is that what you're suggesting? I'm suggesting that. But further than that, we have an Australian Championship played on that course. Yep. So the home of the Australian Championship, yep. there's plenty of room at Randwick for things. They're sure. building things there all the time. Yeah, why not in the centre of the ground, oh, in the centre wow. of the racing thing? Yeah, I mean, why not? And would that would be put up a purse of, say, $250 million. Yep. Somebody would turn up. Mm, oh, they would. <laughs> They would. They would. So many of our golfers started with putt-putt. You know, Robert Allenby, he said he was rubbish before he found putt-putt. Right. And does it go back to 69? Would You know, I'm trying to think of who would have been. Kel uh, Nagel. Kel Nagel. No. Uh, Rod Pampling, I Rod think. Rod Pampling, he came through putt-putt. It's an entry Great level. White Shark. Is he a putt-putt? He friend? got his first, he, I think he Taste. had his first club at the Holy Moly. Now. Uh, look, the um, the putt putt was course was created by Tom Wyckoff. Oh, yeah. I mean, he couldn't he design a putt putt? Couldn't he ever? He put that barbecue thing with the hole in the middle where yeah. the fat goes out, the ball goes through there, yeah, 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 onto yeah. the thing, and then mm-hmm. he's got the alarm clock that makes the tee. That's right. You've got to play through there. That's hard. Mm-hmm. That's really hard. Uh, and despite efforts to find a new home for the love putt putt, apart from the suggestions that we've made to put it at Ramwick, mm. nearby sites as, such as Ride, Ride Bowling Club and Rydalmere Park were deemed unsuitable. I think drainage problems. Right. Wyckoff says he feels terrible to have lost after 47 years. Yeah. It's welcomed nearly 4 million visitors. Well, well, look at that in terms of turnover. And back into the community. Back into the community. Fish fingers. How, and yeah, I, I know. <laughs> How many schools have been built as a result of putt-putt golf? There's one for your academics to sit down and... That's a PhD. That's a thesis, isn't it? Right. Putt-putt's going to die. 
said the 80-year-old, 86-year-old uh, Wyckoff. Yeah. The site destined for closure on April the 30th, with most of its staff to be transferred, and this is impossible to imagine, mm. to the final putt-putt course at Mermaid Beach on the Gold Coast, where Mr. Wyckoff owns the land it's set on, so they won't be able to move it right. there. He owns the yeah. block, stock and Yeah, barrel. yeah, good. I believe well, it's an Australian invention too. I is it really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, I know a lot of people just go to Adelaide to play the Whizbang Family Fun Centre there. <laughs> the Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Uh, Roy, a couple of people have got in touch with us at uh, Roy and HG at thesportingprobe.com.au wanting us to give a bit out a bit more hill climb news, uh, which we're more than happy to do. Uh, hill climb. I mean, it's just such an Australian thing. Mm. And I just say this because it's family fun again, isn't it? Exactly, it's family fun again mm. with a bit of you know grunt and poke up front. Yeah. Now get this: the first round of the this is a couple of uh, in the near future, but I I'm, yeah. I want to get your thoughts on this. The first round of the interclub challenge will be conducted at the M, by the MG Car Club at the Rob Roy Hill Climb, Clinton's Road, Smiths Gully. Mm -hmm. This is the second oldest permanent built hill climb track in the world. No way. The I, knew world. It, I knew it was old. The second oldest in the world. Wow. Because it predates cars, doesn't it? It, it used does. to be for horses. <laughs> and wagons. Yes. And they're great classes. Mm. Uh, you know, obviously saddle on, saddle off, yeah. leading it up yourself, That's you right. know, chasing it up. All that sulky, sort of weighted yeah. sulky. You know, broom, yeah, all that sort fattest of fattest man to get up, that sort of stuff, yeah. And no, then it was it's great. swapped over to cars. Mm. Now, it, it, it's competition for cars of all eras and commences at nine thirty a.m. Mm. Spectator is ten. Car, you know, you know, carload of uh, family is yeah. fifteen. Now, F fifteen it, bucks to get in for it's a family. Incredible, God, that's good. Value. Can you get fish fingers and stuff? You there? can. Yeah. Well, they they and because that's good for the economy. Uh, of that area, I'm mm. not quite sure where Smith's Gully is, but uh, Clinton's right there now. Uh, one on today is the Hill Climb Championship. This is Gippsland Car Club. Oh, Conduct yeah. round three of the 2017 Victorian Hill Climb Championship at Bryant Park. Bill Schultz Drive. Couldn't Bill Schultz Drive. Mm. Uh, he's just incredible. Your lawn. Couldn't he climb, though? I, I mean, know. He was a climber. I, know. I mean, some people are natural climbers. He was one. He, he leant forward at the yeah, wheel he did. to get the weight forward. Yes. Uh, that's the secret. Mm. Uh, 1 p.m. to 7. It's a twilighter. Then we've got Druin Speedway. This is on February the 12th, which would be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The Druin Speedway, uh, oh, well, they've got a big card, really. Demo Derby, Mini Sprints, Gold Cup, Elimination, Cup for Standard, Silk Climb, uh, Divi Hot Rods. They've got mm -hmm. a junior women's standard. Oh, it goes on goes and on. on, and on. on. It's just great. All classes, as she All classes. Old cars, modern cars. Well, they've got a terrific range of things. Uh, yeah. BSC sedans, unlimited and sports sedans. Yeah, what's it cost to get in? Is it 15 or less? <laughs> 15 entry, $15. And pensioners, $10. Wow. Isn't pensioners, $10. Now, will 15 get a family in? I mean, is you pay? $10 for the... Oh, sorry, $40 for the family. Pretty steep, but great it is, entertainment. Can you hide a couple of kids in the you boot? You can, of course you can. Yeah. They're, they're, they know that's going on. I've spoken to the people. They turn to buy an eye. All they do is say, fair enough. If mm. I'm not seeing them, I'm not counting them. And the Maffer and District Car Club's Boys, Boysdale Hill Climb Round 1 will kick off at 1 p.m. Uh, next yeah. Saturday. Good. Uh, and conclude about 8.30 p.m., another twilight event. Yep. Head to 231 Boysdale and Newry Roads, Boysdale. Entry is free to all spectators. A kiosk featuring fish fingers and mashed potato will open throughout the meeting at Playground for the Kids and Putt Putt as well. Wow. Well, you'd have to say Hill Climb's pretty healthy in Australia at the moment. It is. That second oldest one. That's the one I like. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back with another sad story from the world of motorsport right after this. The Sporting Probe is a weekly Royal Commission into sport. Roy, uh, a great Aussie hero, Roscoe McGlash, and you and I have followed his career mm. for many over many decades now. Yep. To set this in context, uh, Roscoe was the first person to strap a MIG jet engine to the top of a Morris Cooper right. and see what sort of speed he could get. Yeah. Uh, the thing took off, obviously, until he realised he had to fill the bottom up with concrete to keep it down on the yeah. road. Yeah. It was a bit hard to steer, wasn't it? Correct. Once mm. it got airborne, <laughs> there was no matters no. and, you know, those adjusters, they have to make it go up. Yeah. Yeah. Down. Now. But a terrific idea. I know. A very what? simple idea. Mm. He, uh, the, the MIG jet engine, I think, was somehow ended up here, and I'm, I'm not quite sure the history of this. No. Uh, remember, of course, there, a few MIGs used to fly out of Nowra at yes. one point. And some rugby league player yeah, got up yeah, in Yeah, didn't uh, a referee? Cam it might have been a referee. Yeah, Bill Harrington, Bill, I want to say. 
Bill Harrigan might have Bill been. Harrigan, yes. Yes, yes. Now, he went up in a MIG, scared him, he said. Yep. Yeah. Now, hmm. the Roscoe, of course, is uh, built, and talk about an agile and innovative economy. It's all very well to talk about coal. I loved everything that happened in Parliament this mm. week about coal's back on the agenda. I'd forgotten all about it, solar panels and wind and all that. Coal, I, I, and wasn't it great to see a bit in Parliament? Yes. I mean, it's all when was the last time a bit of bituminous coal was Turned presented? Up. Yeah, well, this guy... But I didn't think you were allowed to have props, but it didn't matter. It was no. great. Now, this guy who, agile and innovative economy, yes. he's right up. Aussie Invader 5R is what he's got. And it looks Is like he up to five R. Ah. I know, I know. Oh, I'd taken the eye off the, you yeah. know, obviously the MIG strap to the mm. Morris Cooper. Yeah. Now he's up to five R. It looks like something out of a Philip K. Dick novel. It does, doesn't it? It looks a little bit like uh, Sir Donald Campbell's Bluebird. It borrows a lot from Bluebird. Mm. Now, but wait for it. Uh, he thinks he can go at a thousand miles per hour. Old a thousand miles per hour. Yeah, that's Mac. Well, it's more than Mac One. It's more than Mac One. Yeah, I know. Wow. Now, so, he, so he'd be finished before we could hear him. Well, before. We yes. Could hear him. In fact, he in fact, would... he'd be out eating the fish fingers, and all of a sudden, kaboom! <laughs> Bang. Now, but <laughs> right, it's hit a snag. And and can I just point out? I need to set this in context. Yeah. Roscoe McGlashan says we're racing to beat the Brits, oh, and we've lost yeah. fourteen months. Uh. You know, I'm the greatest optimist, but after spending my life in this project, I'm st- it's starting to wane. We're dead in the water at the moment. Why? Why is he dead in the water? 185,000 debt to the Australian Taxation Office has put the brakes on the Roscoe McGlashan dream of smashing the coveted speed mark in his car, the Aussie Invader. Now, can I say that he may be going for a double, a rare double, mm-hmm. both land and the air speed record if he can get the thing into the air? Right. So when you get up to 1,000 miles per hour... The thing has a very tenuous grip oh, on the terrain. Right, okay. Now, McGlashan, who holds obviously the land speed record, the Australian land speed record with a blistering 802k or 500 miles per hour, is described as an innocent victim. This is in the Fairfax media. Yeah. We know what they're like. Uh, innocent v- victim of the ATO's crackdown on tax rorting in the lucrative research and development sector. Ah. Now, uh. a botched application by an outside consultant for R- the R&D, that's research and development money, in 2014 provided much-needed cash injection for the Aussie Invader. Remember, it's Aussie Invader 5R. Mm. But when the ATO investors could, took a closer look, they found the money should not have been paid and demanded it back. Now, where mm. are we? Just putting this all on How course, much is it? How much 185000 Surely we can crowdfund that. I mean, imagine all the money we've tipped into that stupid Sarich orbital engine over the years. Yeah. Millions upon millions yeah. have been sucked up by the Sarich engine. Yeah. We've got nothing for it except a thing that turns a couple of well, you know, outboard right. motors. Well, how much money have we put into bloody uh, coal sequestration? Oh, Clean billions. coal. Billions. billions. What have we got out of it? Nothing. No. Because it doesn't work. At least we know with Aussie Invader, the bloody thing works. I know, and it's got a chance to put Australia right, right back Right back on up on top, top where it belongs. Okay. Couldn't the ATO sponsor it if, I mean, I'm trying to be Solomon here, but if we it's put a, a big sign idea. on Aussie Invader, yeah. whatever it is, 5R, yeah, 5R, sponsored by ATO. Well, or Australian Taxation Office, your tax experts. Your tax working. <laughs> sure, at 1,000 miles per hour, it'd be a bit of a blur, oh, sure. but when it stops, <laughs> you'd be able to get the full message. Now... Mm. McGlashan has reached a settlement with the consultant who got him into trouble, Good. but the tax office still wants their money. Right. Aussie Invader Proprietary Limited plunge into insolvency and now liquidators want to sell the Aussie Invaders. Seven years in the building, mm-hmm. you know, they obviously want to recoup, recoup their losses. Yep. McGlashan is worried he might have to go to scrap. The Perth-based speed pioneer, I love that, Perth-based speed pioneer, yeah. says the dream of an Australian-built vehicle breaking the 1,000 miles per hour barrier looks further away than ever. Even if the car's created, dot, dot, dot. Right. After sinking all his money, superannuation into Aussie Invader, the dispute was, oh, you know, no. he's still trying to raise funds to keep the dream alive. How fast has he got it going so far? How confident is he of the thousand? Well, that's a good has, question. Has he had a, any trials? Has he been to Lake Eyre or wherever? Lake Gardner. Lake or Gardner. Gardner. Now, can I point out, is this a thing about maths? Can you work well, this Lake out? Lake Bonnie, I want to say. Yeah, well, I think that's... I think that's... That's where... Uh, oh, that might be on water. Yeah, it uh, no, is. We oh, want a salt well, lake. Yeah, we yeah, want a yeah, salt lake. Yeah, yeah. Salt pan, yeah. Now look, can maths do it? Can you, if you know the 
a size of the car and mm. factor in aerodynamics. Yeah. Uh, and then the oh. amount of thrust. Yeah. Could you work it out mathematically? Well, I suppose you could. Well, he must have done that. He must have done that. Does he say what, what, what he's come up with? Uh, I mean, as I understand it, Aussie Invader now has, has uh, six of those engines. Wow, the MiGs. Six MiGs strapped Strap. together. <laughs> strapped to the concrete slab. <laughs> Pretty much with wheels. <laughs> Just summing this up, the spokesperson for the spokeswoman actually insisted the tax office tried to help mm. firms who fell victim of shonky R&D operators. Right. Clients have been given a bad R&D advice by higher risk advisors uh, themselves. Understand how the programs work, you know, oh. et cetera, et cetera. You know. Lord, could we get, could, is it up to the Barnett State Government to, to run a lottery? What a great idea. A McGlashan lottery. Well, I'll tell you what, how about out the front of Bunnings or one of those... Hardware shops, yeah. they have a fish finger Saturday oh, and direct do people. It. You don't it. need one weekend to do it. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Yes, this is the Sporting Probe with the two top probesters, Roy and HG. Now, uh, Danny Baderas, former Newcastle legend, that's rugby league legend, has backed uh, our Knights One Chance campaign, believing the club will prosper if it's placed in the hands of the community in the Newcastle area. Wow. As we know, the club has had a bit of a run of outs. It yeah. uh, doesn't have a major backer. The NRL controls the club still. Did not it have a... any penny chicken on it? That was some time ago. And then oh. it got into bed with Nathan Tinkler, who oh, I want to say right. allied coal or something. Allied coal, yeah. Yeah, now coal, thank goodness, is back in the parliament. Which is a bit ahead week. of its time, <laughs> weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Way too far ahead of their time. Uh-huh. No sponsor, no owner. The Our Knights initiative launched late last year could provide a viable alternative if organisers can raise the money required to via share offering to fans. The Fairfax people got this. Mm -hmm. Now, the suggestion is is that uh, some businesses or people might pay $500, and so then they need 40,000 of those people in the area. Uh, So they they, they get, generally speaking, a pretty good regular crowd. A a crowd around an average of 20,000, I think, so you're halfway there. Not, I'm not suggesting that each of those 20,000 would have 500 bucks they could throw in. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, there'd be 20 million. If they're looking for 20 million, mm-hmm. then some people might chuck in more than the 500. They might put in 1,000, yeah. so you only need yeah, one yeah, less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people might put in 10,000 yep. or something like well, that. Well, Nathan yeah. Tinkler would obviously put in a bit more, wouldn't he? He'd, he'd yeah, still be a fan. He's obviously a fan. I think he's moved offshore, though, he's lately. He's gone to the United States, hasn't he? Yeah, has at the he moment. That far? Yeah. yeah. Maybe Hawaii maybe. or something. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. so Nathan would be rung up and say, Nathan, You've got a little yeah. bit left. Can you yeah. kick the can here a little bit? Yeah. And, and of not. course, they'd be having fish finger sales. Yep. Obviously, at all grounds with the proceeds donated. They'd probably strike up a deal with Henny Penny to provide the fish fingers. I know, strictly chicken, well, mm. etc. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we could get something happening there. <laughs> we, we, maybe the bird's eye people. Bird's eye people. Could, could chip in with some. I don't know, just maybe put an extra five cents cost on your fish fingers and that five cents that could surcharge. go yeah, yeah. to now, the Knights. Do you think it's a viable model? I mean, I, I Yeah, think... the, oh, look, I like the look of it. Yeah, yeah. I like the look of it. I, I, it. It's crowdfunding in a way, isn't it? But but to, to, people are being a shareholder of your club. Would they want uh, team selection rights? Yes, though? of course they would. So you'd have to be done democratically. So you'd send out an email and say, these are the fit players, yes. pick your top 13. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. Top, you run on 13 and your yep. top four are for the yep. bench. And you'd have a program that could uh, synthesise yes. all that material because you can't have the coach, whoever the coach is at the moment. It's Nathan Brown. Isn't well, it? Nathan Brown. We can't have Brownie sitting there going through five hundred thousand emails saying, oh, "Well, they want oh, well, mm. that." Can't work. You'd have to have some program, some smart person from the university who can work out a program to help out the club. Now that could happen from Newcastle yeah. University. They'd plug into it the maths department and. <laughs> And a face. Do you need a face of this to uh, NBN Newcastle? If I've got the right television channel yeah, there, the NBN, but, yeah. yeah. Now they uh, obviously have. Are they it. behind it? Are they supporting it? Well, I'm not sure if they're supporting it yet, but they will. Yeah, right. I mean, could we get a, a superstar? Mm. I, I don't know quite. Somebody who donate their time uh, to help out here. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously Guy Sebastian comes to mind. He may know nothing yeah, about yeah, rugby yeah. league. So yeah. much the better. He'd come <laughs> sure. on and say, I haven't a clue about what I'm talking about here, but do this. Yes. Yeah, I see what you mean. A public face. Yeah, public I, face. I agree public with public you. Public. Yeah. Well, what about fa- like Father John Coots or someone like that? Someone who's well known. In the area. In, <laughs> in the area. 
I don't know. It might work. I tell you who'd be great would be Ben Teo. Hello, everyone. Ben Teo here in North Korea. <laughs> to get involved. Get involved with the Knights. Yeah. Well, that's and, what are, and Roscoe McGlashan. Why not a few? Why, why not have Aussie Invader? Five, ah. Uh, on show. On show. At the opening game. Kids pay five or six dollars to, to have a look. At, yeah, sit Start in it. Up. Start it up. And then, of course, putt, putt, golf. <laughs> Plus the Bunnings fish fingers sell off. Oh, I think we've got this solved. Corrupt officials and administrators, the gloves are off on the Sporting Probe. Well, Roy, sadly, that brings us to the end of another show here on the Sporting yeah. Probe. And remember, if you want to get in touch, Roy and HG at thesportingprobe.com.au. It's been a tremendous show, five slash four. That's right, yeah, 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 yeah. The controversial one. The one they said couldn't be made. And we'll see you next week, same time, same place. Bye now. Night. Bonafide Sports Mad Australians. Snakes alive. Is that the time? Yes, green and gold freaks, it certainly is. It's time for the Sporting Probe. With two diamond pythons twirled around the tree of knowledge across the nation. Boys and girls. Where the young man ain't got nothing in the world these days. Triple M Sporting Probe. Leading the charge up the eucalypts. With extra chilli on the stick is the in and out maestro rampaging Roy Slaven. And coming from behind is the heavy lifter with both feet on the ground. H.G. Nelson. Unleash the grunt and poke HG? Yes, uh, thanks very much indeed. Gentlemen, Jim Daniels, again in the Triple M Soundproof booth. Jim, we've worked with you for many years here at Triple M, but that read was outstanding. Not a word I often use. Yes, good morning, probesters. HG Nelson getting the sporting probe underway for another week across the nation. Tremendous to have your company down the deep end this morning as we prod about in the rubbish of this week's Red Hot Sporting Action. It's been a week, my very good friends, of massive collects... I remember race eight, Morfordville last Saturday. Yes, I was there and I had to get an extra bag to carry home the loot. Massive collects and massive disappointments right across the world of sport. Today, we'll be doing the in-out work on tennis, racing, cricket and rugby league. But to get us underway, let's lock horns with a man who snared the lift go open for a record 12 times on the trot. That man is rampaging Roy Slavin. Roy, can we get you in motion simply by asking, what were the highlights that caught your eye this week, bro? Yes, thank you very much, HG Nelson. So much to talk about. And can I say good morning to all honest hard-working Australians. Welcome aboard. Uh, a few issues we'll probably probe in the program over the next little while, uh, and I'll just leave them hanging here for you to think about. First question is, is our nation's gloveman, not a term I use all that often, that is Matthew Wade, is he up to the job? Uh, he's not very good with spinners, it seems to me, and we're taking four of them to India. Is that such a good idea? Think about that. Uh, why aren't Australians watching the tennis? Now, what I'm asking here, I suppose, is uh, is the love affair with uh, Bernie and Nick Kyrgios and uh, Sam Stoza, uh, has the love affair turned sour? Mm. Uh, that's my theory. The other theory is, of course, that Bruce is on holidays. More about that perhaps a little bit later. And just lastly here, I just want to leave this hanging here. Golfing superstar, and I use that term advisedly, that is... A uh, little Rory McElroy. He's in the news for two reasons. Firstly, Caroline Wozniacki, the Danish tennis superstar, is telling him to shut up and move on. And secondly, he, that is Rory, is saying he's glad he's not Tiger Woods. Make of that what you will. Corrupt officials and administrators, the gloves are off on the sporting probe. Yes, Roy, uh, it's the Sporting Probe, and can I say this today, I won't be able to use this many times during the year, but Roy and HG and the Probe, making Triple M great again. I haven't borrowed that from anybody, that's all my own work. Think about that for a minute. Now, Roy, you raised a fascinating question in your opening spray a few mm. minutes ago mm. concerning the absence of Bruce McAvaney from the Channel 7 coverage. Mm. I did see Twitter, uh, Twitter, Twitter erupted uh, with this, uh, wondering where Bruce was as the coverage kicked off uh, earlier this week. 
Uh, some, you know, people said something was wrong with the universe, and I'm not talking about Donald Trump being the president of America, but Bruce mm. McAvaney wasn't calling the tennis. Mm. Apparently, after a very long season, AFL Olympics, etc., he's taking a well-deserved holiday. But that's to take nothing away from Basil, yeah. Haim, yes. and Jim, who are doing an incredible job. Well, they are, aren't they? They're, they're, they're filling an enormous hole. And I, I, like you and like many Australians, I think, I felt there's just something wrong right. with this particular Australian Open. And we couldn't put our fingers on it. And then just someone said out of the blue, where's Bruce? Mm-hmm. And I realised that's what I have been missing, this what I'd call rainbow connection between two things, Bruce and tennis and Bruce and Jim Courier. Uh, there's a special connection there. That, chemistry. A uh, chemistry, thank you, that uh, that uh, really uh, Basil, although good yeah. and earnest uh, and, and, and hardworking and, and Hamish McLaughlin, tremendously hardworking people. No mm. one would, could work harder than those two. Mm. But it's just that rainbow connection with Bruce that we miss and I hope Bruce is back for week two of the Australian Open. I really do. And, and you know, we were going through the... Uh, uh, the surveys, the various surveys, and looking at the disappointing results Numbers. for the ratings uh, with uh. the tennis in the first week. Now, was it Bernie? What? Who knows? Was it Nick Kyrgios? Who knows? Was it Sam Stoza? Who knows? Was it Bruce? Yes. So, Bruce, please be back for the second week. I mean, I, I watched as much as I could last night of the, uh, the of the Fed Express, and I wanted to enjoy it. I wanted to savour it. I wanted to savour every moment of it. But Bruce wasn't there to share it. Do you know what, Roy? The thing that disappointed me most, and you can hear it in my voice as I'm talking now, was mm. that first encounter between Channel 7, the new look Channel 7's without Bruce, mm. and Sir Andrew Murray. Oh, yes. Uh, obviously, I've been looking forward to this for so long since, mm. you know, obviously got the knighthood. I thought, how are Channel 7 going to deal with this yes. incredible, you know, new look, new world of tennis that they've got to deal with, with a with a with what I'm describing as a rocking night yes. or a servant volleying night. Mm. It was tremendous, the interview. First five questions about how does it feel, how did you mm. feel when the Queen tapped, etc. cetera. Oh, yes. uh, but Bruce, I think, would have handled that so much better and been yes. able to illuminate what Sir Andrew mm. was feeling. And isn't it great that uh, Channel 7 had adopted the Sir Andrew moniker for yes. him? Yes. Uh, I thought they'd still stick with Andy. And, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, have they gone with Sir Andrew or Sir Andy, HG? Well, they're I going think... with a bit of everything. Oh, I think. They? You know, okay. Sir Andrew Murray, mm-hmm. Andy mm-hmm. Murray. Sir Andy Sir Murray. Andy, Andy, yeah. You yeah. feel as though it's changed him, though, don't well, you? Well, I'm just wondering, HG, whether, whether it's made him <clears throat> a little less likeable. You know how, how likeable Andy was, Andy Murray, you know, but now it's Sir Andrew or Sir Andy. We don't seem to relate to him as much, do you? I, I guess it's, you know, all the red carpet he's got to walk over and all of that and the doffing of the cap. And you feel when you're meeting these days, you've got to bow a little bit. Yeah, I, I know I did. Yeah, I, I know. You, you can't help it. Mm. Uh, so maybe this this is impacting on But But I tell you what, it's not impacting on his tennis. No. Can I say he's as, well, this is a great question, I think. Mm. I'd love to canvas some, get some real, you know, market research done yes. with it, whether he's less likeable now that he's become a knight or more mm. likeable because I always hated his guts. Yeah, I know you have. I know you have. Well, what about Sir Cliff Richards, HG? You know, terribly popular. Did his popularity stakes take a nosedive when he became a knight? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. No. Uh, well, um, I want to say Sir Bradley Wiggins. Oh, yes. The bike rider. Yes. Well, you know, I've always loved his work on the pedals. Yeah. And now Isn't that, that funny? Him? I never liked him. No. But once he became a knight, I thought, terrific bloke. Corrupt officials and administrators, <laughs> the gloves are off on the sporting probe. Yes, Roy, look, uh, just one thing there, terrific summary up of uh, some of the events surrounding the week of tennis involving Sir Andrew Murray and uh, Sir Bruce McAvaney. Uh, look... And I've got to say is that with, you know, obviously Bruce not there, it has opened a a gap for Leo Schlink to blossom. Mm -hmm. Leo Schlink's been covering tennis for the Murdoch people for many, many years now. I've always loved his work. Mm -hmm. And I believe now he is in the number one with Bruce having a holiday and certainly does put Basil home and Jim in the shade. And I'll give you an idea of how good Leo Schlink is. This is about uh, Novak's problems after he lost. This 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 is the joker. The Joker. Mm. Now, this is a this is an opening sentence in a paragraph or in a, in an article. His opening mm. paragraphs go: speculation around Novak Djokovic's obsession with radical diets intensified last night after the defending Australian Open champion was railroaded into a shock second round loss to Uzbekian bolter Dennis Isterman. Wow. That's a hell of a sentence. They don't write like that anymore, do they? (laughs) Let me give you a few of the highlights. Obsession, Obsession. radical diets intensified, Mm. uh, railroaded, shock, second round loss, bolter. I mean, that's all all crammed in. Yes. 
That uh, could be studied by students, you know, for the high school certificate, things like that, isn't it? I mean, it's got it all, hasn't it? It's got a collision of metaphors. It's It's got a structure about it. it it's got... Uh, so many ideas. It's got clauses, HG, clauses. I mean, so... You know, so often these days we're, we're reduced to simple sentences. Well, like jobs and growth. Jobs and growth or duh, you know. But to have someone who's come up with, you know, a structured sentence, I, I find that refreshing. I'd love you to read it again. Speculation around Novak Djokovic's obsession with radical diets intensified last night after the defending Australian Open champion was railroaded into a shock Second round loss to his Bekistan bolter, Dennis Isterman. Beautiful. That's yeah. just that's just beautiful. And and hasn't the speculation you know, I mean, intensified? That's not the word. I mean, it's it's gone viral. <laughs> Have you talked about anything else no. to anyone? No. I did see you talking to Sir Andy earlier. Was yes. that the first thing the knighthood didn't come up? All we talked about was diets, mm. specifically the Djokovic diet, which which it seems to me it's just bizarre. Everything's got to be liquid. That's right. Djokovic has been subject to increasing conjecture. This is Schlenk's position. Mm. Amid reports he's considering going on an all-liquid diet. Yeah. Reputedly, this has caused tension amongst his inner circle. Oh, yes. Who don't like the liquids, obviously. Well, they, obviously they, they, his they, bowel's they, reacting, and now mm. his inner circle's gone yeah. berserk. Yeah. Uh, for studies about nutrition and post-match recovery, Djokovic deflected concerns over his off-court uh, regimen by praising journeyman Isterman. Obviously, that's what you do. Has anyone probed Isterman's diet? He looks to be a solids man. Could he be all paleo? He might be paleo. I, I, I know he uh, he likes that quinoa. He loves the ancient grains, <laughs> you know, that uh, very, very they're popular all, at the I've moment. They're, they're all the go, these ancient grains. And you've got to remember, these ancient grains were around HU when we had a life expectancy of about 35, so they must be good. <laughs> now, if you're, if you're on an all-liquid diet, mm. if you're on an all-liquid diet, mm. how do you deal with ancient grains? Mm. Well, they, 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 they slip through pretty smoothly, mm -hmm. you know, because the ancient grains are sort of – you, you, you put them in those processes, H. Ah, oh, yes, you know, your thermomixes. Well, thermomix could do it, I suppose, but you, you can get those bullet things. And you, you, mince, you put in your mince, you put in your, your Vitabrits, you put in your, your, your toast, oh, you put in your coffee, you put everything in there and a fair bit of water, you juice it up, scull it down, and you're tickety-boo, you're right. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, downstairs is knocking. Smooth as smooth. Smooth as smooth. Like, it's like carnation milk on a laminix table. That's it. Now. Right. That, that's it. Now, that's and that's when you get the fans in to yeah, have a look. Have a smooth it is. <laughs> now, can I ask, can I ask whether diets, whether tennis stars, and I use mm. that, you know, even counting those who lost in their first round and so on, tennis stars today mm. are diet conscious in the way that Djokovic has been. Yeah. Um, I think I'm pretty sure that he went gluten-free about 30 years ago before he it did. became popular with everybody else. He Quinoa, did. obviously, all that sort of stuff, early adopter. Mm. Uh, and I'm just wondering if tennis has gone a bit silly. With well, it can go silly. It, it comes down to superstition, HG. I, I remember the great Ray Ruffles. Uh, great Australian champion from many, many years ago uh, who won a first round in Wimbledon for the only time in his life. But he'd, uh, he'd swallowed his chewing gum just before going out. And so he had a diet of just nothing but chewing gum there for years. Did he no good at all? Did he, you know, but, but it came down to superstition. Because he'd won that one time having swallowed chewing gum, he thought that was it, that was the secret. You know, a lot of tennis players... Need coaching. They they need psychiatrists around mm -hmm. them. They need people to be able to weed out the dross from the silver, because often they're just left with dross if they're left to their own devices. Because they're as mad as cut snakes, generally speaking. Speaking of that uh, genre, mm. and Nick Kyrgios and coaching. I know oh, yeah. we're jumping from topic to topic here, yeah. but have you? I'd love to know he's died. <laughs> I'd love to know he's died. I mean, he, he, something's right there, isn't it? <laughs> Something really right there. Mm. Where do you stand on Nick Kyrgios and coaching? Uh, I mean, mm. I did see after his loss this week, and let's face it, that will make this first week mm. of the 2017 Asian Slam in Australia, at, uh, you know, yeah. obviously Rod Laver and Reno, so on, very, very memorable. Yes. To be two sets up mm. and to lose, obviously, the yeah. match yes. in the fifth. I think yeah. it was 10-8 at the end. It was, yeah. Uh, he he beat himself. It was self-destructive behaviour. Mm. Now, is a psychiatrist needed? Probably. 
Look, but I would put in the coaching. Look, 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 I've spoken to Roger Rashid about this. And I yes, said, Roger, Roger, I, I said Roger, 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 would you like to coach Nick Kyrgios? And he said, no, I don't want to be gobbed off on in the box. Right. And none of them want to be gobbed off on the box. I mean, if you've got to sit in the Kyrgios box, you're going to get gobbed off. The only person I'd put in the box as coach would be his mum. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Yes, uh, this is Roy and HG on the Probe. <clears throat> Across the nation on Triple M, and we're making Triple M great again. Now... Going to Leo Schlink's thoughts about Nick Kyrgios is interesting, Roy. Uh, you mm. mentioned Nick Kyrgios and mm. the fact that probably his best coach would be his mum. Yep. Uh, here's another little bit from Leo to give you an idea. You know, if you're a tennis writer, an aspiring tennis writer, and so many kids I meet today across the nation are thinking about what they're going to do with their lives, and I have, I've said to them, and many have said to me, I want to be a tennis writer, and I've mm. said, great. Mm. Uh, here he goes. This is Leo. Nick Kyrgios lost more than a match on Wednesday night. He lost his way mentally. Do you? For how long remains to be seen, but for the moment, Australia's richest tennis talent is in limbo. Unless there's a change internally and externally, he is danger of remaining there indefinitely. Now, you were mentioning diet before. Is that what Leo's getting at, internally and externally, Must of be. internally the diet problem? Yeah, I didn't know he had a diet issue. Um, but, of course, diet can affect your uh, personality. Oh, it does. Yeah. yeah. See, if you only ate Mars bars, mm -hmm. you'd end up, responding to life as though it was a Mars bar. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I've got yeah. nothing against Mars no. bars. I don't eat them myself, but, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. just as a uh, something to clutch at as mm. a, yep. a dietary additive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pe people often eat too much chilli, and that, I've seen that affect people's personality. Uh, and now, I'm not suggesting Nick is a chilli man, and I think chilli, within reason, is pretty good for you, and it can activate downstairs if you are in challenged. a way challenged. Uh, uh, it can be very useful mm. uh, as, as a you know, diuretic and all sorts of things. It, it can bring about wonderful things downstairs. So I'm not definitely not anti-chili. But if there is, if, if uh, Schlicky knows something about the Kyrgios diet, publish. Tell us what it is. Now, Roy, a more interesting aspect of this is what's happening to a future generation of tennis players. Now, I know you... Well, what are you worried about, the diets of Australian tennis players? Well, I am. Track? I am. I'm also worried, and can I... I don't want to join a lot of things together here, but no. I'm going to. The Taralgan Open looms large as the elephant in the room here today. The Taralgan Open is this match where lots of Chinese people, as I understand it, became incredibly wealthy mm. uh, simply by knowing the result in advance, right. uh, much in the manner of race eight at Morpherville last weekend. Yes. Now, uh, I'm wondering if, you know, we're going into a phase where tennis players, then according to Paul McNamee, they're not earning enough on the circuit, mm. so they're you know, easily persuaded that doing something yes. untoward or illegal yes. would benefit them more than actually winning or losing a match. Yeah. Now, I know you in the past would never play the Orange Open mm -hmm. in New South Wales because you thought it was hot. Mm -hmm. It was, always, fixed. <laughs> Unlike the Lithgow Open where you thought you had a chance of yeah. winning it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it was Opal because there wasn't much gambling. There wasn't much betting on the Lithgow Open back in the day. But the Orange Open was always hot because, you know, gambling interests all around the world focused on it. I never knew why, and I stayed out of the politics of it, believe me. I, I just wasn't interested. This is in the days of the Milo tournaments, HG. You know, we'd, you'd play the Milo circuit, we used to call it, and so you'd play Orange, you know, Dubbo, et cetera, maybe. Wagga Wagga. Mm -hmm, sometimes. Down as far as Albury. Albury, yeah. Mm. Yeah, sure. The Good Wod courts at Albury. The Wodonga Open the was always more important, I felt, than, than the Albury Open. So there you have it. And, and there was always more betting on the Wodonga Open, uh, which you did know, you I was ever advised get, not to play it all that often. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever get approached? Yes. Mm. I did by Chinese interests, mm. by, by uh, other you know, Southeast Asian interests. I don't want to mention countries specifically apart from China, but they know who they are. And they, they would, uh, you know, come and they, they were pretty intimidating, actually. You know, they, they'd come often with a machete and a couple of machine guns. And a can of petrol. And a can of petrol. And point at the and, car. And uh, a cigarette lighter. And they'd say, uh, you play tennis? I'd say, yes. They'd say, you lose. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know. Mm -hmm. And so they'd put, you know, I'd, put, I'd, I'd speak to my coach and say, should I take this seriously? And uh, he'd say, well, I remember once he said, no, don't worry about it, and he found himself hanging upside down outside a helicopter. Um, anyway, you know, these things were going on back then, and there's no reason to believe they're not going on these days, HG, and it saddens me. I, and I think Paul McNamee is right. Mm -hmm. I think we've got to make sure that our lower-performing tennis players earn a lot more money than our high-performing tennis players. Excellent idea. 
because they've already got it. Yes. Earn on the way up. Yes. And then relax once you get to the That's top right. in the income stakes. Yeah. Now, have you ever been on the well, other end of this? some sort of hex thing happening. Oh. So the first time you play an Australian Open, you've got to pay, say. So $50,000. Yeah. And then as you win, you get it all back. You get it all back. Mm. Can I ask, have you ever been on the other end of it? You know, you might have found yourself at a loose end in Bangkok or, you know, maybe a loose end in Shanghai Mm -hmm. and sort of found yourself in a bar watching tennis and people have come up and said, you know, we know he's going to win. Do you want to get involved? Yeah, many times. I bought my first three houses that way. (laughs) Now, before we leave this particular aspect, and I don't want to alarm people, but Mm. an article bobbed up this week in the – Aftermath of the Kyrgios debacle. Fiasco. Fiasco. Uh, Nick Hansen was writing this. He mm. says, tennis coaches are warning mm. on-court antics of super brats like Nick Kyrgios and Bernard Tomic are giving rise to a generation of sports sooks. Sports sooks. Wow, I haven't heard the word sook in a long time. Now, they say surly tantrums, disrespect for officials, are becoming mm. routine in junior ranks mm. thanks to repeated meltdowns of the game's elite. Right. Uh, Vince Barkley, who's been, you know, with a bucket of balls in, I think, the Sydney area for about 40 years, uh, says, um, you know, the star's influence on children was you can't give in to the brats, otherwise you get a whole generation of complete morons. Right. Following the wake of Nick. Some of them turn up uh, to tournaments with no manners, no respect. They have the same haircut as him, same clothes, same everything. Remember, of course, Kyrgios was fined seven grand for his antics this week. Another, um, you know, tennis is going to be over. Uh, owner, uh, Dave Commons, said that, um, you know, most of his time was spent to emotional training rather than actual tennis training mm. to avoid curious style outbursts from juniors. It's shocking. I don't, want to, I don't want him to be somebody he's not, but he's leading every other player astray. Mm. Some of my lessons are up to 90% about emotional control, and that's because players like Kyrgios and Tomic, children don't pick up good habits. They pick up only bad ones. Mm. In time, they don't remember the outcome of the match. They just remember the significant moments. Mm. I mean, Roy? Yeah. It's bad, just, isn't it? Just true. Yeah. Well, well. If sporting stars are role models, HG role models are exactly what it is. So if you mm. do get, you know, players behaving like idiots, young kids are going to think, "Oh, well, that's how I want to be. I want to be an idiot. I want to be an idiot." Now, how do you cope with that? Well, I'm not too sure, but I think it's got, it starts in schools. Uh-huh. We've, we've got to have, you know, role model behaviour, and, and it might be good, useful for some of our tennis superstars s- to start visiting schools, say if Nick Kyrgios was to spend all next week. Well, school's not back yet. Well, let's say yeah, well, 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 when school back. comes back. Yeah, he's got a bit of time on his he's hands. He's got a bit of time on his hands that uh, he would go from school to school, every school in Australia, delivering a mail culpa. What an idiot I am, say, uh, you know, at mm-hmm. lunchtime. Lines up for an assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, school principal here, I'd like you to introduce our superstar, Nick Kyrgios. Nick, boo. come on up. Boo, boo, boo. Yeah. Yeah, oh, hello. hello, everyone. Uh, it's lovely to be here, and I've been such an idiot and a goose. Please don't be like me. Please don't be an idiot, and I'm so sorry. Any questions? Nah, get off. Boo. Honest Australians. Is there something whiffy about your club? Is a fully invasive, bi nozzled shafting intruder required? <laughs> Send your concerns to the sporting pro, Roy and HG, at triple m.com.au. Full discretion is assured. Uh, Roy, one of the stars of uh, this week's. I, I look, I, I, just before I come to that, mm. I think it's been an excellent first week. It has, hasn't it? Uh, look, so many so many talking points mm. have emerged from it. You know, obviously, on Kyrgios, we got a fair bit out of him. Yeah. Uh, the Joker, Bernie, Bernie last yeah. night, of yeah. course. Yeah. Uh, you know, he knew he, he knew Evans would be a tricky customer. He did. And, that's the way it proved. He did. and there's a history there. I mean, he and Evans go back. Uh, I think Bernie's old man had it in for Evans years ago, said he wasn't good enough to. True. Hit up with uh, Bernie. That's right. That's and I'm right. still unsure whether he's Bernie or Bernard. Well, I think he's both. Is he? I think he's both. Mm. Uh, you know, <clears throat> Bernard when it's long and Bernie when it's short. Right. Uh, but I never know what to call him, so I don't call him anything when I'm talking to him. Do you talk to too him. much? Well, a little bit. Just, yeah. you know, how's it going? And I never know whether to say Bernard or Bernie. So I don't say anything. I just say, oh, well, yeah, you're looking good. Yeah, you go. And all the, the best. Are the big parties still uh, part of the uh, the week? You know, remember, mm. uh, I think he ended up blew into Miami once oh, yeah. and uh, got a, an apartment, you know, maybe an Airbnb, but it was several thousand dollars a night. Mm. And the cops were called. And That's I think right. uh, Bernie's, Bernie fell asleep oh, yeah. uh, while the cops burst in and said, you know, what's yeah. going on here? <laughs> and after the cops left, uh, Bernie came to and said, was anybody hurt? Yeah. Or he was relieved that no one was, no hurt. One was hurt. That's yeah. the sort of high quality entertainment you get off mm. court with Bernie, never yeah. mind what you get on. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, yeah, I suppose so. Well, he, he is a party animal. I, I mean, a lot of Aussie tennis players are. Mm. You know, Josh Eagle, God almighty, he could party. That bloke, you know, couldn't play much, but uh, he could party. party yeah. Now, the new next generation, uh, de Menard, mm. look, uh, born in Sydney, lived yeah. most of his life in Spain. When he comes to Sydney to play, he mm. often spends time at Little Leighton's place. Okay. Little, that's Little Leighton Hewitt's place, mm. the chap who took apart Andre Agassi. I think about this time, mm. uh, many years ago in Adelaide, mm. uh, surprised, ambushed him, I suppose. He did. Like, he would he have been uh, de Menard's age at the time. He, he would Yeah, be. 16 or 17. Mm. De Menard said it was great <laughs> to have... Uh, that inside advice that he has when he's uh, staying with the Hewitts mm. and all the kids being there, you know, Beck, well, obviously Beck's uh, the missus and mm. uh, the kids, Cruz, Mia and Ava. Mm. And he said it was great just to have the inside advice all the time and get, uh, this is uh, Little Leighton's thoughts on everything. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. That would be fascinating. Well, I don't it think anybody be. else does get Little Leighton's thoughts on everything. I mean, what sort of questions would, do you think the kid had asked? Well, him? I know. Well, you know, he'd be obviously interested in, say, what Little Leighton's thoughts would be, say, on the balance of payments, um, on geopolitical issues. Or interest you know, rates. In Indonesia. Should be, we, we'd be worried about, the, you know, the rise of the right in mm. Indonesia, this sort of stuff. I mean, I mean, Leighton keeps his finger on the pulse. Most tennis players do because people forget, you know, tennis players is about travel. And when you travel, you arrive in another place, you immerse yourself in that culture. That's what Leighton used to do. You know, a lot of people like Bernie, you know, sure, Airbnb, parties, parties, you never go out. Not Leighton. He likes to get out and about and see what people are thinking. And that's why he's a tremendous resource, I think, for someone like uh, Miniar, uh, who's interested in the world. Not he, just the world of tennis, but the world. Itself. He said it was mm. a great preparation for the Australian Open. Uh, yeah. You know, very tough pre-season. I couldn't be happier, obviously. Stayed with him in Sydney and mm. also at his place in Melbourne. Wow. I didn't know he had a place in Melbourne. And at the French Open last year. He's got a place in Paris. It appears that way. Yeah. Now, get this. Mm. This is disturbing, you know. You think... You wonder why tennis players end up mad. I'll tell you why. Mm. Is that uh, Diminau, uh obviously had a great week. He did. But it's not the only unforgettable performance the teenager has produced. Right. This is Michael Shamus got this for the, uh, well, the Fairfax people. Mm. Fairfax Media has obtained a video of his Davis Cup initiation at a dinner in Sydney last September mm. that left the hundred, hundred strong audience, including Nick Kyrgios, Bernard Tomic, and Little Leighton Hewitt in raptures. Mm-hmm. Now, in keeping with the tradition that began under John Newcomb, uh, Alex, as the team Orange Boy, was required to produce some form of entertainment on stage in front of the Slovakian and Australian teams at the Davis Cup dinner at Darling Harbour. you remember this. Slovakia mm. came out to play Australia. Mm. I think we won that quite easily. Yes, yeah. we did. Mm. Anyway, the 17-year-old's performance has gone down as the most memorable of the lot, dressing up in a leotard with fellow Australians James Duckworth and Matthew Reid for a well-executed dance routine to Eric Prittis's Call On Me. <laughs> now, right. I was pretty nervous, the kid said, because I didn't know what was uh, I was going to do. Mm. Then the idea of doing this dance came up. I said I wasn't going to do it by myself, but mm. a couple of New South Wales boys said they'd do it with me. Mm. And the start uh, at the start, I was shaking. I forgot all the moves a bit halfway through. The other boys were a bit relaxed because they had a couple of drinks before going on, but I had to sip the Coke. Yeah. Now... This is extremely disturbing. Uh, is this a form of bullying, mm. meaning the youngest player, the orange boy, so-called, mm. has to get up and put on a turn for the rather older, seedier generation sitting there looking at their lips in anticipation? <laughs> yeah. uh, and if so, yeah. what happened when the poo, mm. Mark Philippoussis, was the orange boy? What happened when Little Leighton was the orange boy? Mm. Have we got videos of their performances? No. Well, they weren't recorded in those days, sadly, HG. No, they're, they're left to the imagination. Um, but this sort of bonding, this has been going on for years. I mean, I can remember back with the Shamrocks, HG, where, you know, it was the dance of the flaming A's. I know. Oh, you well, know, that's different, though. That's, that's rugby league. Of course you're expected in rugby league, right? <laughs> you know. But, you know, you people know, don't but, go but, mad. I know, but, but, but look, but, but, but to make the case, you know, on paper, on paper, it looks wrong when, when you look at it baldly. Okay, here, here I am, a young bloke, 15, and a lot of the older blokes are standing around and one of them rolls up a newspaper and says, all right, Roy, bend over, shoves it up and sets fire to it. And I'm meant to run around and they laugh. Now, on paper, that looks bad. It does. I, I, I grant you that. But at the time, funny as a circus. Corrupt officials and administrators... 
The gloves are off on the Sporting Probe. Uh, Roy, just speaking of rugby league and uh, fun, uh, let's go back to cricket last weekend, uh, the Sydney Sixers uh, bash, the big bash match. Uh, <clears throat> now, there was a reason Chad Sharp, and then I've got open brackets, one of the two streakers who stormed the middle of the SCG during the Sydney Sixers' big batch loss last weekend showed impressive footwork to sidestep up to 20 security guards. Sharp was a talented 5'8". Was he really? Uh, so much so that to f- uh, former NRL forward, now assistant coach, labelled him as one of the best, that's uh, Paul Stringer, labelled him as, wait for it, one of the best players I've seen and coached who never went on to the NRL. I'll be buggered. Uh, Stringer uh, was coach of Wyong in 2008 when Young Sharp left uh, the Terrigal and joined his talented brother Matt at the club. Right. He went on to make the country rep team later and played several games in England. Right. Uh, just before his uh, nerd run, mm. Sharp had touched down uh, from a holiday in Bali uh, and uh, this explains the rather attractive, um, you know, suntan lines. Oh, okay. Apparently, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, scouts were ringing up about Chad for several Several years, but uh, the kid didn't want to play in the NRL because he had bigger fish to fry at the SCG the other week. The other now, week, yeah. You, it triggered an idea for you. Well, look, though. look, I, I went along to that game, local derby, uh, and the atmosphere was fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the most exciting atmosphere I've seen. You know, oh, God, I'd have to go right back. But uh, unfortunately, the game was a bit of a dud. Mm. Uh, performances were pretty ordinary really so the game was only going to go half as long as a game should go and so you know this bloke put his hand up to uh, amuse the audience uh, to give us something uh, to look at I, I, I didn't mind it no. I, I didn't mind Chad doing that you know it was funny you know but everyone was laughing and you know watching the security guards fall over and not be able to catch him that was all great but it did give me a bit of an idea HG and I got this uh, idea as well when I looked at the pool set up at uh, the Gabba yeah. during the, the, the test matches. And I thought, this is fabulous that people can go along to the cricket and do something else if the cricket's dull, because often it can be. You know, you get periods of slow scoring, etc. And so to have the pool there, great. Why not, say at a Big Bash do, have an area for nudists? <laughs> to have where someone like these blokes can just go there and sit, sit and en- no. enjoy themselves in their... Worship of nudism, which is which is what they really like. Now I know it's a family night, but if they were screened off, screened off, so they'd just be nude amongst themselves in the main the way we have nude beaches everywhere, right across uh, right across Australia. Actually, yes. they don't offend anyone. No, you know what the story is. You know what to expect if you walk into a nude area. You're going to be confronted. Some people find it confronting, others find it arousing. Some mm. people find it normal. Mm. doesn't mm. matter. We have this great spectrum of reaction to nudism. You know, there's an exhibition of nudes at the, at the it might be the, the, the gallery Sydney in New Gallery. South Wales. Yes. yes, and it's spectacular. Yeah. It's fantastic. Everybody's nude. Look at those Lucian Freud nudes of people with psoriasis. I love that. You know, it's confronting. Sure, sure. But that's what nudism's all about. That's it's, what it's, art's about. It's facing yeah. reality. Yes, you know, yes. not everyone's perfect. Right. You know, some people have, you know, bum boils and all sorts of things, and you're confronted by this if you're sitting behind them and they stand up, you know, if someone hits a six, and you've got to think, oh, well, that's human. You yeah. know, but I just thought it would be a terrific opportunity mm-hmm. and would stop this obsession people have with taking their gear off and, and running, running out into the no. public. Would if you they have... could just sit there like normal people nude. <laughs> Would you allow full-strength beer to be drunk in Yes, because there? there's nothing funnier than a bunch of nudes half-cocked. <laughs> the Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Bonafide Sports Mad Australians. Snakes alive. Is that the time? Yes, green and gold freaks, it certainly is. It's time for the Sporting Probe. With two diamond pythons twirled around the tree of knowledge across the nation. Boys and girls. Well, the young man ain't got nothing in the world these days. Triple M Sporting Probe leading the charge up the eucalypts. With extra chilli on the stick is the in and out maestro rampaging Roy Slaven. And coming from behind is the heavy lifter with both feet on the ground, H.G. Nelson. Unleash the grunt and poke H.G. 
Uh, yes, uh, thanks very much again. Uh, gentlemen, Jim Daniels getting the second hour of the uh, Sporting Probe for this weekend underway again. Now, Roy, let's go back to Morpherville last Saturday, the last race. And I've got to preface my comments here by saying I don't know what's going in on in Norwegian's thoroughbred racing. I've got to say that right from the start. I don't. No. It's most remiss of me to come on air and say I don't know when the Oslo Cup is run. Mm. I don't know when the Norwegian equivalent of the uh, Golden Slipper is run. I just don't know. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I assume the Oslo Cup would be run sometime, say, in August, yeah. when you think the tracks might have had a chance to dry out. Oh, the, ice, uh, the ice to disappear and... <laughs> I suppose. That's right. <laughs> and I've got to say, is the reason why the this... The fields too. The fields <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Look, um... And but so, it is a mystery, and it has been for a long time. I, I, I don't know anyone who's done an expose of uh, Norwegian racing. You mean there's stuff to find out that we should know about? As I assume so. It's not a safe bet? Uh, well, I, I, if you know, it can be uh, yeah, Obviously, yes. Yeah. If you're in the know, it's a mm. terrific place to bet. Mm. Uh, look, can I just say this concerns a uh, jockey, uh, obviously Josh Cartwright, who, according to Brett Kavanagh, who you know, who got the kid onto a horse in the first place, he said, this is Brett talking, he could stand up on, a, on the saddle, ride him upside down, lean over and pick up a rock at full gallop. There's nothing the kid can't do. Mm. Uh, and we come to Josh Cartwright riding in this race, and um, he um, obviously caused interference to two horses on his outside as he veered off on his mount, which allowed Anna Giorgio, the Norwegian super hoop who's out here, uh, to run away on Murty and uh, obviously claim the prize. Now, uh, there are some suggestions that, uh, you know, not everything was as it may seem, just an innocent swerve to the right from uh, Josh Cartwright on his mount and allowing uh, Anna to scoot through uh, on the inside and claim the prize. There's suggestions that uh, there's been infighting and jealousies in both male and female jockey rooms in Adelaide for a long time. Cartwright, a relative newcomer to the state, is being bullied by more established jockeys. The real story will come out, adding that uh, there had been some aggro in the rooms last Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of people close to Cartwright uh, said that he'd spoken of his desire to stop riding. Oh, dear. He said uh, apparently the relentless, relentless starvation has sapped his passion for it. He's described extremely, he's been described by others as an extremely hard worker yeah. who'd ride all over the place uh, and often very good at educating young horses, but he had to starve himself to make the uh, 55 kilogram mark right. and was under constant pressure to keep riding, even though he was earning very little money from it. Right. Uh, look, this is a very sad story. Is it story. a story of romance, HG? Does romance... It I, I, does. I'd look at the romance angle here. Yes, because it, it appears... He and Anna, is there any... And, mm. Exactly. Well, mm. he and Anna, are they in the back of the float uh, after mm. the last? Is that what you're suggesting? Well... <laughs> Enjoying each mm. other's company? Well, that seems to be... That, 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 that's what I took out of it. Mm. See, I, I, I saw it as he performing a chivalrous act... A chivalrous. Yes. This was my gift for you. The difficulty was Anna's claim mm. was three, because she, I take it as an apprentice, she's able to claim three kilograms. Right. Uh, this was perceived plus on the favourite, uh, and she replaced her boyfriend who rode uh, the 50 to one pop, 50, 50 to one pop, uh, senior counsel. Senior counsel caused all the interference, which allowed Murdy to scoot through. I think there was. Now, hang on, boyfriend. But is the boyfriend there referred to as that? Josh? Yes, Josh, Josh, the sorry, boyfriend. Sorry, I should have explained that. That's what I mean. The rainbow connection between South Australian racing and Norwegian racing yeah. has yet to be explained. I had no idea. I had no idea. Now, Adelaide and Oslo. Okay, so so Adelaide jockey Josh yes. falls in love with Norway's Anna. Correct. And they're in the same race together. She on the favourite. She on the favourite. He, on, he a, on a bit of 50 a... 50 outside. Outside. With a chance. Yes. But cloppity clop, off they shoot. He wants to make sure she wins, so he takes out the rest of the field, Not essentially. Bad. Almost knocking Stubby Holder off yeah, his mount. Yeah, yeah. That went viral, of course, around the world. But the difficulty was, was there any suggestion, I know you were trackside for the event, mm. was there any suggestion afterwards that he didn't have to do it? Mm. That she, on Murty with the three kilo claim, mm. obviously could have done it all by herself? Well, I think her disappointment was that, that, that he, that is Josh, didn't trust her ability. I know. I know. And that could be the straw that breaks the camel's back of their relationship. And how sad would this be? And here's a bloke who's thrown his career away through love. I know. Who took out those, those horses through love. And that very act 
has turned his love sour. It's a, it's a sad story. I mean, it's a, a film. It's a, there's a, a it's, film? There's a film in it. Of course there's a film Writes in it. itself, obviously, doesn't it? Mm. Obviously a bit of chat in the car park beforehand. Yes. It's, got a, it's got everything there. It's got The language difficulty. She probably doesn't speak much English. I don't know. So it's all dumb show, you know. He's grabbing his heart and pointing boom, at her. Boom, boom, boom. You know, making <laughs> and, noises, emojis on the <laughs> yes, text messages because yeah. you can't understand a word he's saying. That's right. And then terrific casting, young people, fit mm. people, yeah. obviously connected with horse. You've got kids involved, mm. obviously. Yeah. Fantastic story. Chat in the cup. You got unity of place, Morfordville. You've got unity of time, the mm. last. You yeah. got unity of action, yes. horse racing. That's what right. And then you've got the tragedy at the end where she storms off. Why won't you talk to me? Why won't you talk to me? Why? Because you didn't trust her ability. I know. And can I point out that there's a little sting in the tail saying that, uh, and this beautiful writing here, uh, back page of the Murdoch uh, papers, uh, the uh, Michael and Christian. Keep hearing that betting records on the race also won't disappoint. Oh, really? Well, that's good. So some there were some winners come out of it. Corrupt officials and administrators, the gloves are off on the sporting probe. Yes, Roy, this week, <clears throat> big... Uh, changes in the world of swimming in Australia. And swimming in Australia is uh, on the verge of announcing a series of reforms uh, in the way it approaches major events after competing, uh, completing its uh, review of mixed bag performances in Rio Olympics, which we don't have to go through now. The Fairfax media got this. Uh, for instance, Australia have trials months before major events and will do, this, do the same this year with Australian Championships being held in April in Brisbane before the FINA World Cups in, uh, in Championships in Hungary in July. Uh, obviously, the US... Is, holds the trials much, most cl- uh, much more closely connected with major events. So as swimmers get in the groove and they continue yeah. on, ours seem to drop out of uh, form. Yes. But sadly, mm-hmm. in this meeting, which you and I attended, you know, obviously on behalf of the new Minister of Sport, Mr Hunt, uh, the swimming officials gathered in Melbourne on Thursday, and this is what I'm describing in other media commitments. I put this up on my blog last night, spent about 30,000 words on it, oh, yeah. as a reverse Australia Day miracle is that on Thursday, Swimming Australia confirmed Italian brand Arena as its official swimwear supplier for the next four years. Now, that troubles me. Thanks. It disturbed me profoundly. It's the first time since 1956 Australia swimmers will compete in any other brand than Speedo. Oh, now, yeah. sure, Speedo's not owned by Australians anymore. That went no. a long time ago. That was yeah. one of the first things we sold off along with the kitchen yeah. bun. At the event, a Ferrari was wheeled out for the announcement, which, let's not forget, Swimming Australia is now under the baton of John Bertrand, one Australia, I rest my case, uh, said was a massive, Bertrand said it was a massive step forward for the national body in its history with Speedo. Arena, which already has a number of high-profile deals with high-profile Australian swimmers, was perceived to have better technology in its suits. Uh, Bertrand's, uh, you know, excuse, if I can put it that way, is was we're taking the world with a, on the world with a budget smaller than a than a hockey club, uh, and the reality is they have an advantage, so we need to get it, you know, where we can. Now, it just disturbs me profoundly as we approach Australia Day. Yeah. We've got uh, Trump announcing today it's going to be hire America and buy America. Yeah. Here in Australia, we're going exactly in the opposite direction, and I come back to the Minister of Sport, who should be stepping in here and saying, mm. sure, sure. Sure. But um, it's not good enough. Yeah. <clears throat> well, if I was the Minister of Sport, and I'm not, no. I, I, I think I'd be stepping in and say, well, listen, let's press the pause button here. Hey, let's, let's not run into this. I, I don't know anything about this arena company. Uh, Ferrari, sure, I've seen those, but uh, d- does that represent Australia in any way, shape or form? No. No. And I'm heartened this week that Vegemite is once a year owned by Australia. Well, that's an Australia Day miracle, Now, obviously. if, you know, someone had suggested, well, our uniforms for our swimming team this year are going to be players will be given a jar of Vegemite and they smear it over their private parts and in they go into the water. Well, I'd be over the moon. I know. I think you beauty. Common Confusion. sense. Common sense, but he stepped in at the last minute. Yes. Now, has Minister Hunt said anything about Vegemite? Has he said anything about swimmers smearing their bodies with Vegemite to protect their modesty and improve their speeding times, their speed times? Because I tell you, I don't know any Australian who hasn't swim, hasn't swum in Vegemite and got a better time. The Sporting Probe is a weekly Royal Commission into sport.
Yes, it's Roy and HG here on The Probe. And uh, this week, Roy, I was thrilled a bit when uh, Mr Malcolm Turnbull, our Prime Minister, announced that Greg Hunt was going to be the new Minister of Sport. And I thought, you beauty, common sense at last. And it took me back. It took me back to the golden era when the uh, 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 man, Rod Kemp, was in charge of sport. And sadly, he's blotted, I mean, the new minister has blotted his copybook with this arena deal that we were talking about a minute ago. And I'm just, he... But, but, but was it a done deal? I mean, I think did, it was. Did, did, did Minister Hunt okay. come in and it would have so. been signed by it Minister would've. Lee? Yes, it would have. It would have been yes. on the previous the yeah. previous purview, previous watch. I don't think we can blame Greg Hunt for that. No. Can I just point out that when he accepted the job as Minister of Health, which is the other part of his gig, yeah. he did say that his mum and dad had met in a hospital. Is that uh, right? And this gave him an insight, I mm. suppose, that he thought ordinary people may not have because their parents hadn't met in a hospital. Mm. So that was really good. But I'm just wondering what his sporting connection is. Yeah. And then I went through my records uh, at home last night, which this formed the other blog I put up about 400,000 words on yeah, this, yeah, of yeah. the connection of Hunt and Australian sport. Right. And This uh, is new sporting minister Greg Hunt. Greg Hunt. And his association with sport. His association with sport. Yeah. I couldn't find much in the world, uh, you know, that connected him with sport in any way. No. Uh, did he play football or cricket or anything like that? No. Yeah. Was he a swimmer? I don't think oh, so. Okay. But Hunt is a very good uh, uh, name in Australian sport. Yes. And uh, this oddly happened, a weird coincidence, mm. Rex Hunt, the great, uh, the former uh, Richmond footy player. Oh, the yibbity yibbity man. The yibbity yibbity man himself. Yes. And of I, course, I love his work. Well, he, remember his work with fish? He'd kiss the fish. That's right. And he could always find them. I never I, 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 I suspect he bought a few in the aquarium on the way down. Sure. But be that as it may, that's just dumb. He's television. been quiet for a while. Correct. Mm. But this year he's back mm. with 3AW, the Melbourne station, doing a, a post-footy review uh-huh. of the matches, uh, sort of, uh, you know, after the siren sort of show. Uh, taking talk back, H- Taking talk back yeah. ideas, you know, mm-hmm. what can be done about, you know, say the boundary, you know, yeah. rust behinds, all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, anything you like. Rucks, are they good as they were in my day, etc. Uh, a terrific show. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow, look at that connection. You know, Are I'm, they related? Well, uh, I'd like to think Rex, so. Rex Hunt and, Greg and, Hunt. and the new... Minister Sports of Sports Minister Greg Hunt. That'd be your first guest. You know, hello everyone, welcome to Yibbity Yibbita. <laughs> and our first guest today is Greg Hunt. Greg Hunt, Rex Hunt here. How are you? Good day, hey Rex. Lovely to catch up with you again. How, how are you hanging? How are you catching them? <laughs> exactly. <Okay>. Exactly. <laughs> well, there's a show. That's good. And then mm-hmm. uh, I thought, now there's a Jeff Hunt too, and I connect Jeff Hunt with squash. Squash right player, yeah. He like, was one of the greats. He lasted for a very long time. Yes. There's people doing squash. Mm-hmm. Um, Don't and, know who our current champion is. Squash has sort of dropped off the radar a little bit, hasn't it? Do you think the probe should have a go at getting squash back? Well, I'd like to see more squash on television. When was the last time you saw a good game of squash on TV? Te- oh, I, I can't, can't remember. remember. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can't we get some sort of, you know, Channel 10, they're always great with ideas. Big Bash, that was great. People love it. Ooh. Why not some sort of, you know, squash, super squash? Yeah. squash. yeah. Fast four squash. Fast four squash. Where do you stand on the fast four issue, Roy? I, I hate it. Just, yeah. It's just rubbish. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Oh, yes, sorry, just uh, drifting away there. Uh, oh. Of course, Hunt. The name got, Hunt. It resonates with mm. Australian success. Josh mm. Hunt. The great Geelong Cat, yes. who retired a couple of years ago, I yes. think. A back player, very solid, nuggety. Very sort of solid, yes. Nuggety back player. Would never let you down. Look, never... <laughs> played with courage. Courage, yeah. Could I, I mean, I think we can associate the name Hunt with courage. Always back into a pack, much in the manner of Rex Hunt, probably. Rex played. Hunt, you bit a man, we've yeah. discussed him. There's Carmichael Hunt. Ah, uh, the dual code. The dual, the code hopper. The code hopper, one of the original, and some say the best code hopper. Code hopper, hopper yeah. Who... Am I right in thinking he went and came back? I think so. Or came back to something else? Yeah, maybe. He did. maybe did he end up with the Queensland Reds? Yes, yes, he did. He did. That, a that's three the one. Code hopper. Yeah, so he went from league to AFL, AFL to the Reds. then to to the Reds. Yeah, well, that's that's uh, Carmichael Hunt, Ben Hunt. Ah, oh, yes, coming from the Broncos, Broncos to, to the Dragons. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Greg Hunt, our new sports minister, There's very well connected, very big sporting shoes into which he can. Oh, I don't know, parlay, make use of? Wouldn't it be great his press first press conference if he had a gathering of the hunts? <laughs> Just looming behind him, you know, nodding and everything he said. <laughs> or oh, 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 standing there looking bemused, wondering, what am I doing here? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Jaden Hunt, uh, Melbourne Demons have signed a young player, yeah. and there's uh, who's this? Is Taylor there, Hunt, right? Who's been delisted, I think, this year by the uh, Geelong Cats. Isn't there a UFC fighter? Yes, we think Mark, Mark Hunt. Hunt. Yeah, Mark Hunt. I think he fights in the Geelong Jumper. Does he really? Yes. Yeah, so that'd be something for UFC people to look out wow. for. Wow. Okay. So we can imagine the conference. We'd have a couple of Australian frags. Would be Parliament House. You know, out he comes, Minister Hunt. Out behind him comes. Carmichael. The yibbity yibbity man. I'm the yibbity yibbity man. Josh Hunt, Carmichael Hunt, Mark Hunt, Ben Hunt. Whoa. Oh, and maybe the yibbity yibbity man could introduce him because yeah. he's got those speaking skills. He does. You know. He does. He'd have a fish there, kiss it and say hello, everyone. Remember me? Remember me? Yibbity yibbity. <laughs> <laughs> now, Roy. Well, isn't that great? And I like the way the priorities you put on this HG. He's no longer the Minister for Health and Sport. No, he's Minister sport. of Sport. 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 Sport, Open more sport. And hell. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And I've got to say, I, I don't mean to be unkind to the previous incumbent. Susan Lee. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, I mean, sure, buying f- apartments on the Gold Coast is important. I understand yeah. that. Spontaneous. Like, spontaneous. Yeah, and yeah. obviously on a whim and all On a whim, stuff. yeah. You and, just see a great apartment. You think, oh, God, I have it. You know what that's like. I do. Real estate is like that. Just yeah, on the you mirror. don't want to think about it. No. Because if you thought ago, about it, you wouldn't do it. I know. I'm driving past. I see something yeah. for sale. For sale? Hello? Apartment? <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Stop. Hold the car. <laughs> Up we go. Up we go. Lift. Woo! 11 foot. Look at this. Yeah, this is fantastic. How much? 850. Oh, Not oh. a problem. Yeah, no. Now, look. <laughs> Obviously, with that on your mind, you do not tend to have, say, sport uppermost in your mind. No. When so many great Look, issues. Look, had she been going up to see, say, I don't know, the the Gold Coast uh, Suns training, Suns training, or or to see a little bit of Big Bash, say, yeah, at, at the bash. Gabba or something like that? Mm. You think, oh, you beauty, great, well done, Minister, good on you. Mm. Uh, and it's not as if she, you know, was surrounded by a pack of Lees sporting champions. <laughs> Can't think of any. No. <laughs> and Lee Matthews isn't right. No, that's wrong right, right. His name was Matthews, Matthews Lee. Lee. He'd be, be fine. Different. Now, uh, just speaking of the Big Bash, which we haven't talked much about of, there's a couple of issues that I'd like to talk about the Big Bash. Firstly, oh. the expansion of the... Uh, franchises. The franchises. I know, and I know you have to declare, and then I'll do it for you, an interest here because you are heading up a Lithgow 303s consortium to That's get it, it in the Big Bash. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, do you think... Well, we're not sure if it's going to be the Lithgow 303s or the Lithgow FNs. Ah, uh, yes. The FNs. And we hope to get that arena firm, that terrific firm from Italy... That do your clothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. And is there any suggestion that Vegemite may be coming on board as a major sponsor? For smearage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, according to uh, people, that the, there's, no, there's no immediate plans from Cricket Australia to expand. Aren't there? The 18 Big Bash. Despite that sort of thing. It. Has Minister Hunt said anything about this? Exactly. My point. You know, despite sold out crowds and huge TV ratings, the Big Bash is determined to stick with the current series of teams for the next few years rather than introduce new clubs to build on the popularity of the young competition. Now, they've got a number of different options, one of which includes the Lithgow FNs sponsored by Arena and <laughs> Vegemite for Smearage. But do you think it should expand? It seems to be yeah. going through the roof and yeah. almost any... I, look, I, I, look, I always let the market determine this, HG. Mm-hmm. I mean, once there are too many teams, the market will say we've had enough. Yeah. But at the moment, the market say more, please. We want more. Mm. Now, I know for sure if you were to establish a club, say in, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say Bendigo. Yeah. Say the Bendigo Bears. The Bendigo Bears. Well, let's just say for yeah, no, no, say the great. Bears, the Bears are back. The Bendigo, Bendigo Bears are coming. The number of people from Bendigo travelling, you know, in to watch their team play, say at the G or somewhere like that, it would be phenomenal. It would. Buses. You wouldn't Buses. have enough bus trains. Exactly. You'd have be... to put in an yep, airfield yep, line. Yep, yep, It's for growth. Growth, jobs and growth. Yeah, yeah. So you've got the Bears, say, against the Lithgow FNs. Who isn't going to look at that? Honest Australians, corruption in sport is everywhere. If you have information that could put corrupt players or administrators behind bars, send your information to the Sporting Probe. Roy and HG at triple m.com.au. Full discretion is assured. Roy, speaking of corruption, uh, Cricket Australia are investigating a possible integrity breaches uh, by broadcaster of uh, the Big Bash Channel 10 during telecast on Wednesday night. Now, the Fairfax people got this. The network, network has landed in hot water with Cricket Australia after what appeared to be a good-humoured, 
live interview with the Adelaide Strikers captain Brad Hodge. Mm. This became a subject of an anti-corruption investigation. Now, commentator Marky Howard, Marky Mark Howard, told Hodge of paceman Ben Lachlan's recent success against a Sydney Thunder captain Shane Watson. Yeah. Lachlan was brought into the attack in the following over. Uh, this is Marky Mark Howard said, our master statistician, Laurie Conover, tells us that Lachlan has got Watson twice in the last eight balls he's bowled him in this competition. Really, said Hodge. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it with you, Skipper, said Marky Mark. Hodge then said, I'll bring him on in the next over. Let's get into him uh, next over, bud. Mm -hmm. Now. What happened? Did the, did it work? No, it didn't work, no. uh, as nearly as I remember. Uh, the dialogue may have come across as a joke. Obviously, mm -hmm. the... Uh, it's said here with billions now bet on the BBL. Is that your understanding? My, that that's billions, my especially in China. Yep. Billions are bet. Billions. Yep. Yep. Billions. Billions. Oh, uh, I've had, I've had this, I've had this confirmed by, uh, I think it was uh, Ben Hunt. I was talking to. He'd been talking to uh, Greg Hunt, the Minister for Sport, who'd got that from Rex Hunt, the Yibbity Yibbity oh, man. I think that's right. Who'd been talking to Carmichael and Josh Hunt. Wow. Cricket Australia are on the lookout for even the slightest into corruption, mm. worried that information such as that aired by Channel 10 could be used by punters or bookmakers. Yeah, well, I suppose it could be. Uh, now, I don't think he did bring him on, but uh, I, I hope I've got this right. I don't think it had any effect on right. getting Watson out. But, of course, I had a bet that Watson wouldn't get out. Yeah, okay. You, you know were what I mean? lucky, yeah. Yeah, I was lucky. Yeah. Okay. But I did. I must say I got a massive collect on that final over last night, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which resulted in a couple of six and several wides. And the win on a wide is a really difficult bet to get. I would have tried that maybe three or four hundred yeah. times yeah. in the big bash. Yeah, it's lovely when you get it, isn't it? It is. It's, it is it's really good. But, but, but what is Plays the well. suggestion here, H.C.? I mean, a Cricket Australia concerned, I, I mean, was Brad Hodge – the, the, the captain, that is, was was he not privy to that statistical information? If so, should that statistical information that Mark Howie Howard has access to, should that be made public? Is that the suggestion? The that su all the possible statistics of bowlers and batters in this particular fixture should be made available to punters so they can make a, an informed, an informed gamble. Is that it? The difficulty that I have with it mm. is I think any serious punter would know these statistics given that the easiest one to find is how often does Shane Watson get out yeah. to Lachlan's bowling? Yes. You'd you think, that, you think that'd be that's you'd, the most you'd be able obvious to Google that. You'd yeah. be able to find that oh, on Google. Be able to Google well, which why hasn't Brad Hodge done that work? He probably has, Roy. Oh. Very, very professional Hodge. You know, strings Marky Mark Howard along, yes. makes it look as though, oh, wow, well, oh. what an idea, Marky, come ah, with me, etc. Showbiz. Show business, yes. Okay. Look, do you do you think that um, this is the future, though? I'd like that, to think it was. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That we get involved with yeah. passing information from the, the, the commentary team, become mm. players in the game. Well, see, I've always had this dream of being able to have talk back with the players so, so that, you know, you could phone up from home, just a punter, and phone – Howie, Mark Howard, and say, oh, go, okay, Mark Howard, here. here's Graham here from Bendigo. Uh, can I talk to Hodge, Brad Hodge? Yeah, I'll put him through. Yeah, not a problem. Hey, Hodge, I've got a bloke here from Bendigo. Oh, okay, good mate, how you going? Listen, could you put someone Could you put someone in its lips? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, thanks for that. Next caller. You know what I mean? So really the public could get involved. <laughs> Terrific <laughs> idea. I love it how Channel 10, uh, the talkback conjures. Yes. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. And you might have a couple of heavy hitters phone in, you know, like, like I don't know, Alan Jones or someone like that. Alan phone, Jones is going to phone he'd in. He'd phone in. And he'd say, I want to talk to Shane Watson. Yeah, put Shane Watson on, please. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a disgrace. disgrace. It's a disgrace. Show the way you've been captaining the night. Absolute disgrace. And then when yeah. they're batting, are allowed to talk to them while they're batting? Could you hit a six for us, Shane? <laughs> you know, could you hit a six for us? Because I've got a big bet on the next ball going for a six. Do you mind that? Whack. <laughs> yeah. Well, well that'd be, that'd I'll be cut great. I'll you in, Shane, if you yeah. can do it. Yeah. Well, it'd be up to the players because a lot of batsmen probably would prefer not to be talking to people on talkback while they're actually batting. Well, they've got to get used they've to it, right? Used it's the modern world. It's the 21st century. They just can't live in a bubble all their lives. <laughs> You're absolutely you know, right. People at home watching them. Yeah. They want to be involved. Yeah. They want yeah. to take it to the next level. <laughs> well, that's what the next level is. Isn't it? And they're being paid a fortune. They should be able to earn it, shouldn't they? The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. <laughs> 
And this is the Sporting Probe with Roy and HG, and we're making Triple M great again. And if you want to email us, uh, simply Roy and HG at triple m.com.au. That is, you've got some feedback about the show, Roy and HG at triple m.com.au. Now, HG, speak- people might want to get in touch with Minister Hunt. Oh, Would, yes. They can do that through us. We'll forward any. Any information we yeah. would, uh, you know, obviously treat very carefully. Yes. But our aim with the probe is to punch through the corruption, mm-hmm. the disappointments that you have about sport to yeah. the highest level. Yes, that's uh, very good. At, uh, the Hunt office will be inundated each Monday morning yes. with the results of the probe on the weekend. Probe on the weekend. Okay. So so, so uh, people will have anonymity. They send us their information. We'll pass it on to Rex Hunt and it'll go through Josh Hunt, Carmichael Hunt and eventually to Minister Greg Hunt. <laughs> by Carried by hand. Yes. With a seal on it. Yes. You know, Good. For your eyes only, Greg. Good. Now, punishment in the Big Bash is a bit of a problem, really. You know, we were talking about Marky Mark Howard and, uh, you know, the problems he was revealing, you know, what was going on with Shane Watson, etc. Yeah. and the bowler, Lachlan. I think it is Ben yeah. Lachlan. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, other incidents happened with... He'd skip uh, Brennan McCullum, mm. who was suspended for a slow over rate. Oh, dear. Uh, he, there's some suggestion that the slow over rate traditionally prior to a test and a one-day level, mm. where it's a far more important element in the game. Mm. The BBL, <clears throat> you know, obviously really is only about entertainment and therefore if it lasted a bit longer, people wouldn't be necessarily disappointed, disappointed because they have time to nude up and do a bit of a streak mm. if it got boring. Mm-hmm. So what happened uh, after a week or so ago, the Perth Scorchers and the Brisbane Heat, uh, Brendan McCullum was uh, banned for a following match. Dear. Now, of course, this robs the fans of a reason to go because there's so many McCullum freaks now in Australia. I know. Uh, they love the big hitting, uh, the Brendan's big hitting, mm-hmm. and they've seen him at New Zealand, in mm. New Zealand doing it, and now they love seeing him in Australia. And to mm. have him sidelined is sort of like putting the Rolling Stones out there without Ronnie Wood on guitar. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Or punishing Mick, saying, sorry, Mick, can't sing in the next gig. Yeah. Because... You didn't do enough or mm. you lasted, you yeah. were out there too long. Too lasted. long, yeah. What do you think punishment can be, though, in these matters? Well, I, I would have thought just an apology by uh, by Captain McCullum to the team, to Howie and co and, uh, you know, Mark War and co and Gilly and just oh, say, look, look, yeah, look, blokes, I'm sorry. Uh, the over eight was a little long tonight and I really appreciate, the, you know, the, the network's got commitments, uh, you know, around and, the country and, and I, I, I take full responsibility and I'm sorry. And if you'd like me to sit in the nude area yes. for the break next time at the yep. next match, I'm more than happy to do that. Yes, and I'm happy to stand in the car park and apologise to all fans going home. Honest Australians, corruption in sport is everywhere. If you have information that could put corrupt players or administrators behind bars, send your information to the Sporting Probe, Roy and HG at triple m.com.au. Full discretion is assured. And in the double header or the double double header last weekend, where the uh, the uh, cricket uh, and that's the big bash and the A League went head to head, very taken by the. Um, <laughs> Uh, the Sydney Sky Blues fans pelting the Western Wanderers goalkeeper, Vedran Jankovic, if I've got a uh, pronunciation maybe astray there, uh, with rubber snakes. Why is that? Uh, to upset him. I thought this was a lovely touch. It was a nil all draw. Yeah. Obviously, a great fixture, a nil all draw. Well, we all love that. And yeah. uh, Vedran, uh, at the start of the second half, had to go down and keep it the uh, Sydney Cove end. Yeah. And they threw rubber snakes at him. I'm not sure whether he's expressed in the past his worry about snakes. Right. Uh, but, Roy, it's a terrific addition to uh, it the A League. I, I assume they were like those snakes alive you buy in the packets. Oh, the lolly out. snakes. Yeah. No, these were just conventional rubber snakes. Conventional rubber, so people came armed with snakes. They must have been selling them in the car park or something, were they? Was someone making a mozza, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with a boot full of snakes? Well, you know what it's like on social media these days. Mm. Bring your snakes in and we'll throw them at, uh, you know, when yeah. it's up Yeah, oh, that's how it, of course that's how it'd be. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's you wouldn't right. have to sell them in the car park. People would come snake compliant. Yeah, loaded yeah, it's a sort way. of nice Gary moment, you know, third ball on the sixth <laughs> over sort of thing. That's right. I love that. That's right. That's right. I'm just wondering, uh, we may not have yeah. time to deal with this to, this week uh, on the uh, yeah. on the Pope. But, but how are they to know that this bloke's scared of snakes, rubber or otherwise? Oh, that'd be that'd be all over social be media. Be all over social media. Yeah. Yes. He, he might have said that, I hate snakes, they, they scare me. <laughs>
Well, they scare a lot of people. <laughs> and on that cheerful note, Roy... Mm. Uh, Is that I'm, it for the week? I think so. Yeah, mm. you don't get much, do you, when you're working, making Triple M great again. Yeah. Uh, the sporting robe, uh, robe, the sporting the, probe. The robe, the robeless probe. <laughs> the robeless probe. <laughs> yeah, we'll be doing it nude next week. Uh, now, uh, I'd like to thank our great helmsman, uh, obviously in charge again, Chairman Mao and Lachlan, for helping us out on the panel. And we'll see you next week when we're probing again right here on Triple M. Bonafide Sports Mad Australians. Snakes alive. Is that the time? Yes, green and gold freaks, it certainly is. It's time for the Sporting Probe. With two diamond pythons twirled around the tree of knowledge across the nation. Boys and girls. Well, the young man ain't got nothing in the world these days. The Sporting Pro leading the charge up the eucalypt. With extra chilli on the stick is the in and out maestro rampaging Roy Slaven. And coming from behind is the heavy lifter with both feet on the ground, H.G. Nelson. Unleash the grunt and poke H.G.? Yes, thanks very much, gentlemen. Jim Daniels in the TSP soundproof booth in glorious downtown Lakemba. Beautiful read this morning, Jim. I've loved your work for many, many years now, but I think you're peaking beautifully in 2017. Yes, probesters, this is HG Nelson getting the sporting probe underway for another week. I'm eagerly licking my lips in anticipation at the couple of hours ahead of us. Tremendous to have your company down the deep end this morning as we prod about in the rubbish of this week's red-hot sporting action. Honestly, MVGs, it's been a week of massive collects. <laughs> Last night in Adelaide Oval, I couldn't fit all the cash into my pants. It was that good. I had to do some work with me underpants. That's how massive it was. And, of course, massive disappointments across the world of sport. The less said about those, the better. Today... We'll be full on probing and giving a vigorous in out workout to tennis, racing, cricket, rugby league. Uh, but to get us underway, let's lock horns with rampaging Roy Slavin. Roy, can we get the TSP bunny in motion simply by asking what highlights caught your restless eye this week, Garbaro? Yes, it's been a wonderful week again to be in Australia, HG. It certainly has. And, it uh, certainly has. It has, it has, it has. And uh, hello, all honest, honest Australians. Just a few uh, idle things that uh, came across my desk this week, HG. Nick Kyrgios, remember him? Mm-hmm. He said there's no reason for Bernie not to be at Kuyong. I think he's probably right. Uh, we might uh, explore this a little bit later on, or maybe not. Maybe enough's been said. I'm not sure. Now, the Dallas Mavericks, HG, I've always admired the uh, marketing of the Dallas Mavericks, and they've honoured, and I use that term advisedly, honoured that great Aussie Andrew Buggerall Bogut uh, with a bobble-headed doll. A bobblehead doll you can get now, HG. Of Buggerall? Of Buggerall Bogut which is great. It might say something too. It might say good day, mate, or something like that. Just something that the Americans love. And aren't they in love with Australia at the moment? And why wouldn't they be? Uh, Ma- Marcus Stoinis, not a name I've been, you know, across all that much, but by God, oh, this kid right. has written his, well, he's, he's etched his name into the pantheon of Australian greats at the moment. And he would be the first picked, if we we're picking a team now, to go to India. Mercifully, we are. Let's hope Stoinis is on the plane. Um, and the Sydney Kings, HG, speaking of uh, Nick Kyrgios, as I was a moment ago, the Sydney Kings uh, have made Nick Kyrgios an offer, an offer mm-hmm. to come down and throw a few hoops. Now, make of that what you will. Corrupt officials and administrators, the gloves are off on the sporting probe. Roy, uh, let's go back to last night. Oh, God, that Adelaide Oval crowd mm. and the opening of the Adelaide Festival there. Mm. 27,000 plus people mm. crammed into the Adelaide Oval to see the curtain go up on a tremendous theatre of action. Mm. And uh, look, I enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. I, I just couldn't pick a winner. Obviously, I think the ring announcer, gave, I think his name's Buffer, yeah. he gave up in the end trying to score it. I just thought it was a terrific event. He's a to- legend, that bloke, isn't he? <laughs> yes. I'd yeah. never heard of him I'd before. I'd never heard but, of him before. God, Diesel. the voice, yeah. when you hear the voice, it's just <laughs> yeah. takes you back. Yeah. And, of course, the, 
the great, you saw the sweet science in action. If only mm. Arthur Tunstall and Bob Daldy from the Prince Patrick Hotel in North Melbourne were with us, mm. they would have enjoyed this enormously. Two blokes clinging on, yeah. holding each other up for yeah. 10 rounds of yeah. magnificent boxing. Yeah. Um, obviously, Anthony got away a good punch early, the flattened Mundine, and then he came back from that and hung on. Yeah. And then Anthony was clinging on to, yeah. you know, obviously the green machine and yeah. it went right down to the wire. It was so exciting. And the yeah. undercard. Well, the undercard stole the show, you'd, ha you'd have to say. Uh, you know, I I've always been a bit of a rap for uh, Jack McGuinness. Um, and uh, to see the kid sit on the stool for the first time, I think it was the first time he'd got to uh, get through the first round. So I took my hat off to him. He'd never seen the stool before in a match. And uh, I thought the kid sat on the stool really well and because uh, it was an un unusual experience for him. It was him. out of his comfort zone. <laughs> totally out of his comfort zone. And, of course, uh, Quaid... Just a little bit too classy, you'd have to say, in that second round, uh, putting the kid away. But you'd have to say boxing in Australia is in pretty good shape. It certainly is. Look, I loved it. Before we come back to the main bout, I loved mm. that little moment where, uh, obviously, uh, the TKO's not far away mm. and uh, the kid's down on all fours. But Quaid has the common sense to go and see if he can pick him up yeah. to get another few punches onto him I know. and hold him up for another round to see if he could sit on the stool again. It was a Landy Clark moment, wasn't it? It, was, it, was, it really reminded me of what's great about Australian sport. sport. That uh, when, when a bloke goes down, he becomes your mate. Yeah. And you just want to lift him up so you can hit him again. <laughs> <laughs> and then the... Big two come out. Yeah. What a beautiful, elegant solution to the national anthem problem. Yep. Then we come to the promotion all week. And speaking mm. of the national anthem, what a key thing. I'd never thought the national anthem could be a galvanizing mm. thing. So many people left after the national anthem Adelaide mm. Oval last night. They wanted to see how they resolve it. Mm. They wanted to work out to see if any punches would be thrown before the national anthem and yeah. so on. All those things. Yeah. So many questions there. Yeah. And when they were all answered so elegantly, mm. uh, a lot of people obviously headed for the exits. Yeah. Then, of course, the other great thing was the roping in. And let's face it, you know, these two have seen it all so many times before. Mm. Uh, you know, we know what they're up to. We know their we know their game. And then to see the, uh, the um, what do I say, the Coda NASA management team yeah. have the presence of mind to rope in Charlie Teo. Now, Charlie yeah. Teo may be a strange name to sports fans and mm. boxing people in general, but he's the world's best brain surgeon. Yes, he is. And to see him ringside with mm. the tools, mm -hmm. you know, ready to go in with a scalpel and open up Chock's head, should there be bleeding on the brain? Mm. Or, you know, obviously with the oxygen tent and all that sort of stuff. That mm. was a terrific thrill. It was, wasn't And it? so many people came to me and said, what are you expecting? Well, Charlie Teo to go in in the third was a yeah. lot of comments. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I thought... Uh, uh, I thought Charlie might have gone in uh, for the McGuinness kitty, but uh, it didn't actually get that I don't far. think it was his brief to go in for the McGuinness no, kitty. He no, wasn't contracted not. to do no, that. No, I suppose not. I but, suppose um, not. But, but fabulous. And it would have been great theatre. Pity. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't wish, uh, you know, a brain aneurysm on anyone, really. But uh, should it have come to pass, it would have been tremendous theatre to see Charlie Teo leap out of the crowd Mask and up, glove mask up. up, glove up, and uh, go in with the scrubs. Go in with, yeah, exactly, and get the drill out and start doing relieving the, uh, pressure. Yes, yes, yeah. I the trepaning work, we'd call it. <laughs> now, look, can I say I just thought that that was the best bit of what I call lateral promotion I've ever heard of. Yes. Uh, yeah. because well, well, it shows boxing is in great shape, but surgery isn't our surgery right. in great shape. Surgery. I mean, we have some of the great, best, greatest surgeons in the world. We do. You know, and I've talked about this with Charlie Teo at length. I, cut I for cut, I'd back Teo <laughs> against anyone. <laughs> I would. I would. Charlie and, Teo for me. Thank you. Now, he, I want him in my corner <laughs> when I go down. Now, look, one thing that uh, Charlie and I agree on mm. is that we have to open up the world of surgery yeah. for people to get a bet on mm. and to come and look at these stars. And that's what I want to call yeah, them, yeah, stars yeah, yeah, in action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think that what would be great is if, you know, God forbid somebody did take a punch to the head, yeah. then you open the book up yeah. on how long... How much work has to be done? Yeah. Uh, you know, could it be done in a world record time? All those sort of things. Sure, I mean, sure, sure, sure. It would be yeah. an extra bonus to mm. any particular bout. Now, what did you make of the bout itself? Do you think, mm. can I, this is the idea that I want to see it here tonight mm. or this morning mm. or whenever you're listening to this, mm. is Green Mundine 3. three. I think that's, I think that's what we're talking about. Oh, this and, I, and this discussion started within seconds of the bout finishing last night. 
I looked across at you and we both nodded. And just, and went, just went three. You know, we just held the fingers up. And I knew what you meant because I meant the same thing. I want to see it. Mm. And do Australia you think, wants to see it. Do you think we have to wait to get the build up right? Not another, 10 years. Oh, I was going to say. 10 I, years, you think? Well, I just thought, you know, the, the pressure, the pressure, yeah. the pressure cooker. You don't get 27,000 people to the Adelaide Oval again if we put it on next Sunday night. Oh, I oh. think you would. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Uh, Roy, just going back to the McInnes fight, uh, the Cooper McInnes fight. Yeah. Uh, look, what I loved about this was it looked like uh, Quade Cooper was fighting somebody who just got out of school. Not that I, that's obviously a, a bit yeah. of a mistake on my part because I think McInnes is 22. Is he really? So he's able to. So he's very experienced. Very experienced. Yeah. He seemed to lack a bit of ring craft for mine. And he misunderstood the sweet science nature of the event. Yeah. Um, he yeah. seemed to think that he was there to take a lot of punches yeah, and, and not give any. <laughs> <laughs> is he coach HG or is it just an instinctive thing? He just likes wearing gloves and well, shorts in well, public. <laughs> I think the latter, because um, he's only fought uh, in crowd, you know, before a few hundred people before. Yeah, he'd never seen Cooper fight. No, and when with uh, when he was first offered the bout, he suspected it was a prank. Yeah, now, oh, well, like, you would. <laughs> well, you would. You know, somebody rings up and Cooper says, Quaid's on the phone. Oh, you do want to. You want to get your head punched in? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he said, but I'm ready to get in there and have a go. And that's what I like. Well, about that's the Aussie spirit, isn't it? Exactly, I mean, the I Aussie mean, spirit. It's Anzac, isn't it? It's, it's Anzac. Yeah. There's yeah. no talk, talk of a rematch on the big day, is there? Oh, is well, it? what a lovely idea. That would get What a lovely nice idea. Public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Cooper he, McInnes hmm. 2. See, I've been at, at for years now trying to get some sort of Anzac medal given out. For some special, you know, moment that sums up exactly what the bloody spirit is. It's so hard to define. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And there's an example of it. So, you know, this kitty can't fight, <laughs> overweight, but but gets what? a phone call from and a bloke who wants to punch his head in, and he says, "Oh yeah, I'll give it a go. Give, give it a go. There are going to be you know thirty thousand people there to laugh at you. Oh, fine, not a problem. Count yeah. me in." Anzac spirit. I know, it's terrific. And that's what America doesn't have, does it? No. It doesn't have that sort of no. similar. That's the values of Australia yes. that we can take to the world and share with the yes. world and say, come on down, have a look at what we've got and give it a go. Now, yeah. having said that, yeah. wasn't it a great to, uh, to see so many people mm. ringside who yeah. were there in 2006 back again for another you know, yeah, dose. A reunion. A reunion of mundane yeah. green magic. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping the third one will... Mm. Finally, we've got to settle this. Yeah. We can't leave it like this. No, it's one all, isn't it? One all. Sanity will prevail yeah. about, I reckon, yeah. by about 10 o'clock on Monday morning. Sure, sure, uh, sure, 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 sure. And, you know, there's a lot of dispute about this. A lot of people are saying that Danny didn't win. Yes. You now, know? how did you see that taking going? Well, I thought it was close. Time. It could have gone either way. I think. I mean, did... I don't think anyone would have been surprised if both hands were raised in the air. You yeah. know, thanks. It was a great exhibition of holding each other up. Wasn't it? <laughs> For 10 rounds. For 10 rounds. Now, get this. One of the judges scored. Buffer gave up scoring early on. Yeah, Buff did, yeah. Yeah. And one of the judges scored it as a draw. Yeah. One had it 98 90. Yeah. And the other one had it 94 th- 93, something yeah, like something that. Yeah, something like 92. Yeah. So they all got roughly the right number of punches, but mm. they awarded them different ways. That's the glorious uncertainty yeah. of boxing, isn't yeah, it? It is. It is. It is. And of course, it depends where you're sitting. You know, where I was sitting. You know, Monday one, uh, where you were sitting, it was pure green. Yeah, it was all green where I was. I yeah. know. And people around me thought, you know, obviously yeah. leaving in droves mm. after the national anthem, etc. But then as soon as, you know, green got on top in about round one, mm. off they went. Yeah. Now, uh, do you think there was any, you know, hint of, dare I say, a punter special about the event? Do you know, no. No? No. You thought no. Of, you I thought think of, the one to look at would have been the Cooper McGinnis. <laughs> Now, the reunion there was um, look just terrific, and it what it put Adelaide on the map last night yeah, uh, on the know, world map. Can world I map, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, uh, people will be now going to Adelaide just mm. looking at the spot where mm. obviously where history where, happened. Where history happened. That's yeah. right. The Anzac Medal was earned here. Mm. Now, look, it gives you an idea of who was there. Um, you know, Anthony Minicello represented rugby league. Good on him. Eddie Maguire there representing Breakfast Announcing. Yes. Uh, David Kosh, similarly, Breakfast Announcing. Hamish Blake, Matty Johns, Mark Guyer, local AFL stars. Who did you see there? I Roy? saw um, 
I saw Bruce McAvaney just to nod to and gave him the look that said you should have been at the tennis last, last week. Weekend. Yeah, because mm. mm. uh, just to change subject just briefly, uh, and I think we discussed this amongst ourselves earlier, that while we enjoyed the match between uh, Raffer, you know, Raffer and Rog yeah. last week, one, one of the great, one of the great finals, all that was missing was Bruce. Uh-huh. And, and I could only think of Bruce at the time. I thought, yeah. Bruce would have loved this. Can I say Bruce was the strawberry yeah. on top of the cream, on top of the icing, yeah. on, up of, on yeah. top of the three-level sponge yeah. cake with jam in between? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, a lot, a lot of people were thinking, what's missing here? I mean, this exactly. is great, but what's missing here? Well, it was Bruce. Anyway, Bruce was there last night. Hamish McLaughlin was there, HG. Was he? And he did a fabulous job in the tennis. Didn't yes, he? he did. I forget. He did. Yeah. He... I got in, in the he end. He and Jim, thinking, they, they got all right. And, and Todd yeah. Woodbridge held Todd up a was lead, there. And then obviously Leighton also, yeah. but they're not Bruce. No, well, Leighton wasn't there last night because Davis Cup commitments. Oh, I mean, course. he just couldn't fly off, off to Adelaide. Be, no, he wanted to be, of course. Uh, Backdoor Benny Elias was there. Was Backdoor Benny Backdoor Elias? Backdoor Benny Elias was there. Yeah, Still Jared Hayne was there. Jared Hayne. Yeah, there was quite a, an NRL contingent. Uh, Rachel Finch ah, yes. was there. She might have been our former Miss Universe runner-up or something. Third runner-up. Third runner-up. She did a great job Mm -hmm. representing Mm -hmm. Australia. That's some Uh, years ago. And Guy Sebastian I saw there. And Delta Goodrum, HG. Was Delta in the house? Yes. I missed her. Yeah, I know you did. She sent her regards. Corrupt officials and administrators. The gloves are off on the Sporting Probe. Yes, uh, Roy, um, look, one sad omission last night, and I know Charlie Teo, uh, you know, obviously ready to go in with the scalpel and uh, mm-hmm. the gas and mask up and so on. Mm-hmm. It neatly joins the problem in our society of uh, medicine and sport. Yeah. And one sad omission last night was the Minister of Health and Sport, Mr. Mm-hmm. Greg Hunt. I'm not sure what other commitments he could have had, but wouldn't it be great mm-hmm. if he could have come in and done something official like... I don't know. Um, if just was... welcomed everyone. Exactly. Something yeah. like that. Yes, just, just or, or be introduced by the legend. The buffer. Yeah. You know, and with us here tonight is the Federal Minister for Sport, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Greg. <laughs> he gets up, goes into the ring, waves, raises, waves. waves. And, and it would have been great. And people would have thought, oh, well, gee, he's putting in, isn't he? He, is, he could have he done show, the... He's shown interest, yeah. interest in, you know... What it is to be Australian. And Anzac medal potential, exactly, et cetera. Yes. Exactly. And then could he have held up the ring number? You know, sorry, the round number in the <laughs> oh, ring. Oh, what a good idea. And minced around. Yeah. Uh, only up the <laughs> one, two. Yeah. Surely that couldn't be beyond him. No. Uh, no. And well, if he did, if he did the uh, Quaid McGuinness fight, because he would have only had to be out there twice. Hang on, once. Oh, I suppose round one, round <laughs> yeah, two. Yeah, still. sorry. Sorry, still. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, it wasn't a, a sad omission, and um, I'm just wondering... Yeah. Um, well, it was an own goal, wasn't it? Own goal, perfectly put, yes. Own goal, yes. Because yeah. a lot of people there I was talking to last night were saying, where's Greg? Mm-hmm. I thought, Greg who? <laughs> and, you know, ah, oh, him, yeah, right, yeah, where is he? <laughs> the, um, of course, the other thing was that uh, somebody put this to me during the week, maybe through the social media world. Yeah. Um, would it be possible for the boxers to sing the national anthem themselves? Now, I know this is asking a lot from Mr. Mundine, obviously, and, uh, you know, respect, bro. Yeah. Uh, but do you think Danny Green could have come out and sung the national anthem? Yes. Um, you know, obviously it may have been. Didn't they use Jessica Malboy? But it would have been so much better. What not a duet with Danny Green? <laughs> that would have been nice, wouldn't it? It certainly would have. Or, or in the future, it's something for fight promoters to consider. Yes. Uh, you know, that the boxers themselves sing a you know, mm. duet. Mm. What a joining of hands that would be. It would be. Well, even if they just did the second verse. <laughs> the mysterious <laughs> second verse. Yes, yes. Now, I don't mind, you know, if it's it's a bit off tune. No. Because as long as it's heartfelt. And as heartfelt. As long as, that's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Yeah. And exactly. Long, yeah, and they don't send it up. They don't send it up. <laughs> and there's no, you know... Sniggering. Pointing at mates yeah. and, you know, uh, that sort of gear. <laughs> yeah. And no gang signs either. <laughs> yeah, I won't yeah. have any gang signs yeah. in it as well. I agree. Just be respectful. Respectful. You know, gloves on the gloves by your side. Gloves by your in side. In full voice. Beautiful. And even if they got one note right in the whole lot. I'd People would cheer. Exactly. <laughs> Beautiful, Daddy. Nice note, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, look, I think it's got, you know, the future ice. Taken by the cricket, 
Mm. On the apropos of this, taken by the cricket, and of course the, the cricketers team, sing, don't they? Yeah, they, they, do. they sing. They the do. Anthem, yeah. Yeah. Now look, they not that we hear up, them, but we see them, and, and we hear the uh, like I said, lucky enough to be, uh, you know, along with say twenty other twenty thousand other people at the mm. Sydney Test, mm. and out they come. They line up and they get the Pakistan and the Australian national anthem. Yes. Now I've always thought that wouldn't it be great? And a lot of people are still drifting in, you know, getting their coffee, having yeah. the first beer of the day, all that sort of stuff, wondering where the nude section is, and you yeah. know, so on. They mm. were settling down. Mm. But I think that what would draw a lot of people early to a game is mm. if you knew that, say, David Warner mm. or Usman Kawaja mm. were going to sing the national anthem. Now, mm. I'm not expecting them to do anything as good as what Danny Green might do mm. if he was singing the national anthem in the fight ring. But they might bring something to it, like accompanying themselves on the ukulele. They've been practicing special, you know, mm. mic up the uke and away they go, advance okay, straight yeah, up yeah, there yeah, yeah, and so yeah, on. Yeah. Then, of course, a Pakistan player would sing the Pakistan national anthem yeah. and they might do it, say, on the trombone or an interpretive dance version sure. of it. I've, yeah. I've got, I'm, I'm completely open to these sure. suggestions. Sure. Then, of course, when we get a bit more sophisticated and have bedded this idea down over mm. a few years, mm. Dave Warner sings the Pakistan national anthem and better. somebody like, um, you know, um, Joshi Shah yeah. sings the Australian national Beautiful. anthem. Beautiful. That'd be exactly. much better. People would go to that, you know, and then go home. They've had enough. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. And Roy, it's been an enormous week for sport, as we've already flagged. And, of course, this weekend it continues with uh, the Nines in Auckland and the Sevens in Sydney, Rugby League and Rugby Union, respectively. They're shortened versions of the game. And one thing I've been pleading with the rugby league is to do some promotional work. I mean, the gaze is elsewhere at the moment. Uh, they haven't had a really good story that's pulled the focus back to rugby league and how mm. the season is going and preparation for a, for a kickoff just over a month away. Yeah. Um, and this week, the best they could come up with was that it's going to be a slimmer Jared Hayne that plays in 2017. Is that true? Well, that's a big story. Yeah. How much? How much weight's he dropped off? HG? Well, he... look, can I just set it out? Titans coach Neil. It's Henry. not an eating disorder or anything, is it? I mean, it's 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 by design. I hope it's by design. But I think you've you've hit the nail where I'd like to go with this story. Is mm. weight loss shocker? Yeah. Jared Hayne, a shadow of his former yeah. self, that sort of idea. Yes. But it comes out like this. A Titans coach, Neil Henry, added a note of caution to Jared Hayne's appearance in the Auckland Nines, mm. saying the star fullback won't be the, wait for it, the finished product. Not sure what they're going to do to him anyway. Mm. Paint him, I suppose. Finished product by then and had timed his preparation for the first round of the NRL season in March. Right. Now, obviously, there's a lot of history here about the 49ers and stuff like that where he had to put on weight. Now he's had to drop it off, right. and there's a significant amount of weight lost. Uh, you know, obviously the nines could be a terrific, um, you know, terrific vehicle. Yeah. If I can use that word for Hayne to sure. show his showcase his wares this yeah. weekend. Yeah. But you see, that it struck me weight loss shocker would mm. be a terrific promotion for rugby for league. You know, get people talking about rugby league. Exactly. Yeah. How yeah. much has yeah. he lost? How much of a shadow of form himself yeah. will have been proven? Yeah. Yeah. Why did he put on so much weight? Where's he sure. been? All these sort of stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have they got a chart there of HG, HG of how what he weighed when he was playing rugby league before he went to the United States and a chart of you know what he weighed when he was playing gridiron and, and what then, his weight is now? Well, that's what they need. And can I just is put it clear? Do they make that clear? No. Okay, you've got your eels as the fullback and state of origin. Yes. That's his weight Well, there. let's say he's 93 kilos there. And then he moves on to playing American football. American football. So he, he went up to 118. 118. That's a hell of a lot to cut, like yeah, around. Then he kilos. went to the Fiji Sevens. Fiji Sevens. Played in London. He had to didn't... strip down a little bit for that. Yeah. I think he went down to 72. 72. <laughs> then he went to the Titans last year. Titans, and... <laughs> 91.4. And now he's back with the nines. At 80, 87. It's a hell of a program, isn't <sighs> it? That is a hell of a program. How does he cope with it? How does he? <sighs> must do his head in. Must do. He must eat lettuce leaves when he has to bulk up, obviously. Yeah. He just eats fat. Yeah. And then he has to eat lettuce leaves and drink water for right. months at a time. Right. He might be on the 5-2 diet or something. A paleo diet? Yeah. Oh, no, it's not paleo, I don't think. No, 5-2 five, five ain't paleo. You'd have to talk oh, to Pete about paleo. 5 as two Pete's five, Manu. But yeah, five two days fasting, five days eat your head off. <laughs> Maybe he goes three, four. Three days oh, eat your head you off, think four. He's, oh, really? Nothing. Well, I'm just suggesting. Well, maybe it. he's reversed. Maybe he doesn't understand how it works. Maybe he's only eating two days a week and fasting for five. That's how he looks. 
I know, it's incredible. I hope it? someone gets him aside and says, oh, come on. It's not good for you to it's do not this. Good for you, mate. Reverse uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, look, uh, look, what's great about it? Sure, Jared Hayne, yeah. big marketing tool and stuff like that. But weight mm. loss is the way that we're talking about rugby league now. Yeah. We had Ben Barber do his best this week too. Yeah. You know, I, I think you understand this story slightly better than me, which is... Well, he's got a ban because he was found with substances. Was yes, that it? that's right. So it's a 12-week ban. He thought, oh, well, I've got 12 okay. weeks off. I might go over and play, play rugby union in France. For 12 weeks. For 12 weeks. And they, rugby league says, oh, well, that's great, but your ban starts when you get back. Oh, no. Uh -oh. And now, am I right in thinking that he's going to... He's there for three years, I think. That's right. He signed a rugby yeah. union contract. Yeah. That takes We're not going to see Ben Barber playing rugby league again mm -hmm. unless something goes pear-shaped in, in Paris. Toulon or wherever he's playing, which it could do. You know, he's never played rugby union before. Different rules. <laughs> <laughs> now, <clears throat> this is a great story. This is more like it. Mm. NRL player Kyle Lovett. Uh, was spotted by the cops, his uh, jaw clenched, sweat pouring off him, standing nearly naked on the footpath. Oh, yes. um, he, so he knew the gig was up, and the cops asked him, do you have any drugs in your underpants? <laughs> As you would, if you're a member of the New South Wales Contemporary. Oh. Uh, he said, I'll be honest with you, I do. Right. Isn't that refreshing from rugby league Isn't player? that beautiful? Well, Great hang on, what... Was he in public HG or he was it in his, in his bedroom or lounge room or somewhere? No, it appears. Well, he says he is standing on the footpath, near naked on the footpath. No location. Right. Obviously, he's picked was up. Was he disoriented HG? What, what, what was it about? I mean, rugby <laughs> league players, you see dime a dozen standing around their underpants in public. I mean, that's normal. What made the police think this particular bloke required having his underpants sniffed? <laughs> Now, I think he was picked up in a swoop of Task Force backdoor Benny Elias, who was probing oh, yeah. that uh, series of matches last year. I think we broke this story a little yeah, while yeah, ago. Yeah. You know, Mandy Parramatta, Parra. Mandy, yeah, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Oh. Now, um, police found the West Tigers forward sweating profusely in the driver's seat of a Mercedes Benz at 1.20 a.m. Oh, hang on. Uh, so he wasn't standing. He was sitting in the car. Well... Look, I haven't read the police reports. I'm only no. going on press reports here. Yeah, right. So, so there are two reports. One, he was correct. standing. On the, the other, he was in the car. As soon as I got him out of the car, he was standing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Parked at one twenty a.m. in an area of Piermont notorious for drug deals. Oh, I didn't know about that. Piermont. I didn't, didn't realise that was, um, no, you the, know. the Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> I central. Lovett's lawyer... And this is a terrific name to have connected with rugby league and again, George Elias. Any relation to Backdoor Benny? Would be son of, I think. Okay. And uh, of course, John Elias, mm. who, let's face it, no, the no Lord. stranger to the underpant work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, he told the Downing. This is Lovett's lawyer, George Elias, mm. and I hope he can be seconded to Task Force Backdoor Benny Elias as soon as he gets off this gig. Yeah, as long as it doesn't look like nepotism. <laughs> He told the Downing Centre Court his client was totally ashamed and the incident has cost him a place in this weekend's Auckland Nines. Oh, I'll be buggered. Uh, he said, what, just because he was standing, sweating, sitting in a car or standing about in underpants? <laughs> he still has to face the NRL Integrity Union and likely be punished with hefty fine and suspension, Mr. Elias said, leaving the court. Mm. But the good news is, is the magistrate... Janet Walquist, in this case, had the common sense mm. uh, to put him on a good behaviour bond of six months, good. and he pleaded guilty yesterday for possessing 0. 0.39 grams of cocaine. Mm. The police seized from his underwear. He escaped a conviction, and now that would have been a fascinating probe, wouldn't it, mm. to go into the underpants yes. and find <laughs> what was in there. Yeah, but at least he had a presence of mind. Well, I suppose if you're only wearing underpants, that's the only place you can put it, isn't it? <laughs> Do they say whether it was down the front of the underpant or down the back? Well, what an interesting <laughs> question that is. <laughs> Look, it, it, I suppose if you're going to be smart about it, you'd put it down the back because you wouldn't think the police would look down there. <laughs> <laughs> no, not interesting. No, no. Now, just drop the front of your underpants. Oh, okay, you're clear. <laughs> off your off shoot. Your yeah, stop sweating <laughs> if you don't mind. Now, listen. Was it a hot night? Yeah, probably, but I think... Because it has been very humid around the yeah. pier monitor, yeah? <laughs> Now, look, I think the key thing to young players caught in this position, and let's face it, I wouldn't wish this on anybody, no. but any sporting identity, the best thing is to fess up. Yeah. I mean, the more you fess up, the quicker you'll be back on the paddock playing what, and loving doing what you love. Sure. Is there any suggestion he's going to be flown over for the nines, HG? Is that possible or not? 
I'm not sure. I haven't had no. any update on nine information at all. No, but well, that, see, nothing's coming out of Auckland. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a black hole, isn't it? It is about the nines. Now, that's oh. the best I can do with rugby league, really, this week. And I, I just <sighs> let that rest there because yeah. that's not enough. No, it's not. We've got a player with his underpants and Jared Hain losing weight. I mean, yeah, who's big stories. the media yeah. in the rugby league at the yeah, moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, someone's got to read the right act to the players to get outdoors and do something. Corrupt officials and administrators, the gloves are off on the Sporting Probe. Uh, Roy, one of the great innovations of the Nines this year, apart from, uh, you know, obviously the thinner new look, Jared Hayne. Isn't that, that a talking point? He <laughs> certainly is. Remember, it's Skinny not a Skinny Hayne. Yeah, Skinny Hayne. He's not yeah. a finished product. No. It's not a finished product yet because uh, obviously a little way. Is a, the Nines are going to have a singles area. Uh, you know how they the Nines is Whoa. great, very innovative. It has a nude area, obviously, for people who want to just watch their rugby league in the nude. Yeah, and no or in their underpants. The, well, indeed, but you've got to leave them at the door Yeah, uh, and waddle in. And then there's a singles area because they realise that it's a real day out for people who are romantically... Uh, on the make, so yeah. To speak. Well, it is, and it uh, is it's a great nobody... party atmosphere. The nines, well, it's Same a as great opportunity to meet people, isn't it? Is. it? I mean, it if is. you're young and single and you want to, you know, have seize the day, rugby... yeah, exactly. Have an interest in rugby league. Yes, you get along there, and great. And, uh, Why can't we have that at every game? Both AFL, a single cricket, show. rugby league, football, you name it. A singles area where young people on the make. Get the opportunity to say hello. Hello, how are you going? Do you love your league? Yeah. How about it? Yeah, that's right. That's where where are you going after the game? Can <laughs> I come too? Yes, that's right. Because you and I, I reckon there's a rainbow connection. What, what? do you think? <laughs> Chemistry. <laughs> um, now, hey, babe. Yeah. Look. Want to walk on the wild side? That's right. Well, they're, they're like... I've got my underpants. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> now. A singles area, isn't that great? Mm. I hadn't thought Brilliant. about it just everywhere. Brilliant. But it's not yeah, going to I... bring your bloody your, your raincoat brigade in, are they pretending they're single? No, I don't happen. think so. How do I... they weed them out? How do they weed out the sickos? Yeah, the loons, yeah. the pervs. Now, yeah. look, can I just suggest, though, what's, what's difficult is every, you know, certain time every day, on they come, the ads... Hooking up people, hook up ads, oh, yeah. uh, you know, say singles, you know, get yeah. harmony.com or whatever it is you have to go to. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that sport could put them out of business pretty quickly well, yeah. with their single area or something. Yeah. If you, if you just to, knew, if you're interested turn up Friday, in getting, yes. Saturday, Sunday, uh -huh. then Thursday night sometimes now. That's right. Footy, yep. singles yep. area. Yep, yep, yep. Go to the singles area. Next day, it's wedding bells. Now, the only other thing that happened this weekend. Rugby League, which caught my eye, was the incredible news that now 92% of Rugby League players mm. are involved in further education. Isn't that great? Either TAFE, mm -hmm. online, or at a university. Now, sure, some of these online courses are for hairdressing in Idaho and stuff like that, I'm, I'm, but I've got nothing wrong with them. The no. people, Rugby no. League players are now their most educated section of the community. By far, by the sounds of things. You can't. 92% of all players uh, are getting they, degrees. They are. They're trying to, I think the rugby league philosophy is mm. we want to make them complete people by the time they've finished punching each other in yeah. rugby league. Isn't that a great thing? The whole, is this coming, <clears throat> is this Minister Hunt? I think. Is this, has he brought this in, Minister Hunt? I think he's the donating money. Minister? Oh, okay. You know, to, for this to happen, right. you know, sort of obviously grant to yeah. people to continue their education. Right. Uh, but I think Minister Hunt is very vocal about Good. it. Good. Um, and uh, I think he's been talking to Todd Greenberg, the CEO of Rugby, Rugby League. Rugby League, yeah. About yeah. how great this is. Yes. And how important it is for people to realise they've got to get what I've described in other, or in my blog last night, and it's a new idea to sport, work-life balance. Oh, that's so important. So we've got to get rugby league seen as work or football seen as work, mm. and we've got to get the life balance correctly. Yeah, you know, well, it uh, gives the other the players something else to think about. You know, mm. so look, if say you, you're doing your degree now, can you go? Can you do it on campus? HG? are you allowed dispensation from training to go because you're? Oh. How what does that an interesting work? idea. You mean if you might be playing, say, for the Gold Coast Titans, <laughs> yeah. involved in, say, Deakin University. Yes. Uh, Studying, I, think, I don't know, clean coal technology or something <laughs> like that. 
perfect. <laughs> now, so you, do you fly down to Deakin University mm. and do your classes and yeah. then get on the plane and go back to training? I don't know. I don't know how it works. Right. Maybe you've got to tailor your coursework around your training. Right. So, so a lot that, of summer schools. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, that may be... A possibility. The, <clears throat> sure. Because of my commitments, the only course I can do is hairdressing through Idaho University. But still, it's something, as you say. It, it, it's an excellent and A lot start. of people knock these degrees, but they're great. Can I? You know, if you want to get work as a hairdresser, you try going into a hairdresser and say, oh, look, have you, have you studied hairdressing? No, I just love hair. <laughs> it's not going to work. But if you say, I've got a PhD from Idaho University. Come on in. You know, it took me four hours to get it. <laughs> And only cost $12.50. That's right. Now, look, what I understand is, and this is the Greenberg revolution. That's yeah. what I'm calling it, in education. Yeah. They start with a hairdressing degree. Yeah. Then they move on to a carpentry degree. Yeah. Then they move on to a jumper, which might get them, you know, understanding the principles of conveyancing. Yeah. And then they go and do clean coal technology, yes. PhD, at yes. Deakin University. Well, that's brilliant. That's the pro progression. Okay. So it's not just something yeah. that starts, say, between 17, if you come, if you're graded for the first time, if that's the right term, yeah. at 17, and then you finish by 24. You keep going and going, going and going. Yeah. And by the time you start off from the hairdressing, you're a professor of clean coal technology. Yeah. By the time you finish playing, say, 140 games. Yes, that's right. What well, isn't that fantastic? Mm. And I had no idea that it was oh. so simple because oh. I thought, well, oh, well, hairdressing, that's hard enough. Yeah. Because you see, I don't know, I want to say, uh, you know, Napoleon Purtis do it. Mm. I can't do it. I, I could never do what he does. No. You know, the no. colour tints, the yeah. chag cut, oh, the well, upside down bob. There's all that so much of... science involved with hairdressing these days. <laughs> I mean, you know, gone are the days where you just need a comb and a pair of scissors. You know, it's a bit more than that now. And a brush. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Yes, thanks very much again, Jim Daniels in the uh, TSP Soundproof booth. Now, <clears throat> this week, uh, there was a great A-League clash uh, last night, in fact, Raw v Sydney FC, mm. Queensland Raw, and uh, John Aloisi, the Brisbane coach, invited rugby league origin great Trevor the Axe Gilmeister mm. uh, to speak to the team. This is the Brisbane Raw before the match. Right. A terrific get He's a great him. motivational speaker. Excellent motivational, yeah. yes, motivational speaker. Remember, of course, he always played chock-a-block full of the angry pills. He did. And we never understood how Wayne Bennett could get all the pills into him to make him chock-a-block. No, that's true. Mm. It was always one of the great mysteries of medical science. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, the Raw received an inspirational call to arms from the Axe, who claimed the undefeated ladder leaders would fold if put under pressure at Suncorp Stadium last night. Right. Sydney FC being the ladder leaders. One thing, this was the, the tenor of spray, one thing about the New South Wales blokes, if you put them under pressure, they turn into individuals and work for themselves. They're a bit selfish. And then the stinger in the tail, and that's across all footy codes. Wow. Wow. Is that it? You put them under pressure? Mm. Now, did it occur to the Raw before they heard the acts talking that to put the Sydney FC under pressure? Had that occurred to them? No, that, I don't that, think so. Had Aloisi said to them, listen, we're going to put these blokes under pressure. They'll fold. They'll fold. Had that occurred to him, I No, suppose? I don't no. think so. I think he was more... Well, it must have been. The light poles must have gone off in the, in, the, in, the, in the raw now, look, camp. I, I think... What? The, put them under pressure? Ah. Is that what he said? Put them under how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, How do we do that, Axe? Yeah. That, now, <laughs> want some angry pills? Now, look, can I just say that it, I think the... Well, it didn't Alo quite work, did it? No. The, nil all draw. Nil great draw. match. Yeah. Uh, so they're but, still undefeated. Sydney still undefeated. Yeah. But, but you know, they're almost folded. Did they? Um, no. I don't know if they put them under enough pressure. No. Can I point out that, um, you know, beforehand, the Aloisi position was, we have to get more goals than they do. That was the Aloisi position. They didn't right. realise how they would do that with the role of pressure. Right, okay. Now, okay. look, this is an interesting story. Is there any talk of uh, Gilmeister doing some more work, HG, for maybe some other clubs <laughs> north, of, north of the Tweed? <laughs> Love to think so. Yeah. Wow, that's a very interesting idea. Yeah. Do you think he could have a go at the slimmed off pain look Titans? <laughs> Look, this is a, can I just say, this is a story of modern sport here, and I have, uh, uh, in other media commitments this week, made mention of this, and that is that uh, the, the spiritual home of rugby league in the Northern Beaches, I'm talking about Fortress Brookie here, is going to be rebadged as Lotto Land. 
Now, let me just say right <laughs> from the off, I'm not sure I had, I may be confused about what Lotto Land refers to. Yeah. I thought, hello, we're going to have two versions of Lotto mm. in Australia. I mean, I love Lotto. I don't play it myself, but I love the idea I of go, Lotto, going mean, in pick six or, yeah, you know, six all that. And, sort of, six or seven. Don't you get supplementary numbers? I probably do. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know more about yeah. it than me. <laughs> well, it's a while since I've done it. <laughs> Now, <laughs> that you go in and pick six and then yeah. put it in each, uh, with the supplementary number. Yeah, but there's got to be numbers that mean something to you, you know, like... This was always I've baffling got, to me. Yeah, I've got Birth five days. five toes on one foot. Okay, five, one. <laughs> See what I mean? It's got to be personal. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I was born on the 11th. Yeah, well, 11. There and you are. that's two if I combine them together. So we, what have we got? Yeah. Five, one, five, two, mm. 11. Yeah. And well, one. there was one. Yeah, yeah one. I mm. forgot that. Yeah. So we look. What would you think of it? I know that. We, then we have to find a two couple eyes. More. Two eyes. Yeah. And Carlton won by forty-one points. I no, yeah. didn't win by forty-one points. But anyway, be that yeah. as may, the score last night. Yeah. Carlton winning margin. So yeah. we only need the supplementary number. Yeah, that's now. right. Yeah. So well, that's the way you do it. Yeah, I mean, it's not rocket science. Anyone can do it. And it's and I tell you this for nothing. It's great fun. <laughs> and it's great fun sitting around waiting for the whoa. Got this lucky feeling. You know, I'm going to be set for life. <laughs> <laughs> now, anyway, Lotto Land seems to be, a, and people listening will know, of course, this much more than we do. Yeah. Because can I just say that. Lotto Land. I know. And can I just say that I love the idea of punting being more part of our lives. So do I. But um, it's not really punting, Lotto, is no, it? No, it's, it's not being stupid, really. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just giving money to it's other like people. buying a lottery ticket, really, isn't it? it? Is. I mean, it's no real different to a it's lottery not, ticket. Indeed. But as you point out, there's not yeah. rocket science involved. No. If there was maybe a little bit more rocket science, it might mm. appeal to more people. But sure. be that as it may, yeah. what I love is the idea of we're going tonight, we're going to see Parramatta play Manly at Lotto Land. Oh, you're oh that lot... reminds me. Yeah. I haven't put my, I haven't put my numbers in yet. Yeah, no, that's right. I'll yeah. do that on the way down to Lotto Land. Mm. What's Lotto Land? Oh, it's a great game that can, you know, you just mm. have to pitch six on the supplement. <laughs> it's not rocket science. <laughs> Etc. Yeah. Now, what are your numbers? Yeah, but I'm, I'm not you, going to tell you. Yeah. Oh. Because you'll use, use them and me, you'll win. That's right. I'll have to split the price <laughs> with you. Now. And you've got to stick to your numbers, I think, actually. I think that's the secret. A lot of people think, oh, well, this week, what will my numbers be? Oh, wrong. Because, you, you, you know, you have the, the numbers. You might have had these numbers for 40 years. They'll come up one day. <laughs> and you've got to might, have that hope. Hope. That's right. something to dream about. Hope. Something to hope. Now, and you get Divi 1 if oh, you, oh, that might be the 6. Yeah, it's all baffling. Yeah. Divi 2 might be 4. Divi 3 might be, and you're down to about 18 cents by the time you get to Divi whatever it is, yeah, 6. I, I don't know. When they talk about Divi, so, <laughs> yeah, I've lost. I, only, lost. I understand. I only understand winning. My numbers came up. Now, can Kaboom. I ask? Can I ask, do you auto pick at all? Auto pick? Yeah. That's, oh, you just pick random ones. No, they, no, no, what, no. What, they the, pick them for the you. The news agent does it for you. Well, not you exactly. get a news agent's numbers. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Is that how it works? I was thinking more <laughs> right. that somehow the machine. Oh, the machine gives you numbers. Uh, wow. You might as well just give them the money, don't you think? <laughs> I think so. At least you're involved when you say one, five, two. I know. It's meaningful to yeah, you. Yeah, it does. 41. You know, they're your special numbers. Nobody else's. Yeah. So, look, going back to Brookvale Oval, the change to Lotto Land. Yeah. Um, it's apparently it's, it's a mil, worth a million dollars. This, this wow package that yeah. they're putting, they're going to get naming rights on the jumper. Instead so it's of, going to be Lotto Land. Lotto Land on the front of the jumper and a but Lotto people Land. Are going, that's confusing. People are going to think, oh, well, I understand Lotto, but what's Lotto Land? Well, we're is in Lotto Land. Is that somewhere I've got to go? It is. That's where you see the Lotto Land team play. <laughs> you know, right. it's all, it's all hooked in. It's all a tight fit. Right. Now... Seagulls online lottery company, Lotto Land, Seagulls and the online. Are they the Lotto Land Seagulls now? Correct. Wow. And they, where do they play? In Manly. Oh, no. Not quite Lotto right. Lotto Land. Thanks. Right. Now, what worries me about So are they this... still the Manly Seagulls or are they the Lotto Land Seagulls? This I, is where I'm confused. I think Does they're... Manly exist anymore or has, it, or has it been renamed? Lotto Land. No, look, can I just say, I think they're the Lotto, Lotto Land Sea Eagles. And when uh, Dan Ganane in certain parts of Australia crosses, yeah. uh, you know, Two, you'll be saying, Dan Ganale, come on in. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Rugby League tonight. I'm at Lotto Land. <whistles> calling the Parramatta Eels oh. versus the yeah. Lotto Land Seagulls. I almost made a mistake there. Yeah, I know you did. Now, yeah. can I point out? Are they going to be playing, say, the TAB Titans? <laughs> <laughs> and with a special 
bonus mm, pick mm. if you can guess Jared Haynes' weight, weight tonight. Ah, that could be one of your special numbers. Yeah. Hey, Jared, what's your weight, mate? 78. Thanks, mate. <laughs> now, that, one thing that worries me is oh, in the past, we've known this as Fortress Brookie and their most recent uh, sponsor, I think, was Coco Joy. I'm not sure what they do, but they're just great. great Coco Joy. Yeah, that's their current sponsor. Sadly, Lodland has agreed to a two-year deal, six-figure deal, to become the top of the back, on the back of the jersey. So when they're running away from him, from here, you see Lodland, who also settled a legal dispute with the parent company of the former major sponsor, Coco Joy. I'm not sure what Coco Joy did, but they seem no. to have fallen foul in some way right. of the people there. Now, can you put money on Coco Joy to win anything? Can you, is it a winning thing? Like, no, I don't think so. I've got the Coco Joy numbers. Well, they mightn't help you do anything. <laughs> Can I just point out that this is all predicated on the idea mm. that no one likes rugby league right. in the Manly Warringah area in the Northern Beaches. Now, is that your mail? No. See, that, I thought people loved it there. Well, I see, I've always thought of Fortress Brookie mm. as being a fortress because people, local people came down from yeah. the area, got to, involved. To support their club. Yeah, and made it hard for others to, yeah. I don't know, get a toehold or a mm. look in. Mm. Anyway. As we go on, a development application was put in before the Northern Beaches Council. Now, this, for those who don't know, is one of those amalgamated councils oh, in the New South Wales area yeah. where they've joined several councils together. What, they've joined the Forbes... <laughs> Parks. Parks. <laughs> Condoblin <laughs> Councils, have they? <laughs> right. They don't know it, but they have. Is it anyway, called Lotto Land Council now? Is that... That is not suggested yet okay. because yet... It may happen. But anyway, the Northern Beaches Council uh, showed the plans for the NRL club to build uh, this, wait for it, $325,000 is going to be spent on an 85.5 metre sign on the Pitwater Road side of the Oval saying Lotto Land. Wow. 85 metre sign. So it'll take you about 20 minutes to drive past it. Well, given Sydney traffic, <laughs> yes. Mm. Isn't that amazing? An 85 metre sign. Wow. Now, 85, how high in the air, H.U., or is it oh, ground yeah, level or what? Be, well, that's a good question because mm. the, uh, the stand isn't very high there no. and it would be well within, say, a two-year-old's eyesight right. standing okay. there. They'd be able to see it pretty quickly yeah, and want okay. to get their numbers in. Mm -hmm. um, now, and can you put, is there a news agency in Lotto Land, say you, you arrive to watch the game, you think, oh, God, I didn't put my numbers in. Is there anywhere you can go to... I hope so. Yeah. A lotto land outlet inside yeah. the yes. venue. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. The Northern Beaches Council, who owns the stadium. Right. Now Northern Beaches Council owns, owns the stadium. stadium. Yeah, good. Mm. They were the former Moringa Council, gave the club stadium naming rights during a contract negotiation last year. Mm. At the same time, a number of councillors expressed concerns that gaming, gambling, alcohol, or offensive websites could get naming rights. <sighs> Lord. Concerns. Yeah. Then we have, um, you know, obviously news from oh, Lotto Land. Look, this is Bozo Fulton. Remember we call him, we call him Bozo because he's a clown. Yeah, former, former Lotto Land player. <laughs> <laughs> Believe Brookvale Oval has hardly, this is the spiritual home of rugby league in the Northern Beaches that Bozo's talking about, mm. has hardly changed since he first played there half a century ago. Right. And is adamant that the, what he's described as the controversial Lotto Land sponsorship will save the dilapidated ground. Dilapidated? I thought there was tradition. I thought it had tradition. Now, Lotto Land caused a stir Thursday when it revealed its skewed naming rights, yeah. jumper rights. Uh, Bo Bozo says the um, the ground is embarrassing and archaic. All right. It's embarrassing that Sportsman community on the Northern Beaches, which has supplied so many great sporting stanchions, still has a ground of the standard of Brookvale. It's the most archaic ground in the rugby league. Mm. Now, hang on a minute. This mm. goes against everything I've ever thought about Fortress Brookie. Mm. Mm. It was meant to be a spiritual home for people interested in rugby league in the Northern Beaches. Yes. Now, of course, it's somehow become... Now it's an embarrassment. An embarrassment. An arc arcane work? embarrassment. And this money isn't being given to the club to rebuild the stands no. and put down paving and no, pebble No, no, no. So they got a million stuff. dollars. They got a million dollars from Lotto Land to put the Lotto Land sign up. And the Lotto Land sign up is going to cost them 350000 So they're down to 750000 already. You can't do anything with you that. You can't do anything with that. 750000 What are they going to do with that? Would they be able to land Buy a lot of tickets, I suppose. <laughs> Corrupt officials and administrators, the gloves are off on the Sporting Probe.
Uh, Roy, last night, of course, a very big historic occasion at um, Icon Park, formerly known as Princes Park, when um, the AFL finally, at last, uh, allowed uh, the women of Collingwood and the women of Carlton to play a game of football yeah. uh, in uh, you know AFL colours, etc., yes. with the bunting associated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what was lovely was this was a, a match moved from uh, one venue to play at Icon Park, which they rapidly filled up. Mm-hmm. And so the police had to prevent every, anybody from going inside after a while. Was there a singles area, HG? There was know? a singles area. Very and, good. Uh, very well attended singles area. In fact, good. most of the, um, what I describe as the city side stand was a singles area. Is that right? And, okay. uh, you know, mercifully, I think people did the right thing. They mm-hmm. didn't pretend they weren't single. If right. They weren't. Yeah, good. I put it that way. Yeah, good. Uh, now, what I loved was, of course, um, the boss of the AFL, um, Dylan McLaughlin mm. being forced to go outside and personally apologise to fans. Mm. Uh, well, it just the, the person here says due to madness unfolding at the first game of Women's League. Madness unfolding. I know. That was an odd use of the yeah, word yeah, madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought it was a very professional crowd. The singles going to their area. The yeah. people who like to be going to their area. Yeah. He said, I it's went just, outside. The, 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 they had more people that they could fit. Than, inside than the could ground fit. Yeah. by several thousand. Yeah. Uh, they had 20... Did they have big screens, HG, for people? That's who... what I was going to suggest, was surely to goodness somebody could have pulled in a big screen and stuck it in the Princess Park. Would yeah. have been beautiful sitting out there, yeah. hearing the roar, yeah. seeing the goals, yes. etc. Uh, McLaughlin went outside when the police made the decision to close the gates to apologise to everyone. Mm. and uh, Everyone? There were thousands of people. Thousands of people. And, Thousands of people. And hope they understood we made a decision for safety reasons. Mm-hmm. We didn't quite anticipate this crowd, and it's fabulous. Typical AFL. Yeah. Didn't anticipate. No. Uh, it's exciting. I want to thank everyone who's come and who's watching. It's been really amazing response. We've been overwhelmed uh, with the turnout tonight. The atmosphere's been amazing. Everyone's here. Nobody's gone, and it's been a fun night. Right. Okay. Weird uh, sort of thing. You didn't get in. Sorry, you'll never come again. Mm. Uh, you know, bad See, lights. I would have thought it would have been really easy to relay the signal, say, to uh, Rod Laver Arena or outside Rod Laver Arena where people were watching the, the, the tennis last Sunday. Hang on, hang on. The so, match was last night. Yeah, I know that. And relay. Oh, on the big screen. Yeah, on there. the big screen oh, outside okay. Rod Laver Arena you, where everyone was watching yes, the tennis. So you could have. Your suggestion is that, let's say. Um, okay, so you just have an announcement. Okay, everyone, it's full here. Down to Rod Laver Arena. Oh, okay. Perfect. 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 Gee, yeah. that's an elegant solution. Mm. And you could have had the cops, you yes. know, with their, on their loud hailers. Yeah. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, ground full, head down. To, yeah. Police escort leaving now. Yes. Off your shoes. Buses shoot. provided. Buses, yeah, laid on by the. They don't yep. think. They don't think. They just don't think. And then, of course, they could have roped in. I don't know who was calling the game. Obviously, Mm -hmm. you can't have them because no one's listening to it. They're all outside. And so they could have put out an all-points bulletin on, I don't know, I don't know, let's say a station like Triple M, for instance, who might be covering the game. That's right. They could have sent out, uh, I don't know, Brian Taylor or somebody like that. Public notice here. Uh, Could everyone who can't fit into the ground, singles included, could you make your way to Rod Laver Arena where the screens will be operating? And would there be a singles area down there? Don't be disappointed. There will be a singles there will area be a in singles operation. Area, down yes, there. yes, yes. To the left of the screen, singles. To the right, non single. And also, the, a special late edition, and maybe Basil Zemplis should have come out and said this there will be a nude area as well, yes. uh, starting from as soon as the first quarter's over. Yes. Obviously, it takes a little while for people to get down mm-hmm. there, take their clothes off if they're yes. so inclined. Mm-hmm. So you've got singles to the left. Uh, people not single to the right, yes. and in the middle, a nude area. Nude area. And uh, what about underpants wearers? There might have been a couple of rugby league players hanging around. <laughs> in their on their underpants. way to the nines. Yeah. <laughs> well, mm. I suppose so. I hadn't thought of them. But mm. anyway, yeah, sure. Up yeah. near the screen, the underpants <laughs> people. But it was a great night for AFL, and a lot of people say, uh, you know, that um, Princess Park, Icon Park, yeah. is a spiritual home of football in Melbourne, and right. I think last night proved that proved again. That. Yep, yep, without the, doubt. So in future, to stop this happening again, are they, go, are, they, are they going to actually charge and issue tickets for seating to stop this happening again? What an interesting concept. Mm. I, I, I don't know to mm. be answered there. Mm. I, for instance, there's another three matches I think at least played this weekend. Because how many people are going to turn up next time on the off chance that they might have to waddle down to bloody Rod no. Laver Arena and watch no. it there? And the... Look, I've got to say, the parking at Rod Laver Arena. I mean, Shocking. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. 
Ah, yes, uh, Roy, look, free, the curtain comes down on a career, a glittering career uh, today at Caulfield. Uh, we broke this story a couple mm. of weeks ago that Darren Gauchi is uh, throwing a leg over for the final time yep. in racing. He's got three rides today. He's got uh, Goodwill in the uh, Robert Hunter handicap. He's got uh, Miss Gidget in the John Muller handicap. And in the last one, I think his best chance is uh, in the um, Darren Gauchi farewell handicap. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he's on Long Duron in that horse number three. And I'd love to see sentiment prevail here at Caulfield and farewell this champion Mm. with another final win. Mm. Can I point out that Darren has been riding for a very long time, Mm. almost as long as I've been alive. He's 51 years old Mm. and he began riding, wait for it. And this is interesting for people who are following weights today with the story about Jared Hayne and his Mm. weight loss and gain and so on. He began riding as a 13 year old, as a 26 kilogram apprentice. Wow. A 26 26 kilogram kilogram. apprentice, 13. It's a hell of a career. isn't it? Wow. His kids said they... You could almost have picked him up and put him in your pocket. You probably could have. Certainly you could have put him, uh, you know, obviously in the saddlebag of a horse. Yeah. Um, he, his uh, daughter said that he, obviously dad worked unusual hours. He'd go to bed at 5.30 p.m. and get up at 3 a.m. We didn't see a lot of him, but he's been a supportive father, which is great that's news. That's great news. But that's yep. dedication, isn't it? 5.30 every night. Mm. He wouldn't have even seen an episode of Neighbours. Not unless he recorded it. No. No, you're right. You're right. So much he would have missed. He would have. Would he have seen? Home and away. Yeah, true. Alf. He doesn't know who Alf doesn't is. Doesn't know who Alf is. Is that bushfire still going in Home and Away? I, I saw there was a bushfire and it troubled me. You know, I thought, oh, well, you know, great. Summer but boat. yeah, I hope nobody gets injured or Burnt. burnt. So uh, let's hope, uh, well, let's hope for, I know so many people will be there. People yep. went to the football last night and they were going to make a big weekend of it by yep. going to the AFLW last night and then off to, uh, obviously, Caulfield today, the spiritual home of racing in Melbourne. Yep. What a rainbow connection between Icon Park and Caulfield. And Caulfield, is. yeah. Isn't that great? And now, is he going to uh, do anything special, actually? Is he going to ride around Australia on a farewell tour or something like that just to wave goodbye to all the fans? What a lovely To idea. every country town, every major city. Every track. Here comes Darren. You know, Would they put clop, on a special clop, event? Clop, 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 Here he comes. Take Thanks, him Darren. Take Get him a, a farewell. <laughs> well, I'll give you something to do. What's he going to do? Corrupt officials and administrators. The gloves are off on the Sporting Probe. Uh, now, Roy, the jungles uh, caught a lot of attention during the week and the camp in the jungle. Mm-hmm. And I was very taken by some comments by Tom Arnold, who said to host uh, Julia and Chris during the week, it's the worst thing I've ever been through. I didn't know what it was going to be. I didn't know it was going to be real or I wouldn't have signed up for it. Right. Now, well, he's had a wake-up call, hasn't he? He certainly Tom. has had a wake-up call. In has he had the uh, Redbacks up to date yet? Does Not that happen? yet. That's coming on Monday night in a Redback, all Redback special. Wow. And isn't it great that, um, I don't know who's our Minister of Agriculture, probably Barnaby Joyce, yeah. has gotten onto their Minister of Agriculture in South yeah. Africa and allowed uh, several containers of Redbacks to be sent over there. Good. Because I take your point entirely. Yes. Yes. is that they wouldn't normally be allowed. No, into the country. not at all. But no. that's something a little Australian touch, hands mm. across the water mm. style, the Redbacks. Is, is Tom, uh, has he been brought up to speed with what the Redbacks can do once they're in there? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get a real shock, <laughs> well, I reckon. He, he said, I'll tell you what, I'd be screaming. I don't know if it was going to be real or I wouldn't have signed up for it. Yeah. Now, pushing on, though, he said mm. that he's been having great discussions with um, uh, Steve Price. Ah, yes. You know, this is obviously off camera because it'd be pretty dull putting there what they had to chat about to air. Right. Uh, they're discussing things like US, Australia relationships, gun laws, uh, you know, same-sex marriages. Oh. Price has come out and said he doesn't think, it, you know, Australia will ever have it. Have what? Same-sex marriage. Oh, really? Okay. It's a bit... Uh, you well, know, that's a bit of a blow to those who... Support that. Yeah. yeah. And Steve Price knows a lot of people. He does. Talks to a lot of people yeah. every day. What's Tom's position? I Where... don't know what Tom's position no, is. Okay. I missed that in the... Um, in mm-hmm. the um, what would I call it, in the wash-up. In the wash-up, yeah. But now, this is But isn't news. it great that you're getting this exchange of ideas exactly. happening in the jungle? Exactly. People just think, you know, it's lying around with grubs crawling up your date. But it's not. <laughs> now, one spin-off, which I think has already happened, which is just mm. fantastic, is, as we know, Collingwood superstar Dane Swan's in the jungle. Yes. Doing a lot of good toilet work I saw he was doing. What um, do you mean? Well, 
What, em- building toilets? Or? Building toilets, emptying them out, wandering oh. around in the underpants, that sort of stuff. Normal, Fair enough. Yep. Normal, normal sort of, yeah. you know, campfire activities. <laughs> He's going to headline mm. the Melbourne International Comedy Festival in April. Wow. He's now- What, he's bringing his toilet act from the jungle. <laughs> he's, he, obviously, he's got the, he's got the Brownlow medalist, yeah. and he's a, a celebrity, and I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Yeah. A rare double. Mm, I can't rare. think of anybody else having that double. No. The Brownlow medal and the celebrity. Yeah. And so he's going to have a, a, a conversation with footy satirist Titus O'Reilly. So I'm really looking forward to that. Because the jungle is something, and the brown low is something, but mm. to put them together on the same stage and be probed yeah. by Titus O'Reilly, that's got mm. must-see written all over. It has, hasn't it? That's fantastic it's news. terrific. And, um, you know, obviously, you'll be able to ask Swanee anything. You mm-hmm. know, it's no holds barred. No you can ask barred, him, yeah. you know, yeah. how does he get on with, uh, I don't know, bikies? And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, how would you get on with Tom Arnold? Yeah, and Red backs up your date. Yeah. You know, was it easy? Yeah, was that was it easy? Did they buy it? The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Uh, of course, Roy, uh, Darren Gouchy's farewell overshadows slightly the announcement that's at Caulfield today, overshadows slightly the announcement by Tourism New South Wales and racing uh, in New South Wales that they're going to have a $10 million race. Isn't that fantastic? In October the 14th, yeah. I think, is the first one. And yeah. um, Would that be the r- r- richest w- race in Australia, HG? Would richest race in Australia by some distance, but yeah. in the world, uh, it's a uh, $12 million race called the Pegasus World Cup. Up run in Florida. It's and then rubbish. The, it's rubbish, really. It, 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 it's appalling. Yeah. Started out with great ambition, yeah. but now it's just drivel. Mm. And there's a $10 million wor- wor- Dubai World Cup, yeah. but that's run on dirt, both oh. of those, I think. Yeah. And this one is the, the richest race on turf. Wow. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, it's an odd system of uh, sponsoring it where mm. each... There's only 12 entrants, 1,200 metres, obviously sprinters involved, yeah. and each entrant is you have to pay 600000 to, to enter your horse. Wow. So if you've got 12 slots, you're generating at least... Uh, 7.2 7. million. Correct. So the okay. government's putting in three million approximately. Isn't that good? To keep this is that uh, the Berejiklian government? That's the checked. Berejiklian blueprint for racing in New South Wales. Mm. Yes, correct. Okay. And now it, it's raced on the 14th of October. So That's what a pity great... it wasn't on the 12th. Wow. Hey. Hey. Wow. Well, anyway. Now, so you It's 1,200 metres, isn't it? Your spring carnival looks like your Epsom Handicap, September the 30th, October yeah. the 7th, spring champion. Yep. Then 14th Everest race day. They call it the Everest terrible name. Mm. Why isn't something Australian? Mm. Anyway, the 21st is Caulfield Cup Day. 28th Cox, obviously. Fourth Derby Day of November. Melbourne Cup Day, 7th this year. Oaks Day, et cetera. Yeah. It goes. So it's a tight fit in there. It is. Uh, it is. Everest, what I hate a, the name. I, I do too. But uh, what a refreshing... Uh, change to the card though. A twelve million dollar race. Is Winks going to be in that? I, HG's Winks going to go for that? Yes, I hope so. Because Winks would win that, wouldn't it? <laughs> Winks would win, wouldn't it, he? It would. And I'm just wondering if the I mean it's are... described as the third best in the world, but we know it's the first best, don't we? It's number yeah. one. And I'm just wondering if the owners of Black Caviar are thinking maybe we'll Ooh, give one more go. One more go around for the um, old girl. Look, well, what a delicious prospect that would be. Black Caviar versus Winks. Any talk of Frankel <laughs> coming out? Frankel coming out? 1,200 metres, of course, is the distance. Mm. And I'm just wondering, Roy, mm. yeah. you know, look, the Melbourne Cup looms. You've got October the 14th, mm. Melbourne Cup. Can you see where I'm going? How about mm. an extra bit of lolly mm. if you can tip one into the other and get the double? With the same horse running 1,200 metres on the 14th and 3,200 metres on the first Tuesday in November. Wow. I know, it's incredible. That, it? that would be incredible. Is there any talk of Winks going for that? Has Winks ever done the, 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 the 3,000? Yeah. 3, no, I don't think so. No. People at home will know, of course, uh, all these details. Mm. But this is a, you know, would you be thinking of going out on the day? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. And would yeah, you... I, I'm going to put money on it. Well, now, do we know any of the horses in it apart no, it from Winx? No, it doesn't You could just decide. I'm going well, to put my money on Winx. Remember, of course, it's wait for age, so that may, you oh, know, sort something out. I didn't know out. that. <laughs> Look, Roy, we'll have to continue this conversation because yeah, it just brings us to the end of another in and out probe session for the week. Mm-hmm. It's been a tremendous week of sport. Yeah. I don't know. Did you have a final highlight? Maybe not. It's all been great. We'll see you next week on The Probe. Corrupt officials and administrators. <laughs> The gloves are off on the Sporting Probe.
The Sporting Probe with Roy and HG podcast brought to you by Yates Rapid One Hour Action Weed Killer kills weeds fast, roots and all. For more great gardening advice, visit yates.com.au. Night. Night. Bonafide Sports Mad Australians. Snakes alive. Is that the time? Yes, green and gold freaks. It certainly is. It's time for the Sporting Probe. With two diamond pythons twirled around the tree of knowledge across the nation. Boys and girls. Well, the young man ain't got nothing in the world these days. The Sporting Pro leading the charge up the eucalypt. With extra chilli on the stick is the in and out maestro rampaging Roy Slaven. And coming from behind is the heavy lifter with both feet on the ground, H.G. Nelson. Unleash the grunt and poke HG? Yes, TF Much, gentlemen, Jim Daniels in the TSP soundproof booth in downtown Leaderville. TSP standing for, of course, the sporting probe. Probesters, HG Nelson getting the probe away. Thanks very much, Bruce McAvaney, for another set of seven. And again, it's a week when too much water has been barely enough. Tremendous to have you on the prod forward as the panel probes the rubbish of the week's sporting action. Of course, another week of massive collects and massive disappointments right across the golden globe that is the world of sport. And remember, the probe is brought to you each and every week by our very good friends at Yates. Yes, Sport and Seeds, a very, very tight fit. Can I just begin by simply saying, Rugby League is back! This week's probe uh, will be turned up to 11.5 on the Rugby League, uh, going full bore, giving a vigorous in-out work to anyone who is at it, and some Rugby League players have been at it in the most unlikely places. Uh, but to get us underway, let's lock horns with a man who has never eaten paleo pear or banana bread in his life. He's simply known across the nation as Mr Weed. That man is rampaging Roy Slavin. Roy, can we get the TSP bunny in motion simply by asking, what were the highlights that caught your restless eye this week, Barrow? Yes, uh, thank you very much, H.G. Nelson. And a wonderful week to be to be Australian. And uh, welcome to all honest, and I use that word advisedly, honest Australians. Uh, to begin with, HG, now a lot of people are going to say this is a bit of a clickbait story, and it's not. And uh, uh, the reasons will make itself clear as I go on. Now, it appears that uh, Byron Bay in New South Wales has uh, stolen the nude Olympics from Noosa Heads in Queensland. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, you know, nude Olympics, not many people involved, etc., uh, you know, hardly fan, family friendly and all that. Wrong. Wrong. The thing is, the new Olympics, it's been going for some years now and has been on my radar for as, <laughs> as long as I can remember. Uh, it brings in approximately $20 million to the local economy. $20 million. And I see this as a feather in the cap for the uh, the new uh, Premier Gladys Berejiklian, uh, who was... Uh, straight from under the noses of the Queensland government, has got the new Olympics for New South Wales at Byron Bay. Uh, it'll be on, I'll, I'll give you the details. It'll be on uh, later in the year. It's going to be a terrific event. I think uh, people are coming from all around the world to, and it is family friendly. There are family areas where people can sit and uh, watch the uh, tug of war and uh, a few other uh, events the associated. The 100 metres. The 100 metres, uh, all of that, the relays. <clears throat> anyway, now Virat Kohli, remember him? Uh, he's uh, <laughs> he's led his team into the wilderness for uh, roughing it together for a few nights uh, in order to quote quoting Virat Kohli in order to find themselves. Now, can I just say this never works? Uh, if you're going to find yourself, you know, find yourself, you know, in a in a mirror, or find yourself, you know, with your mates in a dressing room, or find yourself, more importantly, in the nets, not wandering around for a few nights doing nothing but, uh, you know, self-examination in the worst possible kind of way. Uh, so this doesn't be bode well for the uh, Test match, which might be starting this afternoon, our time, and I wish uh, Stephen Smith and his and his uh, colleagues, all the very best in that endeavour. Now, Tomic the Tank, that's our Bernie, that's Bernard the Tank. 
Uh, he's withdrawn from the Acapulco Open, claiming it was too hot. It was 27 degrees, but I have heard that that was a mistake. It was, in fact, 28 degrees. So we can now see more clearly, in sharper focus, the uh, the tank's position. Uh, can I just say here that my observation might be, and I don't want to scare anyone, I'm just wondering if it's possible that Tomic the Tank is unwell. Now, I use the term unwell in a holistic way. I mean, not only but in body, but in mind. Now, it's a sobering, sobering idea. But speaking of sanity and wellness of body and mind, I think Novak Djokovic might be suffering from the Thomas the Tank syndrome that we're now calling it. Uh, having gone down to the very, very likeable Aussie, Nick Kyrgios, in the same Acapulco Open. Now, I raised this last week, HG. The Brisbane, look, at these, look at these statistics. Look at these stats starkly. Brisbane Raw, naught. Ulsan Hyundai, who? Six. Wanderers, one. Shanghai SIPG, five. Look, our soccer is in a bubble of... The not very good. Make of that what you will. The sporting probe is on the nip, and the only certain cure is Triple M. Yes, this is the sporting probe with uh, HG Nelson and rampaging Roy Slave. And Roy, uh, rugby league is back, as I mentioned in my opening comments, and certainly rugby league betting is in the news big time. And let's expand this and include it into football betting. Now, yeah. the yeah. latest scandal seems to have erupted around a young. A tiger called Tim Simona, yeah. who seemed to take out bets on players who were his opponents, direct opponents, whether they'd score tries or not in yes. the game. Now, yes. the 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 mind of a rugby league player is incredibly devious, isn't it? it to is. come up with that as a wheeze yeah. seems to <laughs> not just win or loss or yeah. some of your favourites, which we might get to in a minute. Uh, the idea is I'll bet on my opponents to score and I might be able to help them there and hence improve the bottom line on my bank balance uh, or my account with whoever, whichever firm I'm betting with. Mm. Now, this is uh, unfortunately unleashed what I think is a disappointing response from the rugby league in particular, that all betting on what we call exotics mm. seems to be suspect. Oh now, some of these include things like metres gained, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, how do I put this for, whether 40, 20s are going to be, uh, you know, part of the game, mm -hmm. whether, which player will rack up the most attacking runs and so on. Yes. Now, these were some of the best things to bet on. These exotics, as yeah. we call them, yeah. were some of the best things to bet on. Yeah. Where do you stand on this? Look, I love exotics. Mm -hmm. I, I always have done. I, I think it brings families together, HG. Look, there's nothing like going to a game of rugby league, say with your kids and, you know, one of them might have, uh, you know, say say you, you're you in a match involving Cronulla, right? So so the, the, the youngest kid's got uh, a bet on Gal, you know, being the most, getting the most runs or hit up go forward, yes. you know, most metres gained in attack, mm -hmm. you know, and, and another kid might have someone else. So who's, Valentine yeah, Holmes. Valentine Holmes, someone like that. And it brings the family together. Uh. You know, there's uh, nothing like it. Uh, uh, I, I, and, and, you, and you see, you know, dad might have lost, the kids might have won. Either way, in the car or on the way home or on the bus or on the train, there's laughter because there are winners or losers within the family. I know. Not only in the larger meta picture of the game itself, whether Cronulla's won or lost, mm -hmm. that becomes immaterial. Mm -hmm. It comes down to your personal winnings. And I love seeing kids grab a little bit of folding out of their back pockets and say, Dad... Mum, look what I've won. <laughs> now, you, go you and know, treat that, yourself. And now they're denying that. I know. The rugby league are saying, no, we're not family friendly anymore. Oh, no. We're only here for professional punters. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the rugby league can get stuffed. I'm still going to bet on this stuff. You know, look, okay. It goes back a bit. The most successful year we ever had with the Shamrocks is when Grassy said, blokes... All your wages this week, we, you're going to bet on yourselves to win. You're not being paid. All the money's going straight to the bookie. Honestly, we never lost a game. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG on Triple M. Yes, the probe it is. And Roy, I did notice even in the opening round after this crackdown 
from Rugby League headquarters, the bookmakers were still freely shopping odds on whether any player in the Sharks-Broncos season opener, that was Thursday night, would score throughout the 80 minutes. First try scorer and head-to-head try scoring betting on players directly marking each other just 24 hours from out from the season. Now, that's the Simona bet. Yeah. Players marking each yeah. other. So is that still legal for families? I think families are involved as long as you can prove to the betting agency you're betting in a family group. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, you won't That's be able to do, do one yeah. out. You won't be able yeah. to do it at all. Yeah. Now, coming to the AFL, I mean, there's so many more exotics that you could have. I've mm-hmm. got terrific you know, value in number of times the ball's going to go out of bounds. Yeah, that's a terrific um, one, or the number of bounces. The number of bounces, that's right. Yeah, now, yeah. the one great thing about this is is that you have to go look on the dark net a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was able to get on that first test, for instance, what I call Staney Jods, yeah. and I got a beautiful trifecta on mm. <clears throat> Matty Renshaw, the over in which Vesuvius erupt would erupt, his oh. score yep. when the Big Bang happened, wow. and how long he was off. That was my trifecta. Wow, now you talk you've about, cleaned up. I know, cleaned up was the word. Mm. Obviously, there was some damage around the Fowler wear in that particular incident, yep. but I cleaned up. Yes. The odds I got were just unbelievable on that. Sure, he was offshore. Sure, yeah. he was somewhere north of Australia, somewhere sure. up in Asia, where they understand these things, yes. where they know that people are interested in these sort of exotic bets. Mm. But that's the sort of thing that, Families are being denied now. Now, don't tell me, and it was easy to pick Renshaw, first trip to the subcontinent, mm. young player, maybe didn't have the experience of someone like Davey Warner, who's sorting him out with the yuck alt now and mm. the probiotics and all that sort of stuff. Sure. I think it'd be okay. You won't be able to get those odds now on Renshaw and Vesuvius going off, Probably unfortunately. No. No. Is he wearing pull-up pants now? Well, he's she... wearing some of your crack bafflers. Oh, yes. uh, remember you went through India, I think, I did. Um, I did. without a drop being spilled. No, no. Well, look, the terrific thing about... Batting with gastric is that, normally speaking, the uh, the pads keep any leakage in in situ. Mm-hmm. Um, I do, although I don't, I don't remember when Stacky called for a quick single and uh, there was a bit of what I called burstage, um, but uh, it only happened the once. And uh, mercifully, it was nearly lunchtime, so I only had to stay out there <laughs> wearing, uh, you know, the creams with a different colour. For uh, for just a few overs, and of course the great thing about it is, if you're busting, mm. you really score very quickly, don't you? Oh, you do. You know, you really do yeah. put the foot to the metal. <laughs> you, you, you do. Know? Yeah. And uh, I've got yeah. to say is that uh, you know people did mm. suggest that this program was could I say stool shy? Mm-hmm. Can I point out to those critics, and there were many that yeah. suggested even our great helmsman Chairman Mao thought we should have had a go at it. Mm. We do not pluck willy-nilly, low-hanging fruit when it comes to gastric. I mean, I was only talking to Greg Hunt, the Minister of Health, this week about it. Mm -hmm. He believes that in Australia, approximately 2.7 million working hours are lost every month Mm -hmm. due to gastric. I think that's right. He says every cruise ship you go on now Mm -hmm. comes back with the, Mm -hmm. I was going to say, the plumbing stuff. No, the bilge full. The bilge full. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that can happen. They have to be pumped out at every point I they know. go to. I know. Now, can you get a bet on how much bilge will be pumped, say, from the Fair Star? Should it still be operating? I mean, operating? Can you have you got to go offshore to get a bet on you that? Certainly sort of... have to go a fair way offshore to get that bet on. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Is is that we yeah. saw no reason no. to make humour no. out of Renshaw's mm. unfortunate problems. We saw no reason no. to give. Air to A boys, A B's ridiculous comments mm. that he had to be carried out on a stretcher before he'd be able to leave the crease. Sure. We saw no reason to revisit Dean Jones's almighty knock there, mm. where there was a slurry of detritus mm. from the back door and vomit mm. all over the pitch while he made his two hundred. That's right. You know, we're not that sort of show. That's beneath us. Mm, mm, Others can do that. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. other yeah. shows, yep. masking by names of things like Grandstand and so on, yep. they're able to do that much better than we can. Indeed. When you were speaking to Health Minister um, slash Sports Minister, um, were you able to talk about gambling, HG? Because uh, he doesn't mind a bit, does he? He Look, he said he got to, uh, he, I, I said, you know, look, yeah. I've got those stony jods and I directed him yeah. to the site. And he said, oh, oh, the office put some on for me for the over in which Vesuvius erupted. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, so he got he didn't get anywhere yeah. near the trifecta yeah. And, yeah. and nothing like the massive collect mm. I got. But mm. he got a, he got involved. Yeah. He yeah. got involved. The thing is, the statistic that interests me, HG, and this is never talked about by the Bureau of Statistics, is that more Australians per capita win 
in gambling than any other nation on earth. And that's something that we do not broadcast. No. And I don't know why. <laughs> We should be proud of that. Is that why people are coming here in I think so. I because think so. They want to be part of this gravy train of success. Yes. Yes. We have more poker machines than any per capita than any other country in the world. More winners. Mm. More winners than anyone. I mean, why are we broadcast? When is Malcolm Turnbull going to stand up and say something about this? Something a good news story. Put us on the front foot. Come on, world. Come here and gamble. Corrupt officials and administrators. <laughs> The gloves are off on the Sporting Probe on Triple M. Oh, yes, it's the Probe uh, with, as mentioned, Roy and HG here for Yates. Now, uh, Roy, that was an incredible win, though, wasn't it, Go Just picking up the thoughts of, um, you know, Renshaw mm. obviously went off, came back on. Not only bowling, obviously, a sock got an incredible yeah. number of wickets. Yeah. And it gives us, we really, I think we... Uh, we have the Gavaskar Border Trophy at the moment, and so they only need another win and they've got it back. I think so. That's a hell of an achievement. It is a great achievement. And won't it, it make the rest of the series interesting? Because yes. Yeah, well, it's a rebuilding phase, obviously, for India. Yes. They're yes. going to have to rebuild, rethink. Can uh, I ask? Their whole, their whole strategy. But uh, I was most impressed, most impressed with the win. But I don't want us to get carried away with this. Remember, no. you know, left arm tweakers have had accidental. Success right. on the subcontinent, not only AB, who didn't bowl much but got six for in India, and uh, Pup, oh, not, Pup. Known, not known for his bowling all that much, no. got six for as well. I was intrigued by your idea that the team, the Indian side, went off into the wilderness to find themselves. Yes. Where's the wilderness in India? Yeah, that good you... point. I think they had to go a fair way, actually. Like, a fair way. Maybe up to Uzbekistan. Somewhere or like that, yeah. Right. yeah I, I, and wander around. Yes. And was it a matter of uh, setting off with a, a pocket knife and a box of matches? Pretty and, much. And a kilo of you know, ghee? Coley's a tough man, yeah. I don't know if they took any ghee, uh, but I think they had uh, sticks, pointy sticks, um, a couple of, a bit of rope for a trap. Mind you, what you'd catch around there, I've no idea. There's not much stuff living in what I'd call the Indian wilderness. And Indian tourism doesn't play up the Indian wilderness too much, does it? It doesn't, no. no that's Look, a well-kept secret. I, the only thing I thought of was maybe they went to the Himalayas, where yes. there would be some parts, which I've, I've never been, but I've seen on travel documentaries, oh, yes. parts where it looks pretty rocky and nothing yes. much growing, as you point out, mm. and just a lot of snow, obviously. Yes. That Maybe that sort of brutal approach mm. to... Uh, yeah, well, they're there for two nights, I think, two or three nights, just with you know, Vera talking to them and... Stories. Story. Obviously. Indian stories. stories yeah. <laughs> Betting success, etc. <laughs> That's right. Now, coming to this, um, let's face it, I did go into this series a little bit ho-hum. I wonder how this is going to go. Mm. It was a revelation, though. The 333 runs is a hell of a win. I know. And now, of course, it's electrified the whole series where... I take it that most Australians will be tuning in up for the second test to I see so. to see it should be mandatory history of the I, I, at schools. I, 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 well, everywhere. I think it should be mandatory. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how you'd enforce this. So it's a series of inspectors, I suppose, that just drop in on people unannounced and say, "What are you listening to?" And if it's not cricket, you go to jail. That's an. I excellent mean, it's a brutal. Idea. But I tell you, Australia is looking for a strong man. I think we want someone who can bloody. Get something done. You mean you want somebody who comes in on a platform of if you're not listening to cricket, you're un-Australian and off you go. <laughs> yes. Your card's marked. Yes, that's it. You're deported. You're I don't deported. know where to. I don't know. I don't care where yeah. to. No, so PNG to Just start out of here. You yes. don't, you, you're O-O-H. Your passport is stamped. And if you haven't got a passport, you're just given a slip of paper. Out of here. You queue up. The new Olympics, Roy. Yes. Uh, gee, the Gold Coast must be... Very oh, concerned seething. about this. Seething. seething. Because remember the Gold Coast, I think, next year has the Commonwealth Games. Yes. Uh, and I d imagine butting those two together, the Commonwealth Games and the Nude Olympics. I know. I know which one generates the more, A, interest and B, income, income for, the for the local economy. Uh, and it ain't the Commonwealth Games. I mean, the Commonwealth Games is a bit of a turnoff. People leave. I, I mean, I, I know statistically, you know, this is not often referred to. But more people leave Australia during the Commonwealth Games than any other time. <laughs> in the in cycle, the, in the, the cycle, cycle, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Now, I don't know why. I don't know if there's a, a direct correlation between Sea Games and leaving. Don't know. Now, uh, one thing that worries me is, would there be a clothed area at the Games for... Obviously, in the Nude Olympics. In the Nude Olympics, yes. yes. And clothed area and a singles clothed area. Because I know a lot of people think 
nude Olympics? Well, they count me in. Yeah. Well, I'm one of them. Now, yeah. one of the things is, obviously, for God's sake, don't feel as though you're under pressure to take your clothes off. Mm-hmm. I know it's all the rage. They have these events. I know there's in um, Hobart in Tasmania, I think, at the time of their winter yeah. festival, they have a, a nude swim one morning. Everybody gets up mm-hmm. fairly dark, so it might be about quarter to eight that they plunge into, uh, you know, the water there. Very yeah. cold. A lot yeah. of hypothermia. The hospital's prepared. Everything's mm-hmm. laid on the gurneys and so on are all lined up for the people sure. to come in sure. in their space blankets. Yes. Uh, yeah. Great thing. It is a great thing. Does yeah, it draw a lot of people from overseas, actually? It does. From some of your more sick countries who... Uh, who come along in come their along. raincoats. Yes. I'm sure it does. <laughs> and camp out the night before to get a good spot yeah. with the infrared binoculars. Mm. Well, I think uh, that's what, uh, you know, Byron Bay will be counting on. A lot of raincoats being sold and a lot of binoculars. The Sporting Probe with Roy and HG podcast. Brought to you by Yates. Rapid one hour action weed killer. Kills weeds fast. Roots and all. For more great gardening advice, visit yates.com.au. And if you want to get in touch with the Probesters, that's Roy and HG. Simply go to Roy and HG at thesportingprobe.com.au. Roy and HG at thesportingprobe.com.au. And a couple of listeners have, and we might get to their thoughts later in the program. Now, still on the cricket, Roy, and remember last week we broke a story here, I think, uh, to international. Well, I mean, it was picked up. I'm sure it was a clickbait story. Yeah, I admit it. Um, it was about the grading of pitches and every pitch being awarded, you know, sort of a, an A, B, C, D rating. What a great idea. Uh, mm-hmm. After the game. Now, I think... Oh, after the game, not before the game. Well, before the game's the interesting bit. Now, yeah. the bit that worries me is I think the pitch in the first test was rated as poor. Oh, not by me, no. not by you, no. not by every right-thinking Australian. No, not by Stephen O'Keefe. Surely. No. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yeah. If we could play on a pitch like that every, every time we go yeah. to India, we'd be thrilled to pitch. <laughs> we would, yeah. Now, now this wh- was a pitch that surely was doctored. Surely the curator was operating under right instructions, instructions from the, you know, the Indian cricket board. You know, give us something that'll, you know, we'll win on would have been the instruction. Simple as that. They didn't realise how cunning the Australian team could be. I know. How determined the determined. Australian team. Now, yeah. of course, they put the hoses away. And now we see in Bangalore, yeah. and I saw a commentator, I think, of the Fairfax papers, suggesting miraculously mm. they'd found a hose and were watering the what was described, I think, by Fairfax people as the green monster. Wow. Uh, with a lot of water. Wow. Are really giving it to the water. Yep. Obviously, they've been to Yates and got the right seeds this time and yeah. uh, obviously been able to sow them in. Yeah. And the pitch was looking absolutely, you know, emerald in tinge. In are, you, are you telling me India's prepared a green top? It what we used to call a, a green top? They're looking for... <laughs> How are the spinners going to go on that? I know, I know. I mean, surely they're shooting themselves in the other foot now. I mean, sure, you can go up into the wilderness and, you know, cogitate for a couple of hours, a couple of nights, and come back with an idea. How about a green top? I know. I know. Miraculously found the hose was the dead giveaway. Yes. Now, having said that, going back to the first test, Harbhajan Singh, I know, I don't want to raise a red flag because I knew, I know you and Harbhajan Singh have never seen eye to eye about anything, including cricket. He, he criticised the Australian team. This is hard to imagine. Harbhajan Singh criticising the Australian after the 333-run win, yeah. while he conceded the extremely dry pitch prepared at Pune Test had backfired on India. Harbhajan took aim at O'Keefe, fresh from career best of 12 for 70. He said, to be honest, that wasn't a pitch. Mm. Test cricket should last five days. You cannot play on such wickets where anyone runs in and bowls and takes wickets. Oh, dear. He was quoted in the Indian Express to say, I'll have to see him bowl on a good test match wicket, not this one. Till then, I reserve my comments. Yes. yeah. Now, hang uh, on. Anyone can bowl, walk in and bowl? Yeah. Yeah, that's the Harbison position. I mean, what an idiot. I've always thought him an idiot. Every time he opens his mouth, he just says, I'm an idiot. And I've said this to his face time and time again. He says, I don't know what you mean. Ha! Idiot. Now, Roy, what oh. sort of mark? Well, what does he mean? What's he talking about? I know. Look, I, this I five rated days, that pitch. I gave that pitch. I rated it seven and a half. And you're a very hard mark. I am. I had it up at 9.5. Did you really? I did. 9.51 I had it at. Yeah, right. Now, look, I've got to say is, where does he get off mm. suggesting cricket should last five days, a mm. test match should last five Where's days? Where's he been? I know. Hey? What, what world... Mm. 
has he been living in? Yeah. I mean, we yeah. have hard, I can't remember the last time a test lasted five days unless people were bored senseless. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. fell asleep and then woke up. Mm. I mean, oh, I think, oh, no, one, or, one or two have recently. But what about the timeless test? Does Harbage never talk about that? I mean, people dream of the days of the timeless test. Remember the timeless test, test could sometimes go for six weeks? <laughs> <laughs> People loved every ball. He it says, did. "Well, he didn't say, but now we come to Bangalore. Mm. I, I, I know you. It's hard for us here because all we've done is see photos and look at it on television. Mm. I'd just like to get your rating in a minute. Bangalore has a reputation for being uh, more batting friendly, mm. and it wouldn't surprise you. The administrators want to ensure the next game goes beyond the third day, right. I and mean, obviously for crowds. Mm. Uh, barring your injury, it's hard to see the selectors changing the Australian eleven. They might change the Indian eleven. They considered playing a third spinner as part. Dot dot dot. On it goes. What have you made of this uh, pitch so far? Yeah. And can you give it a score? You gave seven point five in. You know. Yeah. What are your thoughts about Bangalore? Well, look, I, I've rated six so far, uh, just on what I've seen. And as you say, it's difficult with a grainy black and white photograph to be able to determine exactly what. It, but but I found the boys and I advised them. I said it looks like a six to me from this distance. And they said, oh, fair enough. Uh, well, we might take in another another quick. And I said, well, that's up to you. But get out and have a look at the pitch before you make that decision. Are you worried it's going to turn on the fifth day? I Should have... we get there? Yeah. Well, ideally, you want a pitch that's, A, going to be useful for the quicks on day one. Mm -hmm. It's going to get reverse swing on day two. Mm -hmm. And it's going to spin on day five. That's what you want. That's That's the dream. And it can't be that hard to do if you get the right seed. As you say, the, the Yates people have plugged in on this. Surely they've come up with a seed that'll work in Indian conditions. I mean, I've been to Bangalore. It's not that weird. You've just got to add water. The sunshine does the rest. Then you get the mower out. And then, tweet, come on, players. Let's go. Bowl. Now, speaking of that, was it the toss to win in... You know? Yes, it's always the toss to win. Honest Australians. Is there something whiffy about your club? Is a fully invasive, bi-nozzled, shafting intruder required? <laughs> Send your concerns to The Sporting Probe. Ryan HG at thesportingprobe.com.au Full discretion is assured. Yes, this is The Probe, brought to you each and every week by our very good friends at Yates. Now, Roy, yeah. um, there's trouble yeah. in China. Uh, there's trouble concerning this uh, match, this AFL match, mm. by God, I hope you can get a bet on this one. This will be a beauty because it will involve a lot of Chinese money. And let's set this in context is it looks as though the Packer Crown mm -hmm. Consortium mm -hmm. is in a little bit of trouble because one of their business models was to lure people from China, mainland China, to come to Australia or to come to various crown outlets and roll big. Mm. Uh, this is obviously fallen foul of, you know... The new broom in China, which is anti yes. all of this. I mean, yeah. when are they going to learn to be part of the, uh, you know, being part of the West is being part of the punting world. Yes. They want to lock themselves off from the punting world. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but listen, people are going to want to do it. Yeah. So you might as well join the club. Yeah. Well, Chinese love gambling. They do. They always they have do. done. I mean, that's the great, you know, the, the great relationship between China and Australia is based on gambling. And let's not forget, we could learn so much from them. You know, Mahjong. Yeah. Played at the highest level. <laughs> Isn't it great oh, to watch? It is. And, and yeah. bets, the options, the number of tiles mm. turned, yes. the position of the tiles, how yeah. many off the rack, the wins, etc., mm. all that sort of stuff. You know, yeah. I mean, so many great options. Yes. Now, <clears throat> we've got an AFL match going up there, hoping to break down the barriers. That's mm -hmm. what I see it as, a breaking down the barriers between Australia and China. Mm -hmm. It's a match between Port Power and the Gold Coast Suns. I think from memory, it's in the first week of May, mm -hmm. or maybe around about May the 8th. Yes. And already it's creating terrific comment. And I must say, I misunderstood the problem here originally. Mm -hmm. The sides, obviously, are Port Power and the Gold Coast Suns. And David Kosh, the president, that's David Koshy Kosh, for those who may not know him. Uh, you know, Today or Sunrise or whatever it's called. Terrific little show. Obviously, it's not called Today because that's the other mob. Mm. Uh, Sunrise, the head host of Sunrise. Uh, He's part of the Sunrise family, isn't he? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Anyway, he's livid. Livid! Mm. Because it now appears the Suns are able to wear their jumper, mm -hmm. yellow and red, mm -hmm. the same colours as, wait for it, the Chinese flag. Yes. So they're sort of claiming we're the home side yes. here. We're playing in yeah. the colours. Well, it is a Suns home game. Okay. Uh, now, sadly, the AFL, that's Gillam McLaughlin, in other words, have mm. refused to enter the debate. 
Good. And the Gold Coast are now listed as the home team in China, allowing Suns to wear their home jumper, which is in the Chinese colours, yes. as I just mentioned. Yes. Kosh says the contract between the two clubs supersedes that, and Port Power should be the home game team. Yes. Now, he says Port Adelaide paid uh, Gold Coast 500000 to take a home game from Metricon Stadium to Shanghai. The AFL is going to have to rule on this because it's distracting on absolute historic event in China. The game is all about, etc. Koshy said midweek. Right. We bought all home gl- club commercial and otherwise rights for this game. Yep. For the 500000 although that's obviously the area of dispute. It's mm. as simple as that. The AFL is going to have to rule. Gold Coast, according to David Koshy Kosh, is playing silly buggers. And we're the club that is leading the AFL into China, the support power. We bought the game, paid good money. We're the ones committed, 10 years, etc. We have a number of other clubs who wanted to play us. There's no shortage of clubs that want to leverage our work in China. As I said to Gold Coast chairperson Tony Cochran, if you rear the red and gold jumper, it will be the last time you'll play in China. It's up to you, buddy. It's time for the AFL to make a decision. Now, Roy, Mm -hmm. can you play Solomon here? How should this be? Resolved. Well, I, I don't think Koshy can threaten can threaten that. I mean, if, if the Chinese people take a, a, a you know welcome into their hearts the Gold Coast Suns, and they might, they're wearing the right colours, they could become a terrific. I mean, I always see when I whatever I've said to you whenever we're watching the Suns play. Gee, they they look like a Chinese team, don't they? Look at the way they they're dressed. They look Chinese. And I said to you, is Gary Ablett uh, Gary Ablett Junior. Is he Chinese? And you said you weren't sure. Anyway, if 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 China takes them in, into their hearts, that's a fabulous thing, and Koshi should be congratulated. I know. But Koshi can't control the, the the hearts and minds of the Chinese. I mean, it's too big an ask. But I, I mean, God Almighty, how would you do that? I know. You know, Koshi can't do that. Koshi's just got to stand back and say, "Well, look, I started something. I started a joke, maybe." But it, it seems to me, poor business sense on his regard, if they were to, they could have approached any team to go over and play there. And they chose the Suns. I assume they chose the Suns because they're Chinese. The Sporting Probe with Roy and HG podcast brought to you by Yates. Rapid one hour action weed killer. Kills weeds fast. Roots and all. For more great gardening advice, visit yates.com.au. Yes, HG Nelson here for The Probe. I'm here with Rampaging Roy Slavin and that gardening section, which we has become very popular over the last couple of months, uh, will be coming up later in this hour. Now, a couple of people have got us on the email at ruinhg at thesportingprobe.com.au. Uh, Graham, who's a regular correspondent, said he was saddened to hear the plight of AFL umpires and their shoulder issues. Yes, it's a shocking story, isn't it? Which uh, I think we broke as an exclusive uh, in last week's program. The only responsible thing to do as a nation... As a nation, I like that. Do you know what I mean? I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As a nation, would be to hold some sort of fundraiser or charity event to help them out. Mm-hmm. Now, this is an excellent idea. Before I get your thoughts on who should appear at this charity event, uh, perhaps we could have a nude singles area at each footy match with a gold coin donation as entry, with all proceeds going to the rehabilitation of umpires. Mm. Well, that's an excellent suggestion as well. That is good. Of course, during the winter months, the pool would need to be heated to avoid embarrassing shrinkage problems. That's true, but that can be done. I'm sure that uh, the Great Australian Institute Australia Post would sell merchandise at their outlets to help raise funds. Mm. Merchandise. Not sure what the merchandise is, but we'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> yes. I think uh, the kids would love to hear a bear, or would love to, well, a, love a bear in umpire shorts and its arm in a sling. What a lovely idea. I didn't good? say that. No, no, no. You know, but you get the idea. I get the idea. It's a bear you can buy at Australia Post that has its arm in a sling. Mm, and in and it's, it's dressed in uh, an AFL umpire's uniform. How about whistles being sold at AFL? Yes. Uh, you, you, well, AFL whistles yeah. being sold at post offices. Yep. That'd be an <clears> excellent <throat> idea. Now. Yep, yep. yep. Why, not, why not say uh, where you can construct your own shoulder? You, you're given all the bones to put together. Kids love doing that. Wow. And, and they could see what the problems are if you rotate, you know, in, the in a certain way. You can see the stress that would be on umpire's shoulders. We should point out, for those who may have missed the story we broke last week here, was that the umpires, the AFL umpires, are complaining that they're wearing out their shoulders. With the bounce. With the bounce. Mm. And that in later life, they're, they've just got two useless lumps of flesh and bone hanging off the 
well, the shoulder yes. apparatus, yes. Uh, which of course they have to be assisted in, in anything they do in their active life or not so active life, which includes going to the smallest room in the house. Mm. They need to have someone with them. Now, the charity event. Uh, yes. You know, obviously Mike Brady selects himself, uh, comes down and sings up there, Kazali. Mm. Uh, we might be able to get Meatloaf back, <clears throat> who yes. we're thrilled. Who thrilled? Yes. Uh, the AFL grand final crowd a few years ago. Yeah. Obviously, hunters can collect to se- select themselves. Yes. Uh, their song, <coughs> the Holy Grail. I think. Yeah. Is, they, love know, yeah they love that. Yeah, they love that. Yeah, they love that. And yeah. I don't think they need you to change. Have co-hosts, them. you'd have uh, Gary Lyon and Billy, Billy Brownless back together. <laughs> Excellent they idea. They would bury the hatchet. They would for umpy shoulders. <laughs> they Wouldn't certainly they? would. And how about Sam Newman? I mean, sure, yes. in the doghouse usually, but mm. Sam might be able to let out on a very tight leash. Yes. I mean, because kids would be there and it'll be before 9.30 at night, I assume. Is it on? Is it, is it, a, is it a, a telethon, HG? Is that the a idea? A telethon with footy players answering the phone. Mm. You mean like you might get, I don't know, some, well, Brendan Favola is a big star now. Yes. With his breakfast radio program. He sure. could come in. Yes. Uh, let's see, Jars and the General. Yes. That's uh, Mark Rusciuto yep. could come along and answer the phones for maybe yes. three or four hours. Maybe a parade of our Chinese clubs. Well, one of them, the, the Suns. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why not? There must be Chinese clubs. The Suns lead it off, yes. followed by the followed team. by the Shanghai Sharks. <laughs> yes. How you talking? Hey. And the Beijing Bullets. Yes. And they wear black and white, I think, the Beijing Bullets. They should have a sister club with, say, the, the Vampires. Yes. Now, is it the MCG? Would be able to get the venue for free? Yes. And, uh, yes. you know, I mean, what I'd love to see is, say... Why do... not linking all the grounds? Why, 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 oh. why not a host in every ground? And big screens. It's all bought on big yes. screens. And I tell you what, it'd be a nice A nude touch. area in every ground. Oh, yeah, obviously, singles area. It goes without saying. And if they've got a pool there, it's warm. Now, <laughs> the other thing is, how about Gillam McLaughlin mm. bury the hatchet and come out and sing the national anthem? With uh, Hamish, his brother. Now you're Whoa. talking. What a night. And maybe get Mel McLaughlin from, where is she now, Channel 7? A uh, good question. Yes, I think so. I think so. Sure well, that works. This. I know. Mel. The three McLaughlins. Hamish. Yes. Yes. And they Dylan. do a couple of Peter, Paul and Mary songs or something. I don't know. That'll be blown in the wind. Times are they changing. Yes. Now, having said that. And, we- of course, a couple of testaments from umpires who can't wipe anymore. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I haven't been able to buy for 15 years. You've got no idea. It's embarrassing. I have to get somebody from next door to come in. I'm worried that in later life I'll be particularly useless. I loved mowing the lawn. I can't do that anymore. No. I got a ride on, but now I can't steer the use the arms till you reach the steering wheel. Yeah. Imagine that. Yes. Not being able to mow your own lawn. Yeah. yeah. Can't do things around the house anymore. No. Enough no. said. You know, it's a telling story, a modern tale. Mm. Now, the other thing is a role for Bruce McAvaney because people would love to see Bruce. And don't tell me that Bruce couldn't persuade Dennis mm. to come, this Dennis Cometti, to come back for the umpires. Oh, lovely. You know, do you know what yes, I mean? I don't yes, know what yes, they yes, do. Yes. I, it's a bit I don't TBA. know. Just be there. Just be there. Excellent. Just be there. <laughs> uh, now, somebody's suggesting we might be able to help the umpires. This is Paul. Mm. Suggests uh, they could drop the ball from spider cam or a fleet of drones hovering in anticipation. What a brilliant idea. I, I, spider cam, it would be tremendous. Tre- imagine the image, actually. You'd see it. You'd see the ball, you know, covering the whole screen, and then all of a sudden it disappears. Oh, 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 right and then down. comes back up. Yes. Man. I know. That's modern, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's something China hasn't got, too. No, they'll get it, though. They will. Now, they will. that's great. Danny's written. Uh, he said he wanted to draw our attention to something on the Twitter feed from the Melbourne Football Club. Yes. And what it is, it's a lovely picture of one, two, three, four, about half a dozen Ds mm-hmm. at their community camp. It was underway midweek at the city of Casey, and they kicked things off with read like a demon at the Berwick Primary School, and there the demons are in front of a class of gobsmacked kids reading The Cat in the Hat. Or something similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that great? I love that. That's I love that. Just I mean, I mean, community you, camp. I know, I know. Nothing to do with footy. Do you say to a lot of kids, do you think footy players can read? And they'd say often, why would they? <laughs> <You know? laughs> but to have 
players actually go and demonstrate that they can read. It blows kids' minds. It blows, doesn't blows it? kids' minds. Uh, Next thing you know, they want to read themselves. It's true. And then they want to play footy. And then they want to pretend that they don't read anymore. And then they go to China. Now, <laughs> Danny goes on. Does this not say the NRL, and he refers to something which we loved many years ago, uh, NRL players teaching children to read program has been so successful that now the AFL teams are copying it? If that is the case, surely is this then the most successful initiative ever embarked upon by Rugby League? Not bad. As Gillam McLaughlin, uh, as is Gillam McLaughlin being paid so much money to simply copycat tactics? Oh, encouraging copycat Sorry, ta- yes, tactics. Yes, bit. yes. Well, well, I, I mean, so much there. I to mean, unpack. Gillam McLaughlin's got to be big enough to say, "All right, why are schools? Why are the standards of reading higher in schools where rugby league is played?" Hmm. Now. Firstly, can we establish that as a fact? You put through a call to, yeah. you know, Minister Hunt. Minister Hunt. Mm. Gillam McLaughlin Gillam here. McLaughlin here. Remember me? Yes. Is it true that kids read better in rugby league schools? Uh, yes, I'm afraid so. Bugger. What are we going to do about it? Let's get all the AFL players into school. Demand that they go. Well, that's what's got to happen. That's leadership. I mean, that's leadership. That's what the country's crying out for. A strong man. The Sporting Probe with Roy and HG podcast brought to you by Yates Rapid One Hour Action Weed Killer kills weeds fast, roots and all. For more great gardening advice, visit yates.com.au. And if you want to get in touch with us at the Sporting Probe, uh, Roy and HG at thesportingprobe.com.au. That's Roy and HG at thesportingprobe.com.au. And we thank the correspondents for excellent suggestions and comments this week. Now, as you know, Roy. Uh, the jungle is my favourite place at the moment. And oh, yes. <clears throat> Dane Swan, the former Collingwood great, is still in the jungle, uh, unless he got booted out recently. I don't uh, think so. This is celebrity. Celebrity, yeah. 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 He yeah. said, uh, if I was still playing, I'd strike for sure. Uh, Dane, of course, spent many years playing in the Magpie Colours. I think he was at one point the most tattered uh, player in the AFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game is not going round without players. The AFL can think what they like, but as soon as the players say, we're not coming to work, they've got nothing. So he's thought it through. It's true in a way, isn't it? If See, the players if, don't if, turn if, up. Yeah. I mean, the crowd would be there. The umpires. Uh, umpires would be there, obviously, but there'd be something missing. You know, uh, Bruce would be up in the commentary box. Yes. And Bruce might be able to work out what it was and relay that to the audience, mm-hmm. which would give him terrific amount of time to describe what would happen if the players were here. Yes, to, to call an imagined game. I, I'd love that. And often uh, he would be able to include things like what the players have been up to <laughs> during the week. Yes. You know, how Just they were. Just pat it out a little bit. Well, pat it out how they were at the Buick <laughs> Primary School reading. Yeah. The D, if the Ds were there, mm. you know. And maybe he could have some reporting from that. Maybe mm. if you were there or if your child yes. was at the school, ring us. And he could talk, he could wax lyrically for several hours about the results of the uh, the uh, telethon, raising money for the shoulders of <laughs> umpires. True, true. And his favourite bits. Yes, and you replay know. them. <laughs> true. Blowing in the wind with the McLaughlin. <laughs> now, uh, if, they, if they, players aren't coming to work, they've got nothing. The AFL don't want to kill our game. They all make too much money. All the bloody top dogs in the game. Mm. So he's really... Th- He's gone really bolshy in the jungle. He has. Uh, in fact, well, the he, jungle can give you a different perspective. It does. Look can. at Virat Kohli out there in the wilderness with the, with the players. They, they, I mean, they, they'd be thinking the same sorts of things. Not that they turn their attention to the AFL. I'm sure they wouldn't. But the, they turn their attention to the BCCI. Oh, cool. of course they would. Now, how a player isn't making the most money in the AFL is beyond me. Yet the highest player probably is on about 1.2 million, maybe. Mm-hmm. The comments come following the revelation that uh, Chief Executive Gillam McLaughlin earned $1.74 million in 2016, significantly more than any other player. Wow. There was talk throughout 2016 of a player strike over similar pay issues. However, that was met with stern opposition from administrators and fans alike. Now... But isn't the idea of a strike is that you don't give a bugger about what the administrators think? Exactly. Isn't that the idea? You've got to say, well, we're bigger than the administrators? Well, we're more Can't important. Can't we strike anymore? We're more What's important. gone wrong with this country? Do we need a strong man, Roy? <laughs> Someone who can get there in there and get things done. Now, interestingly enough, former skip and teammate of uh, the lad in the jungle, mm. 
uh, Scott Pendlebury, says he'd go on strike in the pre-season to help the players secure a set percentage of AFL revenue. This seems to be the sticking point. Ooh. The income from the game is going up and up and up. Yes. The players are not getting a set increase all the time with the increase of uh, revenue. Right. Uh, the explosive call here, according to the Herald Sun, gained support from Richmond star Jack Rewold, who said the average AFL career only lasts four years and players should be paid uh, what they deserve. Now, I think the actual number is something like 42 games is the average. Is that the average? Play, play, wow. Playing career but then you get players like Michael Tuck. Oh, that's true. <laughs> That's true. Well, I suppose they're rare, aren't they? They are. There was yeah. only one Michael Tuck. Okay. And, of course, his record was recently broken yes. uh, by the lad from North Melbourne whose name escapes me. Mm. No, Boomer Harvey broke mm. his record right. recently. Okay. Anyway, um, the, the AFL is adamant players will be financially rewarded in the next collective bargaining agreement, but negotiation continue to drag on. Uh, Pendlebury, I have no qualms about sitting down for a first quarter, not at all. Wow. So we've got That'll the... be the strike. So the players actually turn up. I know. Put the gear on. Put the gear on. Walk out in the middle through and the sit run down. Through. Sit down. Wow. <laughs> They're all in position. Plop. Wow. That'd so the ball up happens. Doom, 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 doom. Wow. wow. It'd be a hell of an image. Would there be booze? Be get on with it, you bludgers. Get on with it. There'd be a fair no, bit of that, wouldn't I there? think the fans are very, very sympathetic to this. <laughs> I suppose they would be. The fans have come and they, uh, yeah. they might have paid. Sometimes these, pre, the, you know, your JLT community type yeah. games are free. All oh, right. Uh, All right. Penelope says, You're right. They, I mean, surely the, 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 the crowd would start baying for McLaughlin's blood, wouldn't they? <laughs> what are you doing about it, McLaughlin, you bludger? Up there in your ivory tower with your millions. Get out here with our people. The Sporting Probe. Roy and HG on Triple M. Ah, uh, yes. This is the probe with Roy and HG. Now, I noticed this story concerning the strike uh, dates from the beginning of February. I haven't heard much news about it recently. No. But <clears throat> let me just tidy it up by saying that, uh, you know, Scott Bendel- Pendlebury says, Collingwood Skip, remember, he says you model yourself off what the best in the business uh, in the world, the best in the business in the world have done and, uh, you know, the various sporting leagues. The NBA has had two lockouts and played a 50-game season instead of an 82-game season to prove a point. As players, we need to be more respected than what uh, they felt they were. Wow. Now, this is a really interesting idea. Yeah. Uh, he then comments on Joe Watts and then um, Rewald, the uh, Rewald from this Richmond, is, the Jack, Jack, jumping Jack Rewald. He said, uh, <clears throat> the group feels strongly about where we stand or sit. We don't want that situation to come and the AFL don't either. But what we feel strongly about is the pay structure. And if that's what we have to got to do to get it, Unfortunately, it's going to be the case. Now, oh. this is dragging on, as we can see. Yeah. Pendles finishes up. The fans will be spewing mm-hmm. about a strike or a sit-down, and rightly so. But they'll understand when the media print the story and print, print all the facts, mm-hmm. that they'll read about it and educate themselves and understand it's, it's all for a bigger product. And when the fan And the fans will enjoy the game in the next season when the game is so much better, mm-hmm. when they get more, so much more player access. Now, firstly, communicating the idea to the fan in general, mm. how will that happen? Mm. And how much bigger can the game get? Yeah, good question. And I didn't realise that uh, AFL players were feeling undervalued in the community. It's, it's Is that not, your impression of no, AFL I, players I, around the place? I mean, not when you really, catch, no. When no, you no, catch no, the I, public transport around Carlton and they get on, are they booed? Are they no, Not as I've noticed, HG. No. Not as I've noticed. Or in but, Adelaide? But maybe we've got to have, uh, you know, a, a midweek... A midweek session where the players are accessible at their various local grounds. <clears throat> so they're there to answer questions of the fans. So the fans can just turn up, but sort of tour, town hall sort oh, of what idea. A great idea. You mean, say, one uh, Wednesday, they might be in the Port Adelaide Town Hall. This is Adelaide. Yeah, the next yeah. Wednesday, that'd be the Port Power Players. Yes. And what'd be good is if hands across the water, some Crows players turned up. Yes. And then the next week, obviously, yeah. the Adelaide Town Hall yeah. for the Crows and so on. And share with the fans their concerns uh-huh. that that the, 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 the pot of money that's coming into the AFL is not being distributed evenly amongst the players. Too much of it's going to fat cats. Like and Gillam McLaughlin. Yeah. Now, fat cats. 
and Would- administrations. I mean, really, the game at this stage should be able to survive without any administrators. What? I mean, if I was Minister Hunt, I'd get in there and I'd sort it out pretty quickly. OK, we're draining this swamp, bro. OK, administration, she finished, she gone. No. The game is looking after itself. The game is free. It's being run by the players where it should always have been. Now, Roy. Isn't that a simple message to sell? It's an incredible simple message. Now, how does it work, though? Uh, you know, the fixture comes out. Uh, let's say Collingwood play Richmond in the first round. That probably doesn't have it. Let's say uh, Carlton play Richmond in the first round. That's on the Thursday night. Hands up. Representatives of all the clubs. Yeah, great. Okay, the next match, Melbourne beat Collingwood. Whatever. You know, off they go. Yeah. Then umpires, allocation, yes. Smith B, a Bamford. And uh, let's yeah. say, I don't know. Look, the umpires, we know they're always going to turn up. Mm. They always turn up. Mm. I mean, have you ever been to a game where the umps haven't turned up? I haven't. No, I don't think I have. <laughs> I, I think saying. they just stroll around on the off chance that a game might be going to be played. Yeah. It is true that occasionally I've turned up and they haven't been there, but I've offered to blow the whistle myself. Well, there you are. Yeah, See? sure, I get something wrong. <laughs> I, like, I like I'm only human. <laughs> Sure, I take a bit of abuse from the crowd yeah. and often an armed guard by the police have to escort me off. Sure, I admit that. And you haven't been able to wipe for years? Well, <laughs> bloody for the bounce. For the ball. The Sporting Probe with Roy and HG podcast brought to you by Yates. Rapid one-hour action weed killer. Kills weeds fast, roots and all. For more great gardening advice, visit yates.com.au. Sporting Probe with Roy and HG here uh, for the next 30 minutes or so. Roy, gardening this weekend, what have you got planned? What are you going to well, do? Well, I'm going to use uh, a lot of glyphosate. Yes. Weed killer. Yes. Yeah, you enjoy I, using weed killer, I do. though, don't you? I do. Is it, is it, do you like, you know, obviously you've done a lot of weed killing in your time. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this the, you know, your best? Well, it's, it, look, it's a terrific time to be killing weeds at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, 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 I like it. It's, it's, it's got a terrific, uh, it's only got a half-life of about three weeks. You know, the, the the modern glyphosates. Mm-hmm. So you can uh, get planting, you know, after about a month, you know, your, your, your dead patch. You, you can dig it up and uh, plant seeds. It's brilliant. Now, what are you going after? Are you going after, um, I don't know, sow sobs, Patterson's Curse, Salvation Jane, anything like that? Have you got anything in your Oxalis sites? is my, Oxalis, main, yes. my main thing. And and if uh, I, I know we've been uh, having a little bit of discussion about the eights people, if they could come up with something that got rid of uh, curl grub, I'd be very happy. Curl grub comes mainly from the African black beetle that was imported here probably accidentally about a century ago and uh, is really the, the blight nobody wants to talk about. Is that gardens. right? Yes. <laughs> nobody the, wants to talk about the it. The elephant in the room yes. is this grub. Is the curl grub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, if any uh, anyone out there is thinking about uh, poisons, kids interested, you know, you want to get into, get get yourself, uh, you know, a chemistry set Ticketed. and start coming up with some poisons, see how it goes on the curl grubs. And if it can, you'll make a fortune. Uh, and, uh, of course, remember uh, this spotting probe brought to you each and every week by our very dear friends at Yates. Yes. And obviously... The talk of Yates being the, the major sponsor for South Sydney, I know they're looking for another sponsor now that Crown's dropped out. What a tight fit that would be. But imagine the deal. Uh, we'll become the sponsor as long as we can plant the grass or provide yeah, the seed for the grass sure. that you run on on every ground. I suppose so. Be I mean, that'd be like a terrific that. fit. Mm. Yeah. Terrific well, fit. bunnies and seeds. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's the people at Yates. Now, speaking of uh, rugby league, which we weren't, but we will, uh, well, we sort of work with the rabbits. This is a terrific story. I, I don't know whether it's the most ethical story we've ever done, right. but uh, there's a suspended NRL star who has allegedly been involved in an illegal international wildlife smuggling ring. Wow. Now, talk about getting promotion for rugby league when it's so hard. I mean, mm. let's face it, the game started this week. Yeah. Uh, you know, the competition started this yeah. week. Yeah. The best they could do is a, with a sort of couple of faux stories about banning betting. No yeah. one understands no. that story. Kids, sure, apart from those interested, yeah. haven't got a clue. Well, they were negative anti-family stories. <laughs> you know, difficult to, you know, yeah. get much positive out of it. Right. But this is the sort of terrific well, old-fashioned... This is old fashioned, poo in the shoe, yeah. kit bag on the roof of the Burning Palms Motel <laughs> That's style it. That's promotion. It.
Now, what's he done, this bloke, HG? A rugby league player? Rugby league, former rooster and bronco. Mm. He was arrested in Bondi, where the federal police seized a large amount of cash and a number of snakes, according to the Murdoch people. A number of snakes. Right. No need for sniggers. A number of snakes. While investigating his involvement in trafficking of reptiles overseas. The police will allege... He was responsible for 16 packages that arrived in Australia from Thailand containing more than 200 animals, including Chinese soft turtles, soft-shell turtles, alligator, snapping turtles, snakehead fish, sugar gliders, veiled chameleons and freshwater stingrays. I didn't notice there was a freshwater stingray. That would be very rare. Would be. Uh, and do these threatened species, H.G., because he, he may be trying to... Propagate the species know, keep and keep them alive. alive in sanctuaries, in nurseries that he's probably, you know, he's got in his backyard. I, I don't know. Well, it'll be... I mean, I don't know. I'll judge the bloke. He, I mean, he could be a, uh, uh, a, a Francis of Assisi type. <laughs> he could be too. Talking to the animals. Dr. Yeah. Doolittle. Yeah. Now, uh, if I've got the right character from show business. Now, it's also alleged that during July and October 2016, six packages bound for Sweden containing more than 40 native Australian shingleback lizards were sent. Wow. I didn't realise Australia Post were that good. No. They could send something overseas. Their crews recruited uh, by syndicates to, who go to locations such as Kimberley, yeah. and mail the reptiles to Sydney where they're sold on the black markets. Right. Uh, sources said a shingleback lizard was worth up to $400 locally and more overseas. A breeding pair can get thousands overseas, said uh, investigators. Smugglers often just take the risk of the animals will survive the flights. And I mean, obviously, they're wrapped up in, uh, you know, those padded bags. Oh, they would be. The Australia Post. You can yeah, get yeah, Australia with, Post. With a, with a vent, air vent in them. Oh, oh, a couple of holes. A couple of holes punched in. Yeah, that's all right. Actually, what, what are the, uh, the, the... But the Swedes aren't being sick about our shingleback lizards. What do they get up to with our shingleback lizards? Why, why does it appeal to the Swedes? What, well, what a shock that would be from going from Australia, where it's fairly warm, into Sweden in the yeah, middle of winter. yeah. Well, October, you know, I mean, starting to calm down then. Sure. Uh, you know, July might be all right for the shingle back, but... Uh, but certainly not in a Swedish winter. But but but, but there's no, nothing, no suggestion that there's anything untoward going on with your, your six Swedes with shingle backs. They don't like stuffing them down their trousers and getting on buses or something, do they? <laughs> That's a story for 60 minutes. I know. But what a story. Oh, I know. I hope somebody can go undercover... And uh, obviously intercept a package, put them down their trousers, and, <laughs> and get meet, on a bus, and meet like-minded people. This is the sporting probe, punching through the sludge on Triple M. Yes, it's Roy and HG here, and uh, concussion. It's been a big talking point already in the football seasons. Oh, it's a big talking point forever. Uh, but um, James Graham. The Canterbury captain, this is their rugby league uh, captain, he's uh, been a vocal critic of NRL's concussion protocols, believing players, rather than club doctors, are in the best position to make the call on whether they return to the fray. The English international created a stir when he said in March 2015, why does a doctor tell me when I can't go back on? Why can't that be my choice? Let the players say, no, I'm okay, I want to play on. Now, this really did uh, cause yeah. a storm. Yeah. Uh, he, sa he says, um, one of the things uh, with concussion is the personality change. So if you've got an independent doctor who has no relationship with that player, how are they going to make a judgment call on the, if their personality has changed? Mm. You understand what the suggestion is? You and I playing rugby league present normally like this. We get a whack in the head and all of a sudden I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm, well, Minister Dutton. Uh, so then yeah. the doctor... Mm who has no idea of whether I'm Mr. Dutton or not, comes along and examines me and says, no, he's got to sit down because he's nothing like HG was when he ran on. But how would he know? Mm. Independence, mm. not the best thing here. So mm. he's got a bit of a point there. He, Graham said uh, there were many grey areas when it came to research in, into this you know, concussion issue. Yes. There is so much we don't know about concussion. Mm. Someone will see that movie with Will Smith in it and they'll all of a sudden become an expert on concussion when a lot of facts in that movie are in dispute. Yeah. Now, there's two points there, Roy, isn't there? Mm -hmm. There's the change of personality. Yeah. Does the doctor have to be the club doctor and know what you and I are like in Civvy Street? Yeah. Before we run on? Yeah. 
when we get hit in the head and end up looking and talking and sounding like Dutton, yeah. then obviously something seriously amiss. Yeah. Or Greg Hunt, even worse still, sure. seriously amiss. And yeah. so they can say, it might be wise, HG, if you sit down for a while. Yeah. And or what I'm thinking is maybe, uh, though, uh, you know, if, if uh, I was playing and I got hit in the head and I started playing like Minister Dutton, it, I might be better. Wow. You might play better. You might play better. And then... And, and, Coach might say to you, HG, you were marvellous last week. What happened? I got hit in the head. <laughs> oh, great. Well, we might have to have you hit in the head this week too, old fella, because you were playing like Minister Dutton. Why well, was I? Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other thing would be, what happens, though, if you ended up playing like, say, Cam Smith? Yes. Do you know what I mean? That good. Yeah, what, that's what I mean, that really good. Distributing the ball <laughs> yeah, that's right. and all of that, you know, turning up a dumb, dummy half all the time <laughs> when you're really, you're meant to be on the wing. Well, that, well, that could become an issue. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, that comes an issue yeah. of training. Yeah. What the hell are you doing? Sure. Well, I was, you know, yeah. Greg yeah, Hunt, yeah, yeah. obviously, there. Look, it's one of these things. I mean, you could argue it's it's political correctness gone mad, isn't it? I mean, I mean, who really knows about concussion? Has it ever been proven? All the facts I've seen are just rubbish. <laughs> You know, you know, and that Will Smith movie, I yeah. think it was about a serious. Blow. Oh, I didn't want to look at that because I knew it'd just be rubbish. <laughs> you know, I, I've spoken to Royce Aliff. You know, the last game of rugby league he played, he can't remember, and he scored twice. I know. I think you mean Roy Simmons. Roy Simmons, yeah. yeah. Well, I, who hit me in the head just a minute ago? <laughs> right, Greg Hunt. Yeah. Well, yeah. we've stopped the boats. We've stopped the boats, haven't we? <laughs> oh, I'm Minister Dunn. <laughs> Now, what worries me is, is it really the player who's in the best position? Mm. As in, you know, well, sure. Look, let's say you've got a broken leg. The player knows if he or she has the broken leg. Excellent point. You know? It, the I player knows, look, can't you know, stand no, I can't stand on Look, the bone's sticking out there. Yeah, I, I, I can't run on that. Mm. You yes. know? In, so in, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. You sit lie down. Lie down. Yeah. You don't yeah. need a doctor, do you? No. Well, it's the same with your head, isn't it? I mean, you know in your own head whether you're there or not. You know, if you're not there, you wouldn't answer any questions. If you're not there, you wouldn't bloody, you know. Do you think, though, that I think the, the implication in the Graham position is other players yeah. should have the right to assess whether you're concussed or not. Oh, other players? Well, I, I thought he meant that, himself. No, he understands that. Exactly. Exactly. That's right. What, are we getting other One, players involved? Well, that's dangerous. The Sporting Probe with Roy and HG podcast brought to you by Yates. Rapid one-hour action weed killer. Kills weeds fast. Roots and all. For more great gardening advice, visit yates.com.au. Uh, it is indeed, and uh, we're here for Yates uh, for the next couple of minutes. And uh, one final thing on the probe this week, Roy, is this is terrific news. Uh, Clipsal 500, one of my favourite events run this weekend. And the supercars have announced a new uh, series of rule changes uh, and uh, sweeping changes, uh, obviously, in the briefing in Adelaide. And there will be no draconian penalties for con contact. And each driver will be entitled to a get-out-of-jail-free car card for minor contact. Right. Uh, this would uh, allow, uh, you know, players to bump in. A sorry, little bit of bash case. and barge. Uh, indeed. Bump People love a little bit of bash and barge. I mean, who doesn't like a demolition derby? Indeed. The Clipsal 500. What are you anticipating? Let's say 25 cars go out. Mm. Do you think four will come back? Maybe. Maybe you only need one to come back. You only need one winner with a Clipsal, don't you? That's true. <laughs> true. <laughs> you know, I'd be very disappointed if every, every car came home. Uh, then you know the drivers weren't putting in. I know. And you it's, know? it's about risk. It, it's about risk, and it's going to revolutionise our yeah. understanding of punting on the Clipsal too. Oh, I know, I know, mm. I, I know. And, and it's it's so addictive, HG. I don't know uh, how much driving you've done, but if you give someone a love tap, <laughs> you know... The feel of it is fantastic. I oh, know. It's just you incredible. Know? Really, a yeah. little bit of bump at the back door really mm. does hurry you along. Yeah. Uh, that's it for the probe this week. Roy, it's been tremendous to be here for Yates. Yep. And we'll be doing it all again at roughly the same time next week. Until then, bye now. The Sporting Probe with Roy and HG podcast brought to you by Yates. Rapid one-hour action weed killer. Kills weeds fast. Roots and all. For more great gardening advice, visit yates.com.au. Bonafide Sports Mad Australians. Snakes Alive. Is that the time? Yes, green and gold freaks, it certainly is. It's time for the Sporting Probe. With two diamond pythons twirled around the tree of knowledge across the nation. Boys and girls. Well, young man. 
Ain't got nothing in the world these days. The Sporting Pro leading the charge up the eucalypt. With extra chilli on the stick is the in and out maestro rampaging Roy Slaven. And coming from behind is the heavy lifter with both feet on the ground, H.G. Nelson. Unleash the grunt and poke H.G.? Yes, sir. Uh, thanks very much indeed, gentlemen. Jim Daniels in the TSP soundproof booth. Yes, probesters, this is H.G. Nelson getting the sporting probe underway for another week across the nation and uh, tremendous to have your company down the deep end this morning as we prod about in the rubbish of this week's Red Hot Sporting Action. Uh, a week of obviously massive collects and massive disappointments and I don't want to begin on a sour note, but uh, can I say once again that annual peeve that I have at this time of year, I couldn't get a bet on the Australian of the year. It's a terrific competition, state by state, Going head to head, Canberra, January the 26th. It just screams out to get a bet on. I looked at sites uh, across Asia. I looked in Ulaanbaatar, as I said, in other media commitments this week. I got a bet on in Ulaanbaatar, but I couldn't tip that bet into obviously the Allen Border Medalist of the Year and also into the uh, Triple J Hottest 100, where Flumey won, of course, and took out the prize there. That was me all up for the week. I couldn't get it on. I'm devastated because I picked the three legs of that magnificent travel. Having said that, having said that, what an incredible week. And today we'll be doing the in-out work on marriage, tennis, cricket, rugby league. But uh, to get us underway, let, let's lock horns with rampaging Roy Slavin. Roy, can we get you in motion simply by asking, what were the highlights that caught your eye this week, bro? Yes, thank you very much. It's been a wonderful week in Australia, HG. And uh, can I welcome all honest Australians? Uh, to begin with, HG, a bit of a feel-good story. Oh, yes. And I love feel-good stories. Um, uh, Tiger Woods has uh, praised Donald Trump's golf. Uh, big raps coming from uh, the man they call Tiger, Tiger Woods, uh, talking up his uh, short game. Uh, and uh, interestingly, Tiger has restarted his career. He uh, got a birdie, I think, the day before yesterday for the first time in 528 days. So uh, it augurs well. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Amazing. Amazing. Now, a bit of an idea for our new sports minister, Hunt. Uh, Now, is it time uh, that all first-class sports people be given a dashboard card so that they can park for free anywhere they like for as long as they like? Uh, This is going to relate to a story that might bob up a little bit later on. Uh, but just bear that in mind. And lastly, HG, just to get us ha- get, get us uh, started this morning, uh, what sort of message are we sending in New Zealand by not sending either our captain or our vice captain for the uh, Chapel Hadley Trophy? How important is the Chapel Hadley Trophy? And how must New Zealand feel with its Australian side being led by our <laughs> gloveman? Not a term I use often. Wade. Anyway, make of that what you will. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Uh, yes, Roy. Uh, just uh, going back to that thing that peeved me at the start of the show a couple of hours ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, were you disappointed that the Australian of the Year wasn't front and centre in your mind mm. betting? Mm. And can I ask, having said that and set that rabbit in motion, yeah. can I also ask about the categories of the uh, Allen Border Medal? Mm. Now, I know they've tried to expand them, including T20 players mm. and so on, mm. but I'm just wondering if you think there should be even more categories, mm. uh, you know, like I was thinking uh, dismissal of the year, oh, run out of the year, sure. catch of the year, those yeah, sort of yeah, things, yeah. which would flesh it out and give putters an opportunity to get yeah. really involved. Okay, look... Can I say from the outset, HG, that no one could be a greater supporter of the Allen Border Medal than you or me. Uh, So any criticism we make of the night is very... It's couched in support. Mm. Uh, Because I love the Allen Border Medal, always have done. I thought it's a a tremendous institution. But you're right, it should be expanded. I've often thought that there should be uh, the Allen Border Medal for the best fieldsman the best fielding incident, uh, the best catch, the biggest six, the longest six, Mm. the highest six, Mm. the most convincing four, (laughs) the best French cut. Whoa! You see what I mean? And we're just scratching the surface here. 
There's no reason why this event shouldn't be six or seven hours long and make it a real, make the Allen Border Medal, make it an Allen Border Medal day that starts maybe, I don't know, just after the news. Uh, Maybe it could replace a current affair. And goes goes through till about midnight uh, or later. The best celebration of a wicket. Whoa, that's excellent. Or the best celebration of a hundred. The best sledge. The best sledge, yeah. The best interview. Post game, mm. you know what mm. I mean. Uh, uh, this, as I say, is scr- just scratching the surface. All of these should be addressed. There should be an, uh, there should be about fifty or sixty AB presentations. Now, can I ask? Often it comes into it is pretty clear cut who's going to win it, and I'm just wondering if mm. you know. Obviously, David Warner's won it twice on the trot, and who would begrudge him from winning it? No, no, one's, no one's no begrudging him. But yeah, no. can I point out that it only appeared to me that his only rival was Steve Smith. Mm. Now that is often the case. Why you know, couldn't it have been shared? What a lovely have we ever idea. had a shared Allen Border Medal winner? I don't mm. think we have. Now, what I'm wondering is if points should be awarded for various mm. activities throughout the year. Obviously, mm. most tons would get you, and uh, yeah, Dave yeah. Warner probably did get the most tons yeah. in the year. But yeah. then, if he didn't get best sledge, yes. if he didn't get best fielding incident, yes. if he didn't get best six, mm-hmm. do you see what I mean? Yes. Other runners could come in. Come through, so you might end up with the best fieldsman winning Ex- the Allen Border Medal. Exactly. Just, yes, I, I get exactly. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it opens yep. it up. It does. So open it's it not up. such a cut and dry yes. thing going in. What about uh, cricket's most eligible bachelor? Alan Bordel as an Alan Border medalist. Wow! See, yeah. Now Steve Smith might get that. Well, he might. I don't know now how this... much how eligible he's going to be because there's talk of wedding. Yeah, I know, and you're disturbed by. Well, this. I think the timing is wrong. Yeah. Shouldn't we be thinking India? We should. February Shouldn't the we be thinking India? I mean, I, I hope there's no talk of wedding preparations or plans. I mean, that can just be a massive distraction. Uh, massive. Uh, uh. It's got to be India, India, India. I mean, if they were planning to get married in India. Great! At the end of the tour. Yes, only if they win. Yes, that's right. That's right. There's an incentive. Now, can I jump from topic to topic? Obviously, Australian of the Year, again, disappointment. What about the Alan Border medal for the character who looks most like Alan Border? (laughs) That would get you a lot of points. It would, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be fantastic? And you might rank them out of 10. Yes. So let's say, you know, there was somebody, a character for the one of, you know, uh, let's say Guy Arena. Was a cricketer, yeah, and mm. he looked incredibly mm. like Alan Border. He might get ten points for yes. looking so much like Alan Border, yes. and that might, he might be a good fielder, might yeah. have got the highest six, etc. Yes. And that would be an incredible, it would be, you know, combination of yes. things that meant that in twenty seventeen mm. next year, obviously, when we mm. hope these things will come in, we mm. hope Greg Hunt's going to get involved. The new minister is of there sport. any talk of him getting involved in the Alan Border medal? I'd yeah. love that. Why is why isn't he there presenting? Well, I think that's what he's got to do. That's yes. what his, his ambition is. And what about an address, an Alan Border address? From Greg Hunt, the from Minister Greg of Sport. Greg Hunt, Minister of Sport, that opens proceedings. Wow, what, a tight 30? Yes. Yes. He could yep. do it yep. Yep. if yep. anybody could. Yep. Now, put all that to one side and yep. ignore it. Could it could just be a theme like, oh, I don't know. What, what it means what, to me, cricket. What cricket means to me, exactly. <laughs> You've taken the words out of them. <laughs> I mean, it writes itself, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> Now, forget the problems of the Australian of the Year, and let's move on to Sunday night, and we have the jungle. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Now, surely, to goodness, the TAB should be filled in on celebrities most likely to end up in the jungle. You know our betting agencies are the best in the world. Uh, I was talking to Greg Hunt about this during the week, and he said they're the best in the world, our betting agencies. And remember, Greg Hunt's the new Minister of Sport, and of course... He did say they do have a few blind spots, and he indicated mm. Sunday night was a bit of a blind spot. Oh, right. Now, mm-hmm. I've got no information mm-hmm. into what goes on in the jungle, how they select people to go in the jungle, but it does suggest punting, doesn't it? it does. And let's face it, you know, if you want to go to the jungle far away in South Africa mm. and stick your head in a bucket of poo mm-hmm. and it'll get points while redbacks crawl up your ass, mm. you know, that's what we consider entertainment now. Well, we do. We do. So I what... didn't know they were allowed to import Australian redbacks into Africa. But let's put that to one side. Let's say they have. <laughs> I don't mind. That's great. No, you're absolutely right. <laughs> no, I mean, globalisation. <laughs> I mean, you can't stop it. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I'm not encouraging people involved in preparing I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here do this. No. 
But no. should they have a local spider that has a nasty nip and could put you in hospital for a couple of days, then I'd love to get that crawling up somebody, some celebrity's Somebody's date. door. That's right. Now, look. Well, I think they've got really big spiders in Africa, haven't they? Haven't they got those big tarantula yeah, things that, right. that can, you know, really take go, away. go inside and take over? Now, now I noticed that... A number of people have suggested mm. that uh, we might have a sporting identity. Mm. We might Minister have... Hunt, is he in there? Is Greg Hunt going to the jungle? That's what I heard. Well, I, I had... Uh, I'd love to see Alex Perry and Napoleon Purtis do oh, this yeah. because what I'm thinking of is we have to entertain with mm. the jungle more. There's no point sitting around letting Morney tell stories as happened last year. Mm. If we put in somebody like Alice, uh, you know, the, the lads from the, what I call the makeover business, mm. they could do makeovers yeah. and find things in the jungle that they could use to pulp up and then do cosmetic changes ah, to the various other customers. Get people looking like Alan Border. Correct. <laughs> then you have Shannon Noel in there who might be able to sing a song yeah, every he night. Would. He would. And let's he face would. it, he's got terrific p- profile at the moment. He does. He does. It, it, it's, yeah, look, I've heard that Charlie Sheen is going to be uh, part, of the part, contingent. part of the contingent there. Mm-hmm. Now, that's going to liven things up. I've heard that Mariah Carey is wow. going to be there. And let's face it, she's almost Australian now. I know. Nilly, she just dodged a bullet there, didn't she? Or one of them did. <laughs> Uh, Steve Price is going to be there. Steve Price this from the, the project, the, 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 the shock jock bloke, yeah, yeah. and on the, the I, I, star yeah. of the project, yeah, yeah star yeah, of the project yeah. in his own radio program. Yes, yes, yeah. he'd be terrific. Of course, but he'd be terrific. The difficulty is, I don't want talk back to go into the jungle because I think it could bog it down. Yeah, it I'm would. Like, I know, no one's up. suggesting he's doing his show there. Or well, he might be. I don't know. I hadn't what? thought of that. Uh, Sam Newman, I heard. Sam Newman's yeah, in. Yep, yep, yep. Ian Thorpe, Matt Preston, Nicole Kidman, Greg Norman, Rod Cullerton. The senator, the senator from West WA Australia who just without a gig. lost his gig, yeah. Well, he's going to go. Now, how would you, just to finish this off, they're all great suggestions. Yeah. Would you like to see mm. it become something where people who had been good at other reality TV shows yes. get a second bite of the cherry? Yes. I'm not suggesting winners because they obviously get heaps of things to do and yes. record contracts and open restaurants sure. and all that sort of stuff. But maybe the third runner-up in MKR. Or the uh, fourth wrong person. network. What about someone who? It doesn't came, matter. Do, no, I, I don't. Across the network. Yeah, I, know, I, know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, okay, so you would take the runner runner up, say from MasterChef. Runner up from MasterChef. Yeah. That would, you know, maybe that's a bit too good. Maybe, mm. you know, first eliminated from MasterChef. Ah, even better. Yeah. Then you go to other shows like yeah. Have we got a dancing show? Have we got an idol show? Have we got Australia's Got Talent show? Of course we yeah, have. Yeah. All those things somehow are hands across the water. Because yeah. let's face it, if you finish third, yeah. the network that you came third in wouldn't have any dibs on you, unlike the winners and maybe the runner up. Sure. You'd lose interest. Therefore, you'd be yeah. available to go in the jungle. Do you think that sure. could work? Yes, I think it could work. Yeah. yeah so you yeah, had yeah. block people in there banging up, doing renovations in the jungle, in yeah. the jungle hideout. Yes, yeah, when people cooking and... Yeah, yeah correct. Great. Makeovers. Yeah, makeovers. Shannon Noel. Yeah. Here's another song. What about me? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, there's a show. Corrupt officials and administrators. The gloves are off on the Sporting Probe. Ah, uh, yes. Just finishing up with the jungle story. I noticed Chris Brown, one of the hosts of uh, "I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here." And before he's come... the vet. Is he? He's, he's the, the vet. vet. Yes, yep, yes, yep, the yep. Bondi vet. Yep. Uh, just before I come to that, I noticed the jungle is being threatened by floods at the I moment. I saw that. Now I just are they going to have can... to relocate HG or something? Well, I haven't thought of that. Maybe mm. they need to send over a super sopper with the redback spiders mm, uh, maybe. and maybe move it. Not not one of the big ones, obviously, but one of those ones yeah. that can work in confined spaces. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And and like, is this unusual rain they're getting? Is it? Is it so. uh, torrential? Is it a cyclonic? You're asking me questions yeah, I can't I know, answer. Yeah. But it is pretty severe. Yeah. Uh, people... I did see a photograph of uh, the vet and Julia with, with umbrellas. I it did didn't see all that. Well. I and saw it that didn't... in the newspaper. And I'm worried about the mud mm. because, you know... Um, Stars don't like mud. They don't. So they don't. Is. Stars don't. Now, but Chris, uh, the vet, says mm. there'll be a few short fuses in there. Mm. You can't put that many big personalities. Oh, yes, uh, big they're big person- personalities. Yeah, yeah. And I might get your thoughts on who out of your list might be the big personalities mm. into a space like this yeah. and expect it's all going to run smoothly. 
we're going to have some lovely moments in there with these people getting along, but uh, someone will lose it, yeah. especially when they're asked to put their head into a bucket of poo and have tarantulas up the back door, inserted in the back door. Mm. Now, some of the celebrities will venture to the South African bush on Sunday yes. after Ten has gone to great lengths. I didn't realise this, to keep their identities of the celebrities secret. Mm. But, of course, we revealed who they are on mm. this show here. Mm. Um, well, there are big personalities. I, I don't know how Mariah Carey's going to take... Uh, the spiders up to date. I, I just, I think we're going to have issues. I do. I, I genuinely think there will be issues. And mud with Mariah. Do you uh, think she could handle the mud? Okay. I think she could handle the mud, but but I think the tarantulas. Once the funnel's inserted, she's going to balk. <laughs> she will balk. Uh, yeah, mm. but that'd make. Would that be a lovely moment? That Chris is talking <laughs> well, about. Well. Well, can it's, I, it's got a highlight written all over it, doesn't it? it? Has. Now, can I ask whether you think, you know, if, um, you know, obviously Napoleon Purtis and Alex Perry, who are in the makeover caper, uh, whether they could come to a raid and whether she mm -hmm. would feel as though they were, um, I don't know, of sufficient skill, because let's face it, she wouldn't be a stranger to a makeover. No, 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 no. Um, no she'd be advising them. <laughs> the Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Uh, Roy, <clears throat> romance at the highest levels of sport. I, I think we touched on this last week and we didn't get a chance to flesh it out. But mm. uh, isn't it great news that Rory McIlroy has revealed, uh, you know, that he's really taken by his new fiancée, Erica Stoll. Yes, uh, yes, yes. I'm so relieved for the pair of them. They found each other, didn't they? They have. He dramatically called off his engagement to tennis star Caroline Wozniacki some yeah. years ago. And three years ago. Three yeah. years ago. And it's mm. taken him a, him a while to find, uh, you know, happiness off the course with mm. the with the blonde American. Mm. Uh, now, it seems to me that um, he, well, he just says, the thing I love about that we've been friends, this is, um, you know, with... Rory and Erica, yeah. uh, before anything romantic happened. We met when she was working for the PGA of America and renting a condo in Palm Beach, and I found it just refreshing being with someone who was living a normal life mm. rather than, and this is how he defined yeah. Caroline, yeah. oh, my jet is 30 minutes late. Oh, dear. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't. I do. I do. It wasn't. Obviously, Rory, Rory just wants to live a normal life, doesn't he? I Correct. Mean, he, he wanted someone normal. Can I point out, I could speak with... Erica, yeah. about anything, we ended up spending a bit of time together and realised that there was something more there. Oh. I love that she knows everything about me and there was no judgments at all. There was no judgment from day one, which is huge because it's very hard to find someone in my position, hard to find for someone in my position. Yeah. Not quite sure. What does he mean? Well, does, does he, uh, people judge him people long judge game, him. Why? terrible, short game, not too bad. Yeah. Your tea, your hips aren't moving right. All those sort of judgments. Or maybe he's just a little self-conscious about the, or defensive, defensive about the way he dudded Caroline Wozniacki. Right. Because they were engaged. The, the, the wedding plans were, were he sent up the and running. Out. The invitations had gone out. And then he just phoned her and said, look, it's all off. You've been too judgmental. That's right. I can't take the talk about I the hips take, anymore. Yeah. The short and game, the, you've got to leave it alone. Yeah, and my jets, if, you, if your jet's half an hour late, what can I do about it? He stated that they fell in love because they had so much in common being at the top of their respective sports. This is he and Caroline Wozniacki. It was. It was. Yeah. Well, she was world number one at that stage, and he <clears> might have been world number one. So it appeared that one wouldn't judge the other. Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Now, we have a mixed marriage here. We have a golfer yeah. and a tennis player. I know. Now, when this has happened before, the most famous incident that I can remember, of course, was Shark, that is, Great White Shark, mm. that is Greg Norman, mm. and Chris Everett Lloyd. I oh, know. It lasted about three minutes. I know. Uh, I know. They went know. down the aisle, it all looked tickety-boo, and then all of a sudden... The... But they'd been great friends for years. They were neighbours, weren't they? I think they were neighbours at oh, one stage. Correct. And it just it began by talking over the back fence. You know, Shark might have been mowing and she might have been, I don't know, doing Gardening. something with the ger geraniums or, or something. Or basil plant. Yeah, something like that. And it's, you know, oh, hi, Greg. Oh, hi, Chrissy. Yeah. Next thing, ding dong. Ding dong. Yeah. yeah. Get me to the <laughs> oh, church on time. <laughs> that's right. Um, now, you're right. Could, before I get yeah. your thoughts on this and how you think this should be played out, Caroline mm. Wozniacki has begged mm. Rory McElroy to shut up and move on with his life. Well, he can't stop talking about it. I mean, whenever a microphone gets near him, all he wants to do is talk about Caroline Wozniacki. Now, I don't know how Stotts feels about this. Well, the Ryder Cup star went very public um, last week uh, saying, you know, uh, the relationship with uh, Wozniacki was all bullshit acting and show. 
Now, he, mm. as mentioned, the new romance, Erica, doesn't judge him. Mm. Uh, Wozniacki said uh, this week, I don't understand why he keeps bringing it up. Was mm. I surprised? Well, it's a little dead now. It was three years ago. Mm. He looks as though he's doing well, and if he's doing well, then surely he must move on. Mm. Now, That's good advice. It is. How hard is advice. it for someone? Look, it's a ball issue, HG. It comes down to balls, I reckon. And look, we noticed this with Adam Scott might have been oh. on with Anna Ivanovich. Yes, that's right. Well, and she was world number three or four at the time. Tennis and player, it, it, he superstar. Was a superstar, and he, and he was a great golfer. He had the same hip problem as he did. You know, did. Rory McIlroy. That's got. right. And everything was tickety boo. Everything going swimmingly, and then the judgments began. Yeah. Club selection. We had the ball issue. The mm. ball issue. See, golfers only deal with a ball that's still. Mm-hmm. Whereas with tennis players, the ball's moving. Yeah. So it's very hard for one to relate to the other. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of tennis players think, well, what's the difficulty? The ball's just sitting there, hit the bloody thing. You know, it's no big deal. Try try hitting a tennis ball with a golf club, dick. <laughs> now. You know, can't that? do it. What's They've found opinion? wanting the moving ball. It, you start to judge them. Would you say golfers should put an embargo on all people, yes. romantically speaking, who hit the ball yeah. or use the ball while in movement. So yeah. footy players. Yes, that's right. Moving it, ball is right. a separate culture so, to the still ball games. Mm, so it does so, limit. So, so you could have a golfer marrying, say, a pool player. That, that'd that work. Ah. That'd work. And you could have a tennis player, you know, getting involved, as you say, with a with a football player. That, mm. That's fine. Moving ball. No, no, no problems. You, you, you're on the same, you know, you're on the same sheet. Have you tried uh, to wit, yes. see, one of the great enduring relationships in sport has been, uh, let's say, uh, Andre Agassi and, and Steffi Graf. Graf. Both moving ballers, yeah. both tennis. See, I, I often say if you're a tennis player, marry a tennis player. <laughs> if you're a golfer, marry a golfer. <laughs> you know, it's going to work. Honest Australians. Is there something whiffy about your club? Is a fully invasive, bi nozzled shafting intruder required? <laughs> Send your concerns to the Sporting Probe, Roy and HG at triple m.com.au. Full discretion is assured. Uh, Roy, just picking up on something else from last week. Remember <clears throat> we had a streaker at the cricket? Yeah. Uh, Might have been the week before, uh, Saturday before. Yeah. And um, the streaker turned out to be a rugby league player or had talents in rugby league. Yes. Nude, obviously sidestep, had the jink, everything. Uh, you know, could step to the left, step to the right. Uh, and you suggested that what was missing from cricket, especially the big bash, was a nude area oh, yes. where people could take their clothes off and relax. For with families them. who enjoy naturalism. Naturalism, that's right. Now, get this. It appears that stripping off and bearing all helps us feel happier. Sure does. <laughs> a study's found. English researchers found that those who cast off their clothes abandoned their worries at the same time. Well, that's yeah. obviously true of streakers. Yes. They're not worried about fines. They're not worried about getting clobbered by the, uh, no. the spots around the place. No. Scientists found that people who took part in naturist activities felt better about themselves, their bodies, and their lives overall. Mm-hmm. The more time spent, sorry, the more time they spent naked or partially disrobed, the happier they were. That's true. So imagine spending mm. five days at the cricket at a test in the nude area. Imagine mm. how happy you'd feel, never mind who won or lost. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, look, I, that's, that research doesn't surprise me. What surprised me is it's taken that long for someone to get around to doing the research. Research, indeed. I, I can remember uh, Jared Martin, a very fine mayor of Lithgow, many, many years ago, was suggesting that uh, Lithgow become a nude town. Uh-huh. And, of course, people held him down, you know, ludicrous moral outrage, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, thinking about it now, it uh, it would have been the happiest place on earth. You know, it, it was a happy place to begin with and probably still is. But if you just abandoned your clothing just at the Great Western Highway there as you turn off to go into the main street of Lithgow, uh, it would have been... A, 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 a tremendous tourist thing. It would have. And would you have expected people to work, say, I know there was a small arms factory yes. there for some years, might have shut down a well, little I while ago. Well, I think common sense has got to apply there. You'd, you'd you'd, 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 your you'd, goggles. You'd, you'd wear your goggles. Your, your, your helmet. And, you and to... probably overalls. Yeah. Uh, over your, you know, without underpants or anything, and just take the overalls off, you know, at lunchtime. And, tibra. and when you're going home, yeah. And, you know, in bars... I mean, your common and... sense applies co- Yes, obviously, common sense. Common sense yes. You know, if you're a fiery, you're not going to turn up with a hose nude. I mean, you'd, you'd be stupid. 
you know, put the gear on if you're putting out a fire. Indeed. Now, and same it, with coppers, you know. Yeah. The police sometimes have got to have their uniform on, but more often than not, they just walk around with the hat. <laughs> now, bar staff, mm-hmm. uh, you know, obviously maybe people who would, you don't get, you know, I'll use this word advisedly, pervs coming along. Uh, just have a look at people standing look, around the front bar. You're always going to get that True, element, you actually. Are. You, you, yeah. you are. I mean, we're a normal society, and, and we've got to take into account that there are going to be weirdos. And if Lithgow was a designated nude town, you are going to get a couple of your, you know, yeah. overcoat-wearing brigade. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure, that's yeah. that's going to happen. But, but they're pretty quickly weeded out, Because the overcoat's a dead giveaway. It is a dead giveaway. It is a dead... And, and, I, and I think, you know, again, common sense has got to apply. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, if, you know, you're in a, a trade or an occupation that requires clothing, for example, butchery, I think butchers should give a, have a special dispensation to wear something uh, while they're operating the boning process, for example. <laughs> now, of course, it would be a... Common tremendous... sense would apply. I know. Tremendous tourist attraction. You know, when you've put these ideas, say, to some of the senators we've got, you know, those people who don't like the nanny state interfering mm. with Australia, you know, I'm talking mm. about people like Corey Bernardi and, no, yes. you know, Greg Hunt, if he was in the Senate, and obviously yeah. David Linehelm and so on. Yeah. Do you find any traction for the idea with him? Yeah. Look, the short answer is no. Mm-hmm. Whenever I've raised the issue of naturalism with Corey, he's, he's flushed, gone red. Has he? You know, as if it, as if it's a challenge to him personally. Ah, and I, I had he doesn't to, have to go to Lithgow. No, I said you don't have to go there, mate. Think of the people who want to. You know, let's be democratic. If people are voting with their trousers or by dropping them, you've got to give, allow that expression free reign. Otherwise, you're talking about a fascist state. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Now, Roy. Obviously, uh, we're in the throes of tennis this weekend and what Mm. great tennis matches await us. The women's final tonight and the men's final tomorrow. Of course, the senior sits of the tour are trotting out and weaving their magic once again. Yeah, it's it's as if time's been rolled back. Yes, that's right. Remember Cher had a song called If I Could Turn Back Time. Yes, That's what I feel as though I'm in that song now. Yeah. Now. What a song that was. (laughs) <laughs> was. Remember that was the, the one sitting on Mighty Mo. Yeah, Mighty Mo. That's right, the battleship. And yeah. the gaffer tape undies. That's right. Which, uh, start... Man, they don't make videos like that anymore, <laughs> do they? <laughs> now, look, the trouble is we've got things like uh, the tennis this week. Mm. We've got the Chapel Hadley Trophy starting on Monday. Next mm. weekend, we've got Chuck Mundine versus Danny Green at oh, the Adelaide yes. Oval. Pretty good down in the world. Uh, I think it's on Friday night. I think it that is too. That tremendous fight. Could be the biggest fight in Australia's history. I think it is. And yeah. <clears throat> then, of course, we've got the Sevens, the Rugby Sevens, I think blossoming in Sydney yep. next weekend as well. Yep. It makes it hard for both Rugby League and the AFL to get any purchase on mm. the agenda at the mm. moment. And I'm disappointed with Rugby League this week. Mm. Uh, I was expecting big things from Rugby League this week, uh, an outrage of some sort that mm. gets the focus back on Rugby League oh, where yes. it should be. Yes. With Let's face it, the season is about a month away. Is it People that forget close? That. It's so close now. We're at the right. end of January. They, uh, they start, I think, early yeah. in March. Yeah. But good news on the AFL front is that uh, mm. at least one team is doing something to promote the AFL. Mm. A Melbourne uh, demon, Christian Slater, opened up this week in the Murdoch Press on an unusual concussion he suffered during the club's tortuous army-style camp saying his brickfield bag wasn't packed right. I'm not sure of the nature of the... Uh, training drill, yep. Salem was Salem was hit on the head by a brick during the Demons' two-day pre, pre-Christmas adventure in which players took part in pack marches, yep. several psychological challenges such as sleep deprivation and water torture and so on. Yep. Uh, Salem was one of the two casualties of the camp. The on uh, uh, Dom Tyson dislocated a patella but recovered quickly. Good. Despite knocking himself out, Salem said he remembered everything about the incident, saying the brick simply hit me in the wrong spot. Right. At the time, we weren't hiking, but the bag wasn't packed right. Then I went to lift the backpack up, and the brick hit me in the back uh, of the head uh, yeah. as we were going downhill, so that didn't help. Uh, but I'm fine now, back to full training. Now, Roy, mm. I don't know why more wasn't made of this incident in the Murdoch press, yeah. because this is a player who almost killed himself mm. in a training drill. Mm. It seemed to me the perfect thing you could promote, so simple, mm. a brick in a backpack. Mm. And, Roy, mm. what sort of training drill is it? 
mm. where you fill up a backpack <clears> just with bricks and ask mm. people to lug it around. Is that the modern approach to football? Yeah. Is that modern training techniques? Yeah. Is yeah. Look, we used to, uh, back in the day, it was, it was a bag of concrete that we'd lug around because uh, Grassy felt that it was safer than bricks. You know, people spoke of bricks, uh, other teams using bricks. We never did because mm. inherently dangerous if uh, your pack isn't you know, packed correctly because the brick can come loose and if you're going downhill, it can dislodge itself and uh, or if you find yourself slinging the, the pack over your shoulder and it's not packed properly, the brick's going to come out or one of them will. Chances are it's either going to hit a mate of yours or hit yourself. Now, we were aware of that. You know, back then, that's why we just used a bag of concrete to lug about. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Um, but I can understand that there, there, there are people who believe in the bricks. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, I, I've had arguments with them. I, I, I've argued with them till, till I've been blue in the face. I, I said to them, <clears throat> one of these days, someone's going to get themselves either killed or seriously injured by not packing their bricks correctly. And I hate to say I was correct. But I feel justified in, in our use comments. all those years ago no. of using a, a bag of uh, Portland cement. Now, look, can I ask, <clears throat> packing bricks, now, is it a technical... It's not that hard. No, thanks very much. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Yeah, but... Depending on the sort it? of pack you got. I mean, if the pack isn't brick compliant, if the pack will take, say, a width of two and a half bricks and you haven't got half bricks, you've only got holes, you're going to end up with potential Trouble. dislodgement. Yeah. yeah. Now... We have support staff go with these teams on these training drills to make sure they're doing everything correctly yeah. when they have to put their head in, you know, underwater to make yeah, sure they all yeah, come yeah. out and stuff like this. Yep. Do you blame the assistant coaches, yep. the brick packers, yep. or do you blame the player for not checking that the pack is correctly packed? With yeah, the well, I, I, you'd have to look at the structure of the club mm. uh, to begin with. Uh, ordinarily, a player is responsible for, in this case, his brick packing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there may well have been an overseer who would have given them instructions in the beginning. Look, follow me, boys. This is how we pack our bricks, okay? Everyone pick up a brick in your left. No, the left hand, thank you. And in you go. No, not that way, the other way around. Okay, yeah, good. Okay, repeat. Right, good. Okay, now are they cross-hatched? No. Let's cross-hatch them, please, for security. You see what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Now, if there was someone there overseeing, then that person's responsible if the... Brick was packed incorrectly, which obviously it was. I mean, I mean, it was packed incorrectly. He's admitted so mm. in his statement to the press that yeah. it was packed incorrectly. Now, did the press say to him, well, did you pack it yourself? No, they didn't. They didn't follow it up. And this is your point, isn't it? Exactly. There should have been a lot more people talking bricks, packing bricks, the role of bricks in training, and where does the AFL stand on the supervision of people packing bricks into a pack? Now, what happens, of course, is tomorrow school resumes in many parts of Australia. Yes. Some parts of Australia, it's already resumed. Mm. We're going to have kids taking their packs yes. to school, their backpacks. They might have a, a rip curl backpack or a mm. quicksilver backpack that yep. they got for Christmas yes. or an Australia Day celebration. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, they know that brick packing is great for fitness. Yes. They take their lunch out, put a few bricks. I mean, it's it's an accident. I know, that. I know. Should we have items on the news tonight? I, look, I, I, I think a it's current a, affair on Monday. Look, I think it's up to someone to stand up. Mm. I think it's up to the minister for sport to make a public announcement and say, "Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there might be a bit of brick packing going on during the week. Parents, could you please oversee your children? Don't let them pack their packs with bricks." until they've done the course yes. and then lean on the various educational authorities. They say the Victorian in this instance, the Victorian Department of Education. I don't know who the minister is at the moment. but Doing I'm a sure, great job. Of course, but, I, but, but I'm sure the minister, the relevant minister, would take a call from Minister Hunt to say, all right, we've got to have to look at this and maybe on Monday morning, this Monday morning coming, we can have, say, it only take 10 or 20 minutes at assembly for the principal to give a quick demonstration of the correct packing of bricks into a pack. And, and websites? Then, and, then the, and then the problem get, disappears. I know, websites, because what's going to worry me is a coroner is going to be involved in this and have to put out a warning I eventually know, know. when some poor kid is, yes. and, or some young footballer yes. has had his whole life cut short. Yes. And how many her. deaths is it going to take? How many deaths is it going to take before someone stands up? Before a minister? Who? Minister Hunt. Uh, yes. Stands up. And says, right, we're drawing a line. Mm -hmm. Brick packing is going to be compulsory in schools throughout Victoria. 
And then it's probably up to New South Wales and Western Australia, the other states to comply as well. But let's get it started first in Victoria where the problem is. The Sporting Probe is a weekly Royal Commission into sport. Uh, yes, Roy. Uh, so the AFL's got the brick thing to worry about. And the yeah. NRL, the Rugby League, has had a very, very difficult period finding something to get a hook into the public consciousness. Yeah. And I've got to say is the two things that come to mind are a number of board members have retired, which doesn't work anymore. Yeah. People don't know who these people are. They don't faceless know, men. Faceless they? men and women of league. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I've got to say is that the only glimmer of hope is this... The NRL has the power now to seize players' mobile phones. Oh, yes. Uh, as I understand it, the phones will be seized about, uh, I think the the league has decided to announce the teams on Tuesday night now. Mm-hmm. And they're going to announce that uh, I think they can have up to, say, this normal 17 plus a couple more, and they have to drop two off by Friday night. Yes. So as there's no rorting of the playing roster, yes. uh, which may give punters a leg up into, you know, the yeah. likely outcomes of matches. Yep. Now, the phones are going to be seized on Tuesday and handed back on Sunday or Monday after the game. So I don't think there's any more Monday night football. Right. So Sunday night. So the players Six. can have them from, uh, say, Sunday to Tuesday. Right. Then they're handed back in again to club officials. Mm-hmm. And this is now... Uh, okay. you know, Is this enforceable, HG? I I'm, mean, because a lot of players I know have more than one phone. Well, the other thing is, is the phones, uh, the phone contact is now reduced to four supposedly reputable uh, staff members of the club, not right. the players. So you might have an assistant trainer, yes. you might have the front office person, you might have the yeah. treasurer. Yeah. Uh, they would be considered the nominated players who look after the phones. Right. Now, I'm not sure that it's a great publicity wheeze. No, Do you it's know not, what I mean. It's, it's not, not going to get people talking, is it? It's not. He's not going to get the head focus back no, of the league. No, it's not. What have you, you? I know you used to ring up players a lot, and mm. this is meant to cut out, especially halftime chats with mm. people who might be interested in investing on the outcome of the game in the yeah. second half. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, injury updates and so on. Yeah. What have you learnt from ringing players from time to time? Oh uh, well, normally I would take a call from players HG at half time in a match mm. when they wanted to put some money on it. And I'd put a bit of money on it for them. Yes. Uh, I didn't say they see were 16 it. points behind and felt as though there were yeah. a lot of points left in the yeah. game. Roy yeah. really put 100,000 on yeah. us. It was never that that big amount. Yeah. You yeah. know, usually 10, 10 grand was the most I ever put on for any player. Um, and it was, <laughs> I mean, it was great too because they, they came back really strongly in the second half. And they had a bit of incentive. Yeah, they had an incentive. Mm. And uh, it pleased me because I got a bit of a cut. Uh, so everyone was happy, and I couldn't see anything wrong with it. You know, I like players backing themselves, and and you can, re- you know, who was it said if you're going to back a horse, back the horse called self interest? Might oh, have been yeah. Paul Keating, oh, yeah. uh, former prime minister, and he knew about self interest. I mean, who, you know, who, huh, well, quite right. who else challenged him? Yeah, exactly, yes. I- I- exactly. So if players are prepared to bet on themselves halfway through a match, I'm prepared to go with them. Now Ray Murray, former racing uh, top cop. Uh, in the Fairfax media, has applauded the NRL's decision to ban mobile phones from the dressing room and has urged the governing body to take the next step and give itself power to seize electronic devices from players who it reasonably respects of integrity breaches. I mean, everybody who plays rugby league is suspect by yeah. that very fact they're playing rugby league. Exactly. I know I that. I mean, there's no one innocent here. No. You sign up and register as a rugby league player, you've got to be at it. Of course. Now, of can course. I... Look, can I point out that last year, I think the Rugby League and the Police Force of New South Wales established Task Force, task force Backdoor Benny Elias. Mm-hmm. Now, the Benny Elias probe or task force was probed or asked to task with the probing of certain matches between Parramatta and Manly mm. and the Rabbits and Manly. Yes. Now, I've heard nothing no, from them. No, And do you think they could take on this administrating of the phone well, they, well, I don't know. Are they broadening their terms of reference? Well, that's what I'm suggesting. Are they, well, are they, are are they now, dragging in other clubs? That's the thing. I, I, I don't want bloody clubs reputations besmirched just on hearsay. You know, people are saying, you know, eastern suburbs, you know, let, oh. let, let's have a look at them. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I think, it, you know, be be even-handed. Look at all the clubs. Oh. Look at all the players. You know, if you're going to be serious about it, you would remove every device 
and every phone and every means of communication, including writing, from every rugby, rugby league player retrospectively. <laughs> wow. That's... <laughs> That's I know, it's a big ask. Uh, yeah, a but, bit no, but if you want to clean up the code, yeah. that's that's the only place to start. Could you so imagine- you'd have to have a dedicated police force 24-7 making sure that no player communicates with anyone about anything in any form. Would a rugby league jail help and the <laughs> players go, which is an idea that we've prosecuted on this station and many other networks and platforms that we work on. I put up another 20,000 words last night about this, that a dedicated rugby league jail where rugby league players just sat inside the jail and were lonely let out to play rugby league before they went back into jail. Well, I think that idea has merit. You wouldn't call it a jail. You might call it a... Rugby sh- league centre of excellence. Thank you. Hmm. Now, Thank I, you. Thank you. Can I Thank point you. out? And and at what age do players go in, HG? As let's soon as they say, register to play rugby league. As soon as they league. register to play, what, under 17s? Under 17s. Okay. So let's say from the under 17s, Straight parents, the parents would have to understand, look, your kiddie's going to be away for nine months. He's going to go into the rugby league. Centre of excellence. Centre of excellence and be allowed out for 80 minutes. Uh, including transport time, we, we'd have to... You know, obviously, it's you know, common sense has to prevail. Sense. Prevail, yes. yes. They're allowed out to play rugby league and you can see them then, but now, not at half time. Why hasn't there been an interim report from Task Force Backdoor Benny Elias about these things? Because they've had plenty of time to ask questions. How hard is it? Mm. Only, as nearly as I can tell, if I do mm. the maths correctly, 34 people were involved. Yes. You know, obviously there'd be, uh, you know, Jamie Lyon or, yes. and, uh, you know, obviously Sam Burgess, <laughs> just to pick a couple of them. I'm not suggesting for one minute that Jamie Lyon and Sam Burgess are at it. No. I'm not. That's absolutely wrong. And people will be ringing up this station now and the station you're listening to now suggesting that I'm not suggesting no, that. No, of course For one not. minute. No, no, but, but, they, but they'd need to be spoken to, wouldn't they? <laughs> but surely an interim report would yeah. be possible yes. by now. Yeah, even if they say, look, we've spoken to Jamie Lyon and... <laughs> Uh, no, we didn't. Haven't learnt nothing. <laughs> the Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Uh, Roy, just a quick one on build-up. I mean, um, we mentioned uh, that the Green Mundine bout hasn't had much of a build-up either. Next Friday no, night, I no. might have mentioned this earlier. I think I'm the only. I think I'm the only person in the media in Australia who's mentioned it. I think uh, you are. Are you expecting a bit of trash talk this week? Well, and, I hope so. You know, well, isn't it, isn't a... it up to... Look, Danny's been so quiet. I know. Um, I, I, I did see a very small article about it where he said he was quietly confident and didn't really go much on with it. And, and I think there might have been a couple of stories about Anthony in today's papers, and, which is good. And But I'm hoping for a bit of trash talk as in, you know, listen to your bro, et cetera, and maybe a, a dacking of the trouser and yeah. stuff like that at the weigh-in. And well, a, the weigh-in is an opportunity to get a little bit of publicity but, happening, isn't it? I, I expect both of them will be very show business-like when the weigh-in happens. When, when is the weigh-in, HG? Well, Would it be sure. Tuesday or Wednesday? It'd have to be pretty close to the bout. And yeah. of course, when is this, the bout? Friday night. Friday night. Yeah. And there's this technical thing of, I think... Mm. Uh, Anthony Mundine is going to be the first fighter in history to go up four divisions in weight. So I don't mean to be unkind to Anthony, but will no. he come out looking a bit fat? I suppose he will. You well, know, what's the point of having a weigh-in then if weight means nothing? I mean, it wouldn't matter what these blokes weigh, they're going to fight each other, aren't they? They are. So maybe we don't need a weigh-in. So and that's a you know a publicity opportunity lost. And it's difficult because... So he's had to bulk up. While Danny Green's been hitting the road running and what have you... Anthony Mundine's been in the pie shop. Is that what you suggest? I think that's right. In the carbo loading caper, yeah. as nearly as I can tell, Danny hasn't had to lose it, move anywhere in his weight. Right. Meaning, you know, let's say it's eighty-three kilograms. That might not be the weight. No. But uh, Chock has had to come up ten kilograms from wow. seventy-three to eighty-three. Did he wither away to seventy-three kilos? He did. He did. Now he's got to get up. It might be eighty-six. Don't quite right, okay. the listeners will know. Yeah. And what worries me also is that. We have tomorrow night, and I don't mean to, obviously tonight, the Williams sisters, and then tomorrow night, uh, Andy Roddick has suggested that the match tomorrow night, Mm. it might be, as far as history goes, the biggest match ever in Australian Open history, and maybe Grand Slam history. What's at stake there is pretty much beyond what any player can comprehend. Wow. That's Andy Roddick. The A-Rod is the A-Rod. saying that. And I only want to set that in context because next Friday night's bout yeah. has to somehow drag publicity. Yeah. The aftermath, of course, of the biggest <clears throat> match that anybody's yeah. ever seen. Yeah. And so people are going to try and be getting their head around what's going on in the Australian Open. And suddenly we've got to focus on who? Yeah. 
What? Danny who? Yeah. 10 kilos. What? And without any the help of the usual trousers off and look yeah. over there, whack, all that sort of all stuff. Of that stuff. No, no, none of that sort of stuff. So, oh, God. So people are going to look at them and say, well, where are the rackets? Corrupt players, you're on notice on the Sporting Probe. Very sad news this week, Roy, that one of our super mares, Winks, was named, wait for it, third best racehorse in the world. Well, that's not right. It's not right. Did you feel as though there's something... It's a conspiracy. Uh, ...needs to be probed? Yeah. Well, uh, last year's Cox Plate winner, mm. uh, obviously the Australian champion. Now, mm. this was at the Longines World's Best Racehorse, announced uh, midweek in London. What would they know? They're watchmakers, aren't they? They are. Timing mechanism. Timing mechanism. Yes. Now, yeah. the American star Arrogate won the Breeders' Cup Classic, was crowned the world's best racehorse with a rating of, and this is what may interests me, of 134. 134. What out of, HG? Exactly. The California Chrome was, uh, was second with 133. Mm-hmm. Now, it won't surprise you to realise that Winks plugged home in third spot 132, making her the world's best mare and the best turf horse. Now, a number of these horses run on, uh, well, I was going to say sand or dirt, I think it's called. Right, like cinders. Like cinders or whatever. Yeah. Winks has done a great job of the last two seasons. The record mm. speaks for itself, according to Chris Waller. Mm. But I think we need a probe. Mm. We need to have a look at these betting sheets and to see what bets were placed yeah. on, obviously, Arrogate winning yeah. and, uh, you know, certainly Chrome coming second because I think Winks is entitled to feel dudded. Oh, I think so. Uh, I mean, I you know so. how horse psychology works. Yeah. A, a setback like this could rob Winks of a great autumn carnival. Yeah, I know. Is, 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 has Winks been told? Well, I or just, are they quarantining that information? I, I would. Yeah, I think Chris Waller's smart enough to realise that Winks, the, the trainer, the Winks yep. shouldn't be told. No good. And I know Huey Bowman won't mention a word of it. Right. He's he's very very professional when it comes to these things. Right. And I think both of them yep. will doctor reports from England mm. in say the Times, the Sun, etc. to indicate Winks won. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, it won't be yeah, too hard. No, no, to do. fair enough. Now, is there any talk of, uh, I, I, I know there was talk of Winks going overseas, uh, maybe later this year. Yes, I don't uh, think that'll happen now. You don't think that'll happen? I, I know, no. uh, I, I think they're keen for another Cox Plate. They are. For Winksy. Yes. Uh, but, uh, later this year. I... And I thought after that, maybe go over to maybe Royal Ascot. Royal Ascot, yeah, well, probably, like could, that. yeah, probably the cone of silence. They could travel in a cone of silence and yeah. uh, obviously turn up on the track in a cone of silence, maybe, and run in a cone of run silence. Run in a cone of silence, is and it should any, be okay. Is it possible for Arrogate and Chrome and Winks to race against each other, or is it different? To, are they, you know, look, I'd put I, that'd be a question. I think we should put to the Minister of Sport. And because I think Australian pride is on the line. It here. is on the line. Uh, we have I remember when Black Caviar was the best. You know, people were saying, Frankel this, you know, Frankel's great, man. Yeah. Black Caviar was the, was the With champion. The exactly. Black Caviar dudded, well, yeah. completely blew away those yes. also rands. Yes. Can I put it that way? That's right, on three legs. In, indeed, on three legs. And with the jockey looking on the outside yes. and not on the inside where cheating horses come. That's right. And almost plows the uh, problem or, you know, maybe That's right. That's embarrassing right. for, uh, you know, the champ. Yep. Now. Uh, in other news, and uh, this is good news and bad news, Darren Gauchi, the mm. Super Hoop, has announced his retirement from racing riding after 35 Group 1 winners and more than 2,500 winners elsewhere on the track. Wow. 35 Group 1 wins and more than 2,500 winners. That's an incredible record, record. record. isn't it? Yeah. He's accepted a full-time role as an apprentice jockey coach with Racing Victoria. Mm. He's gonna, uh, the role starts on February the 6th, which isn't that far away, no. and he's going to keep riding until February the 6th. So you've still got a chance to see the one of the maestros of the turf. Yeah. In yeah. action. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, he's, what, what are his duties, HG, at this? Uh, well, that's an excellent question. Is it a sort question. of jockey finishing school? I think so. It's a centre of excellence. Centre of excellence. Good, uh, good, good. You know, obviously. Good. So, obviously, they're not allowed out. They just stay there, you know, for as long as they're racing. Let, let me, before we come to discussing the career, the Gouch 51 holds the Australian record mm-hmm. uh, for 506 winners during his apprenticeship. Mm-hmm. So, he knows how to ride him as a youngster. Mm-hmm. He also won four Melbourne premierships and was associated with champions such as Lon Rowe and Superimposed and Shaftesbury Avenue. I probably could have ridden for a couple more years, but the job came up and it's something I've always yeah, wanted yeah, yeah. to do. Now, when I think of, uh, obviously, Darren Gouchy, the mm. Gouch, I always think of Handbrake Harry White, oh, yes. who he would have ridden against and learned he a lot about. He would have. How, how, to, his, how to pull him up. Pull him up. Yeah, that's and the if, secret. To look as if you're really trying, but you've got the handbrake on. I mean, that's where Harry... 
came into the his own. Maestro. <laughs> the maestro of, yeah. the, of the tug. Yeah. And, of course, Jason Stubby Holder, the great uh, South Australian hoop. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, there we won't see his like again. But yeah. now we come to the mentoring role and young jockeys. Um, yeah. I mean, I suppose it is a matter of if I win by a centimetre or lose by a millimetre, you won't know if I'm trying. That's the great message to get across to jockeys, mm-hmm. isn't it? I suppose it is. Uh, to look as though, yes. as you point out, you're whacking away, mm. trying to get the best out of a conveyance, yes. turning it into mints, but at the same time... At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, that, that, that is the great skill. And it's hard to teach those skills. I know. Very, very I difficult. And is there talk... Why wasn't Darren Gauchy mentioned in correspondence concerning Australian of the Year? I mean, how fitting would that be, have been? Well, I don't... Why th- couldn't there have been a special, say, Alan Border medal struck? For Darren Gauchy. Gauchy. Do you know what? You I know don't. What I mean? why, why hasn't the Minister for Sport said anything about Darren Gauchy? Well, well, I mean, there's, f- been no, there's been silence. I know. Well, silence I just, coming from the from, from the sportsman from the Hunt Office. Yeah. Now, look, can I just point out that I think he should be on track for the final ride on February the sixth. If he, yeah. if I read this correctly, yeah. Of course, he may be out. Of, you know, before <laughs> oh, well, that, that's that'd, true. That'd be robbed. That's true. Is there going to be a lineup? Hg. Oh, of all the horses he's ridden. Yeah. Wow, 2,500 winners. Yeah. Hey, now you're talking. Wouldn't that be great to have them all there? I mean, how emotional would that be to have Darren, you know, just pit pop past on... On the on, final mount. On, on the final mount. On Winks. On Winks, yeah, but I don't I know, think... I know, I know, he's got nothing to do with Winks. I know that. <laughs> I know that. But wouldn't it be lovely on the day if Winks oh. turned up because he wanted to meet Darren? Do you think And they we... get to meet and he walks past or trots and, past... The and gives and, him the nod. ...the two and, and a half thousand... Horses he's brought home. Well, let's say he's Wouldn't riding. Wouldn't that be something? Let's say his last ride was Hell or High Water. Just, mm. just pick a name for a horse. Yeah. Uh, or Legs of Kimbo. Yep. Uh, and Winx takes him up to Legs yes. of Kimbo. Yes. And there's the handover. Right. Oh, no. oh. The hop off, the hop on. I mean, I know. Who's who's doing the racing? Seven? Are they doing the racing? Well, seven te- technically. There's are. still time, isn't yeah, there? I mean, we've got till the sixth, haven't we? The sixth of February to yeah. organise this. It can't be that hard. The Sporting Probe, Roy and HG. Uh, Roy, we've been talking a little bit about tennis, and this is terrific news. You know, we talk a lot about coaching, the importance of coaching. Last week, I think we broke the story that coaches around Australia are concerned that with Nick Kyrgios being, you know, our number one, that kids are coming into coaching clinics and just chucking surly tantrums and spitting the dummy and busting rackets all over the place, Mm. and they think that's the proper way to behave. Well, can I point out that the in Gosford, at the Gosford... Uh, tennis excellence centre, mm-hmm. a world class facility, mm-hmm. that they've secured the services of Nathan Healy, who's returning to the region, that is the fabulous Brisbane Water region, mm-hmm. to take up a full time coaching role. Isn't that great news? Now, uh, the former ATP tour star and coach of two time Grand Slam champion Little Leighton Hewitt. Really? Uh, will spearhead a change in philosophy and management at the centre, mm-hmm. with Gosford looking to create a new golden age for tennis on the Central Coast. I'm not sure when the last golden age of tennis on the Central Coast was. That's a separate issue. Doesn't um, Pig's Arse Edo hail Pig's from the Arse Central Edo Coast? May have, may have, that's a long time ago, Mark Edmondson. Now, yes. I'd have to say maybe about 1978 he won the Australian Open. Would that I be think wrong? he was the last Australian so, winner correct. of the Australian Open. Mark Correct. Edmondson, a great champion. I, I think he beat, uh, might have been Nuke. Wow, an all Australian final. All Australian final. Australian God, final. We can only dream of that. I know. We? Well, that's the golden age I want to bring back. Yes. Where we have a couple of Aussies fighting out the Australian Open. I mean, wouldn't that, I mean, this is great. I mean, it's great having Rafa and. Uh, the and, most and important Roger. match in t- tennis. Yeah, history. that you can't get your head around. I no. understand that. Nobody yeah. can get their head around it. I mean, no. God, it might, if you get your head around that, we could solve the world's problems. But we can't. <laughs> We, we, we're just human. You know, we have our limitations and we can't get our head around this. But get your head around this. Two Aussies in an Australian Open final. I mean, if that's the dream for this, this Central Coast dreamer, I'm all for it. Yeah. Can I point out that the most likely way this is going to happen, and this will shock a lot of people, yeah. up one end, wait for it, Nick Kyrgios, yes. up the other end, Bernie, or is it Bernard Tomic? Tomic wow. v Kyrgios. That, you cannot get your head around that fact. That's Fact. true. That's true. What in the final of an Australian Open? In the final of Australian Open. Those two Open. next year. Wow. Well, is that the plan? Is that the Healy plan? That's the dream. Are they going to go to the Central Coast, settle down there? What, Bernie Bernard? <laughs> and Nick. And Kirill. Nick. I know. Wow. 
I tell you what I haven't noticed, HG. I tell you, just just talking of uh, you know the way tennis players behave. Mm. None of them spit. None of them spit. I don't. I don't know why. You know, when you look at cricket players spitting all the time. You know, even our captain Steve Smith, second slip, he's he's there spitting away. Yeah. Uh, Wade always on the gob, always got something coming out. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look. You look at AFL players. Oh, no, they. As soon as they get a goal, they hurl <laughs> a big booty. Onto yeah, exactly. The mm. Exactly. Uh, rugby league players, well, they, oh, they, they, they spit in cars. They spit anywhere. You know. <laughs> Can't stop them spitting. <laughs> But it's just one. It's just occurred to me the other day that we don't see any spitting tennis players. Can I? I'm not suggesting they should, but you know, it's an interesting question why they don't. Yeah, I think it's been weeded out of the game, and they're probably fine quite substantially by doing so because right. it's unsightly. Families don't like seeing it. I tell you what, I don't like seeing though. Now that I think about it, I don't mind a spitting tennis player. I don't mind a spitting tennis. I don't, when was a the last tennis, tennis player? Is a winning tennis player? Yes. Now, can I point out? Rod Laver used to spit. Nuke used to spit. <laughs> Now, can I point out... Ken Rosewall, he was a spitter. Can I point out the over-egging of a winning point worries me. Oh, yeah. The, we need to grade this. Mm. Now, sure, when you win the tie break, you know, mm. 7-5, that's the time to put on a bit of a turn. Oh, yeah. But putting on a turn, winning 15, the first point yeah. of a five-setter, 15-love... Yeah. <laughs> Putting on a turn at that particular point yeah. seems to me a bit over-egging. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's a bit, look at me. Yeah. Look, sure, I've won a point. Yeah. Might be the only point I win. Sure, I might yeah. lose, you know, three blot. Yeah. Golden game, 6-0, six 6-0, nil, six nil, six nil, or whatever mm. it is. 6-love, mm-hmm. 6-love, six 6-love. Six yeah, yeah. But at least I've put the, you know, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. You know I, I, mean? I, I agree I think they need you. to be able to grade it a bit more. Well, certainly, surely this will be part of the coaching manual oh, well, that's going to come Healy. out of the Central Coast, out of the Healy, the Healy camp. Now, is he pro spit? Really? He's, he loves spitting. Good. Uh, now, he lived, grew up on the Central Coast. His parents live there. His brother lives there. And he's got another brother in Newcastle. So it made logical sense for him to come back to the Gosford. Mm. I always felt in the US like there was something missing. Uh, like I had one toe back here. Wow. Isn't that amazing? One toe. One toe. Hey. One of five. Right. Missing you know, the coast. Missing the coast. What would be missing, I suppose, Erina? I left the coast. <laughs> High point there at Erina. The, the shopping. Shopping, mm. yeah. Erina Fair. Erina Fair, it's great, mm. isn't it? It's the best shopping centre in the Southern Hemisphere, though. Well, Although it's Terrigal's got a great shopping yeah. centre as well. Don't get me started on Terrigal uh, shopping centre. That's terrific. A oh. bit further to go from to Erina yeah. than Erina, but it's got a great shopping centre. Where's he going to settle down? Maybe Long Jetty, somewhere like I that? I suppose so, Long Jetty. Barkley Vale, something like that? Great housing along Jetty. Oh, yeah. yeah. Older style. Mm. Older style. Great, yeah. great housing stock. Well, Fibro never went away, did it? That's true. Uh, I left the coast when I was 16 to go to Melbourne mm. with the AIS, and since then I've been on the tour. There were stages where I was... I, How old is he now? He's I'm, about 70. So he... I'm, the coast... <laughs> can I suggest the coast might have changed a little bit since he was there? Yeah, it probably I has. mean, the air, the, the air and a driving's not there anymore. I mean, he's looking forward to going to see a film there. He can forget it. And remember, of course, the Central Coast Mariners is... is, is well, they're there now. ...making a storm there. Yeah. And remember uh, Blue Tongue Stadium, if that's what it's called. It may not be Graham what it's called. Graham Park! Graham Park! Well, he wouldn't have been there. He's going to get the shock of his life when he goes past Graham Park and it looks full even when it's empty. And now I think they're going to build some big high-rise uh, between no Graham Park and the water there. Oh, that'd be a shame. It would. Remember that there's a swimming pool up one end there too? Yeah. He would, that would have been there when he was... That's where Iguana Joe's is. Yeah, Iguana Joe's. I think Iguana Joe's is gone for the oh, high-rise. Oh, has it? Uh, there were stages when I wasn't in the same place for more over a month. It's the most settled I've felt in 20 years. Mm. It just makes sense to be here. Then he talks a little bit in this uh, think piece with Patrick Bodden yeah. uh, about, you know, coaching little Leighton. Mm. Uh, one of his great achievements was Leighton was outside the top 100 when they linked up yeah. and he, he got him back into the top 20. Is and he right? said, mm. this is an interesting, the biggest thing I think I supplemented for him was the serve and volley. He volleyed so well, but he didn't really back himself in getting to the net. Yeah. He played his uh, old defensive game style, but he was a, a, a step slower then, so getting him to the net was big for us. Right. We also mixed in the slice backhand in my time with him. He uh, tended to hit a lot of topspin. Who doesn't? Yeah. And eventually players were able to run around it and use their forehand so aggressively against him. Yeah. So he worked at getting the ball 
lower to get him to keep the ball lower. Yeah, with that net. slice. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I wonder where that came from. That that was Healy, wasn't Healy, it? Healy, yeah. Healy okay. hopes to use his time in Gosford to help our uh, mm. best tennis stars of the next generation to find, and you'll appreciate this, a balance in their lifestyle and aims oh. to connect them the mind with the body. Oh, man, this is getting weird, isn't it? During my career, I had the tendency to force the play, muscle the ball, and overplay the point. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. This has gone no, off no, the no, rails no, completely. No. I mean, oh, God. It came, I guess, from... We're not going to have bloody perfumed candles and sitting around, are we? And Beads. Yeah. Flowers. Well, he, he said it came from playing too much with the, the ego. I've been focusing on the mental side of the game since I finished on the tour and realised how important it was. Well, yeah. well. Well, there's no doubt about it. Tennis is played in the mind. I, I mean, you, you, could, you yeah. made this clear last it's week. It's fifty, yeah, fifty percent physical, fifty percent in your head. Yeah, yeah, between the years. And yeah, I yeah, think yeah. last night, or mm. no, the night before, mm. you saw a moment in that match uh, of the two Swiss champs mm. uh, where uh, Roger just decided, "I'm mm. a bit stronger here mentally than the other mm. bloke, Stan." Yeah, and he just turned it up, and away he went in the final set. He did. He did. He used his head. He did because uh, you'll recall, HG, that uh, that. Uh, uh, Roger won the first two sets convincingly, and then Stan had what we call an injury break. He did, and came back. So, and came back and just uh, blitzed Roger. For a couple of sets. A couple of sets. So what did Roger do? He had an injury break. Uh-huh. Took himself off into the room, back room, had someone fiddle. Came back. It was a different game again. I know. So that was using his head. He thought, what can I do to break this? What can I do? What can I do? I know. Injury break. Mm. He wasn't injured. Mm. He just wanted someone to fiddle with him. And he wanted to sow the seed of doubt mm. and stammer. He could yes. Say that what happened to Stan yeah. could happen to him. Exactly. And that's exactly how it worked out. See, it's all in the head. And all in the head. Now, can I point out the six months off in mm. Roger's case? Yeah. Do you think Nathan will be advising players when they come in? Like, should he say, well, you know, I don't know. I just Let's say him. Sam Groth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you say, Sam? Sam. Down, Sam. Now, we've had a look at you. We think six months off will do you the world good. Sam, yeah. Well, I think that'd be very good. Sam, come on in. Come on, mate. Yeah, good to see you. Sam, have you thought about a break? Yeah, I'm not talking about an injury <laughs> break here either. Sam, you know, I, I, I sure build that into yeah, your game. Right. Look, Sam, I've looked at your head and I've looked at your stats. I think, mate, you might need a bit of a, a six-year break. <laughs> Honest Australians, corruption in sport is everywhere. If you have information that could put corrupt players or administrators behind bars, send your information to the Sporting Probe. Roy and HG at triple m.com.au. Full discretion is assured. And Roy, the uh, Centre of Excellence in Gosford has an open day on February the 4th. And the coaching courses will start two days later on February the 6th. Right. It's the first stage of a grand plan to, in the area to take tennis to the masses. I like yeah, that idea. I do, I do too. Now, he, Nathan's too. actually... Is got, it free? Is it free? I think it's free. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, they're basically taking off where his parents left it. The centre has been spent 23 years in the family. Wow. There was great coaching program there uh, with over 1,500 members. If we can get back to a culture like that... Yes. I'm not sure exactly what other arms of the culture there are. You know, obviously... Maybe men wearing trousers to play, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe playing, you know, songs with a tennis theme. Yes, there aren't many of those. No, but, I know, uh, but uh, you know, maybe you could think maybe of. Maybe we could write them, and maybe a few. I don't know if there are any novels about uh, tennis, tennis players, or th- you mean th- 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 there must be autobiographies or biographies well, of great brilliant, players. There's brilliant biography of Agassi. Agassi, yeah, well, there you are. Excellent biography. Well, well, that could be studied. That could be read. Yes, read aloud by the coaches. You know, just, I don't know, two or three For, paragraphs per day. If we get back to a culture like reading Agassi, where many people are at the club or other clubs across the coast enjoying the game, oh, then we'll be able to Well, that'll it. get people coming, you know. Let, let's, right. you know, Healy is going to be reading... The Agassi novel tonight, so let's all go along and you listen to the reading and and maybe make a cup of tea and some sandwiches. Yeah, excellent. Now, quickly Mm. uh, speaking of that fourth and fifth, there's a terrific couple of car events I've got to mention. Mm. The Colac P and A Society Heritage Festival we held at Colac Showgrounds, Bruce Street, Colac, from nine a.m. to nine p.m. and wait for it. This is the lineup. Massey Ferguson, Massey Harris's, H.V. McKay, Farm Machinery, mm. Industry, including Displays of Meccano, mm. 
cars, crafts, working horses and donkeys, bikes, trucks, small engines, vintage and classic tractor pull. I love a vintage and classic tractor pull. Oh, God, yes. Now, now, now when's this on the 4th, did you the say? The 4th and 5th, the Colac Heritage Festival. Okay. And That's it's just, just one day, is it? Just, just one day. Just one day. Wow. And uh, then, of course, I think if you've got your diary open, the Victorian Hill Climb Championship, this is on the weekend of uh, the 11th, uh, 10th and 11th. Mm. Might be 11th and 12th. That's mm. Saturday fortnight, today yeah. fortnight. Yeah. The Gippsland Car Club will conduct round three of the 2017 Victorian Hill Climb Championships yep. at Bryant Park. Bill Schultz driving your lawn. It's a twilight event. Good. 1 to 7 p.m. All classes, yep. cars from Formula Libra Sports to tin top vehicles. Yep. Competitors require a CAMS L2S license. Yep. Or if you're unlicensed, you can get one on the day. Entry is for spectators free yep. and full canteen service provided. So that means you can have a beer and yeah. have a hill climb. Isn't that fantastic? And uh, anyone can enter HG. Anyone you, you can. You've just got to pick up that license. Car. Yeah. Bring your car. I love a hill climb. It's one of my favourites. Mm. And we probably don't have time to do it now. No. But Bernie Eccleston has left the building of F1. Yeah, I know. Is there any suggestion he's coming into this hill climb business? Is he taking over? The Sporting Probe. Roy and HG. And Roy, sadly, we're almost out of time again on The Sporting Probe. But uh, thank you for your heavy lifting this morning. Uh, just a couple of things to finish up with. Willis Meehan, I know you've had your eye on this rugby league uh, superstar from New Zealand, uh, touted as the next Sonny Bill Williams. I didn't realise we were looking for the new Sonny Bill Williams. No. no. Um, but uh, be that as it may. The new Sonny Bill Williams. Yeah, the new wow. Sonny Bill. That's a big call. It is. Now, his career certainly yeah. over now in rugby league because he's been dropped from his two-year contract with the Manly Sea Eagles. Remember, of course... Uh, you know, obviously, task for Benny backdoor Benny yes. Rice. Is, is that one of their rec- recommendations? It, it is. It is wow. that he be dropped, and he's going to pursue the sport of boxing. Great. Uh, so Sonny Bill, of course, had a go at boxing. He did. Didn't do so well. No, I think oh. he might have bro- busted down, broken down in the Olympics, and now is waiting to get well again or yeah. fit again before he can take it up again. Yeah. Is he, is he going back to uh, rugby union? H. Is he still an All Black? I Sonny think he Bill might Williams? be. Right. That's a good. Uh, the listeners. Is there know. any talk of Willis Meehan? Does he is he interested in rugby? Maybe All Black. Well, I can see that happening. And yeah. uh, then uh, finally, do, with his fights, do we know who he's fighting? HG? No, no, no idea. But his dad is Carly Meehan, the former New Zealand heavyweight. Well, so he does I'll have it bugger. in the blood. Okay. So that's uh, somebody to keep your eye out for. Maybe so he'll, he'll be, be a heavyweight too. Won't he, he will be, yeah. and he could be on the undercard next Friday night at. Uh, you know, Adelaide Oval, well, because I I've thought, got no idea who's on the other No, nor have I. No, nor have I. That's going to be great. But uh, but maybe is it possible that Anthony, should he win, could go up a few more divisions and take on this bloke as a heavyweight? Wow. Is that your mail from the mundane camp? I'm just surmising. I mean, that if he can put on 10 kilos, yeah. he can put on 40 kilos. No difference. No difference. Back in the pie shop. Let's go. Heavyweight coming. And I fun- mean, if you can't dream, what is life? Well, and on that piece of philosophy, we'll end the sporting probe and pack away the chilli for another week. Remember, the in-out work continues on this very spot on the dial, same time next weekend.